PKA 636 with our guest, Joshua Fluke Taylor. This episode of PKA bought to you by realdbg.com. I think I said, did I say bought to you by? Restart the restart the whole show. No, 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 we no, no. We're in. <laughs> Guys, I'll quit. <laughs> <laughs> by realdbg.com and also by Blue Chew, the finest uh erection quality supplements out there brought to you by this podcast josh fluke thank you for joining us thanks, thanks for, for taking me. the time what's new in your world every time i pop over to your channel it seems like you're discovering a whole new thing i mean so lately it's been um there's been a lot of layoffs in tech so i've been covering that um mm -hmm. looking at those ceos it seems like it's a copy paste layoff email to pretty much every company it's like we didn't foresee the future and it's like, come on, CEO of one of the top tech companies in the world didn't foresee this, you know, so. Um, Probably didn't though, right? That's why they hired him. He didn't hire him just to fire him. He didn't know. He got it wrong. We needed him and then he didn't, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's a, that's a valid business strategy that they would lean into. I've seen it before. Of who? <sighs> I'm not following. So like, if they... If they see Treat me like I have yeah. no idea what okay. you're talking about. <laughs> All right, so if companies see an opportunity that they know is probably limited, at least somewhat, then they'll lean into that. And they most likely know that they're going to have to let some of them go after the uh, the gold rush is over, per se. Mm -hmm. And then they act surprised like they didn't know, which makes everyone feel better that works there. But, like, I don't know. That's just my take. So you think they knew going in these – is it like a certain company? Like, because I know, like Twitter, Instagram, they all had big layoffs. Uh, yeah, so all of all the ones that profited big over the pandemic, like Amazon, was huge. Like mm -hmm. everyone's at home, just ordering things at home. So they ramped up that hiring, and then when that was over, bye. So yeah, yeah. well, Amazon's at least like a great service. Yeah, if like true. Instagram and Twitter went down, that would be and like like by down, I mean let's say five months. Oh. I would be so much more upset if Amazon went down for five months. It's not yeah. even a contest. It's not even close. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, I don't sure. go. To, the yeah. only Twitter I get is like when, I, when I'm on Reddit and they send me to Twitter. I'm like, why didn't you just fucking screenshot it, dude? I don't want to go here. I'm not Everyone. even signed into the app. It's like, <laughs> would you like to sign in? Nope. No, this yeah. video isn't that funny, guaranteed. Like I like Twitter for the screenshots of it I get on other websites. That, that's how yeah. I use Twitter mostly. Yeah, that's and how I use Twitter. Too. Twitter I interact with humans. Elon Musk bought Twitter and made Twitter the most interesting place on the internet for a month-ish, maybe. Elon Musk was the most interesting man in the world. Might still be, but he's not as interesting, not as, interesting as he was when he first got Twitter. When he rolled in there and he had the fucking kitchen sink and he had all this interest and he's talking about who he needs to fire and how he's going to make this site great, I was compelled. His, it, Twitter hit all new usage numbers. Today, what is Twitter? I don't know. It's the same as it was years ago, right? In the last five years, has Twitter made any changes that caught your attention? It's just the blue check mark that you got to pay eight bucks for, I think. Okay, that I noticed that rolling? difference. They they brought that back. Yeah. Um, they went to two hundred and forty characters or two hundred and eighty, yeah. whatever that is. Oh, they have no, a community notes that. feature. I know nothing about that. What is okay. that? So yeah. I glanced at it. I, I think, I, to be honest, I didn't check it out too much. I just saw Elon congratulate his team that said great work on the community notes feature that helps combat misinformation so people can go in there and fact check each other i don't know i didn't click on it but oh. i saw it i that's won't click on it either sounds yeah. boring <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I taylor brought up a point weeks ago months ago where he was like how long is this manufactured twitter drama gonna last right where elon mm -hmm. just says something kind of hot take to get everyone to talk about him and talk about twitter and be well it didn't last forever twitter yeah. is just I, the usage it, numbers are down. The engagement are is down. Yeah, he'll have a new thing. He'll he will like that's his shtick. Like he'll have another attention grabbing take or thing to rile up a bunch of news stories. Like I imagine every time it starts to get like like he gets worried, he does something like that. Like oh yeah, I need to, to you know juice the engine a bit. Could he be got, maybe it's more like, less tactical than that. He got upset that his tweets weren't getting the views that they were before. So he calls in his engineers and he goes, guys, there must be some bug. People aren't looking at my tweets as much as they used to. And an engineer brought all this data forward and said, well, you're not as popular as you used to be. Here's the opinions, here's the ratios, et cetera. It's working as designed. 
people just aren't buying what you're selling like they were. And he got fired. <laughs> he, he, he fired him right on the spot. <laughs> yeah. So they brought in other engineers who said, okay, just special for you. You will have your own algorithm that shows your tweets to people beyond what they would have naturally gone viral. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, exactly what I would do if I were him. Like, like, look, I own, we're in my house. I don't, <laughs> we're in my house. You right. signed in? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Nice. Nice of you to come on in. Yeah. Have a seat at my table. There While are some you're here, you'll table. notice that my microphone goes louder than yours because yes. it's my house. Would you like some ice cream? You're all entitled to have one scoop. <laughs> notice I have two. It's my house. I'm okay with that. I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't get a, they, they made that out to be like, oh, the emperor wears no shit. clothes indeed. Mm -hmm. And then like, but like everything now is a, uh, he's so disliked that the internet nitpicks so much that it comes full circle. And I hope it makes people who are kind of in the middle and just don't give a shit be like, wow, y'all are like obsessed with this guy huh like when i see them tracking his playing continuously and like five thousand upvotes 800 comments all just look at him traveling <laughs> it's look like, at him yeah, with air. everything he could ever want <laughs> with everything that i want today today they had this footage of the cyber truck um driving up over a curb onto a grassy like hill area to be photographed next to the rest of the lineup and they use some ramps to let it go up over the the concrete curb because it's got so much um um ground that effects, shit? Ground effects and shit like yeah. it's not made to approach like an eight inch curve and go up That's over interesting. it okay. and maybe or maybe it was just they were just worried about it getting dirty i don't know they threw up some fucking ramps they wheeled it up carefully at the thing for this little photo thing again it's not like everybody's like all right now do a thing it's like yeah. all right put it on the hill over there mike and mike is like yeah i'll do it very carefully with your prototype truck mr mr man so and they're like, look at it. It can't even get up over the curb. And it's like, guys, do you think that a four wheel drive electric vehicle can't get doesn't have enough torque to get up over that curve? Is that what we're? Do you really believe it's that? It's like or the Flintstones. You, wow. They didn't want to damage it in any way. They weren't taking any chances. But the Internet is like, look, it. if there's anything we know about Tesla's, forget about that self-driving stuff, I guess. Like, that's a bad definition, bad way to phrase it. We all know how fast they go. I saw one in China today. The accelerator stuck. It turned into a semi-guided missile. Okay, it can. Mm. It's it's just gliding through China. Like, like <clears throat> when it went over a hill, the front end touched the ground first, skidded, and then it landed flat and kept going. <laughs> it was incredible. Wow. He had a bus. <laughs> do, do like I don't follow the Musk up. news as close. I but I feel like so I see fast. all that dude's tweets because mm -hmm. now nowadays you get suggested tweets from people that you follow. And he's one of those accounts that like everybody pretty much follows to see what's up. And so I feel like you get fed his stuff constantly. But if you people are actually mad about like the, the algorithm, the though. truck, like are people actually mad about the truck or is it like a, a meme? I'm because sure that's like getting mad at like a, when I say like seeing a mascot something. costume at Disney World. It's like you, you understand what a prototype is, right? You know, that's not really Mickey Mouse. Like, so there's different levels of being mad about something. Like sometimes they like start a whole group about it, get a hashtag going. This was more like, look at this thing that happened today. It's weak. They they got all uh, got their panties all bunched up when he told um, Ukraine they couldn't use his satellites to target Russians anymore. He was like, guys, I was, I didn't know y'all were using my internet to pinpoint people with VOG grenades. How many people have you killed using my satellites so far? Because that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> like, like, and like, yeah, and, I'm uh, trying to make sure everybody can watch YouTube. By the way, he wasn't, <laughs> by the way, it, you know. It was free, right? He was giving them his service for free. No, the government was initially it was free, right? And then he was, and then he realized that again that I think the really U.S. paid him out the nose for that. Wasn't I, I there? Could Google it right now, but I, I want to say the United States well, is paying yeah. him a bunch. Do you know about this, Josh? Yeah, wasn't there like there was a reason he had to stop because um, it was, his technology was being used for a certain purpose that would make the government add all these extra restrictions. I forget. I I read about it on Reddit. Who knows mm. if that's accurate or not? But yeah. I believe, depending on the purpose of those drones, uh, redefines what the government will classify those as. Like, it's not just civilian anymore if you're using those to drop. Yeah, his like, satellites. Yeah, like maybe the classification of, classification mm -hmm. of his satellites might change if they're yeah. using. And they, and I'm not. It's not like maybe they're using them for targeting. It's like they were using them for targeting very effectively. And uh, and he was just like, no, nah, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Y'all, y'all got to stop killing people with my satellites. And I understand that point of view. Like, look, we're over here, sure. and, and like, like I sent them some money. There was a there was a charity where they were like, 
I remember in the early days, they showed this bombed out fucking dog shelter. And I know that there's like people in the rubble too, but man, I did not like the dogs being in the rubble because they didn't get a siren. You know, they didn't, they can't open the door and run. They can't like, Oh, I'm heading to Kazakhstan. Uh, things are getting rough around here. They're stuck in that. And that's so like, yeah, let's send them some money. I sent them a hundred dollars. Elon Musk, when he like makes a little, Oh, I feel bad. Let's do a thing. Now people are dead. Like in the hundreds or thousands, maybe, or or maybe people are alive by the tens of thousands. That's what I always hear that, especially in the early days, the use of his infrastructure was key to them holding the line to be able to communicate back and forth and, str and strategize that defense. Mm -hmm. Could so be. I, I looked it up. The U.S. has paid millions for Starlink. I can't get a vibe for whether or not that's the going rate. Like, mm. Is it good here? Oh, now? it's expensive. I don't know. I wanted to get it from my dad a while back because my dad's still on that fucking um, like satellite shit, watching gun smoke over there. Oh yeah, <laughs> is it available everywhere now? I don't think so. I feel like we would have heard about that if Skylink, Starlink, right? Starlink. Starlink. Is it available where? Do you know me? I, I, I was curious if they like have it here. Like, like, like can I turn it on yet. and get some Starlink and how good? I don't it, know like, about you, but people can. Like I, I have friends who just can't wait for it to roll into their area, and I know other people who have it and think it's the greatest. I have mm. it. It's pretty great. I'm not using it right now, but I have a Starlink that I take with me um, when I go like outside camping or something. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, like, you have to you have to register its location every time you use it, so you can't like use it on the go. At least I haven't figured it out mm. because um, it's, first of all, it's like attached to your name and address and stuff, and so it knows it's supposed to be there. And then whenever you take it somewhere else, you have to like re-register it. Um, also, one thing, if you disconnect the service, there was like a little disclaimer that said, I might not be able to get it back due to, due to the overwhelming like demand. Oh, they'll give yeah. the spot to someone else. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to give the equipment back. So I just have a Starlink and I don't know, hopefully it'll turn back that on. Put you back in line. You'll get yeah. that. I, yeah. think, I think that's just their way of saying, don't just expect you get right back in. If you come yeah. back, you might have to wait a day, a week. But I doubt it would be forever or like a long period of time. I'm interested. No, in they that. don't want you anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they don't want, want you back. Money. <laughs> I saw uh, a simulation showing the number of Starlink satellites. I had no idea. Guess how many there are. Like, all right, first of all, I don't know. Zach, please find how many Starlink satellites there are. But like, if I had guessed, I'd have been like, oh, I bet he's got like 20 of them up there, like all around because, the world. Not because I know anything about it, but because I'm going off your vibe. That number is closer to 90. I'm going to guess that it's beyond that it's like two uh, cuz they're too su I bet they're super tiny, right? They're not like I don't imagine they're like, <laughs> no they're, idea, like, I, I, like they're not huge, are they? Are you I'm going to go, I'm gonna go an, even, coffee cans. an even 1000. I think, <clears throat> I think they're like the size of like the back of a truck. Make a bed of but I'm, well, yeah. I'm already committed to a thousand, so I guess I, I'm all <laughs> like stick truck bed. It. Maybe like eight hundred or something. Well, probably closer to there. Whoa. There are three thousand five. <laughs> I win by default, I honestly. You, I told you I saw that I, I didn't guess oh. because I saw the like graph and it was a swarm of them around the earth. <laughs> three thousand five hundred and eighty <laughs> small you can satellites. See you can see them. Yeah, at night, if it's uh, if you have like a dark sky area, it's not uh, light polluted. You can see them. There's just like little trains of lights that go across. People post them on like r slash space sometimes. It's pretty cool. That well, is pretty should... cool. I had no idea. But eventually, <laughs> they're going to get brighter and brighter, and more and more of them. And then we'll have groups saying, you know, "Internet at what cost? You can't see the night sky." And they'll say, "Yeah, I can. Right here online." <laughs> they are the night. Sky. <laughs> they are the night. You sky. joke, but that's a huge concern. Like the um the the pollution of the. The the um the space pollution? around us, but no, the, no, no. When all right, so not too long ago, a supposedly secret Russian satellite broke up in the uh, in space and broke broke up in like a thousand pieces. Those pieces are ranging for, in size from paint chips to mm -hmm. maybe something as big as your monitor, right, or bigger. I'm guessing. I'm just saying. But yeah. all this shit is moving at hyper speeds through the goddamn upper atmosphere, and like it it, it makes the Again, it's a huge area out there, but they, they just keep doing shit like this. If we oh, keep polluting yeah. that area, then space travel or or especially like on the civilian side, can you imagine a paint chip hitting you at 17,000 feet per second? A paint chip? I can't imagine. I don't know what that will do, but I do know some yeah. of the items we're talking about are like bolts, like a one-inch bolt that maybe yeah. you see all the time. That thing moving at, did you say 17,000 feet per second? That's not a speed that I understand. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> <it's> so fast. <laughs> but <laughs> I, well, I can know. tell you, if a bolt hit me, that would be like 
a 50 cal or something, but faster than a 50 cal. It's a dude. Problem. If, if across the room, you without like, a hard hat, I went like, you go, <laughs> ow, ah. like, 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 that, like that sort of bolt is at you can work seven you can, feet a second. <laughs> haven't there been times where uh, they did like a test to see if you like uh, flip a coin off the top of a building to see if it's fatal? That's pretty fatal already. So, like, no, take, well, actually. So like, you've got really, terminal velocity, right? It has um, to hit a very old. So everything person. accelerates at the same rate in the atmosphere. Is what is it? Nine point two meters squared or something squared. Anyway, it, but the term, it, things have terminal velocity because of the air. A human's terminal velocity is about one hundred fifty miles per hour. So it doesn't matter how high I drop you from, you'll cap out around one hundred fifty, one hundred fifty five, depending on your build yeah, and such. Right? It'll quick. vary a little. Core is the same thing. It's going to yeah. have sort of a terminal velocity, is it, and it's not exactly deadly. I think MythBusters did a thing um with that because how about it a marble? Was smart i don't know the answer to every single item but i know when when, when can you have a bullet with bullets the 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 misunderstanding is people imagine mm. they're shooting straight up and it's going to like go straight up and then stop and then go bottom up yeah. and <laughs> fall straight down but yeah. you'd have to be fucking annie oakley master chief to do that shit and so what you're actually going to do is shoot at some angle and then the wind is going to catch it as well. And it's going to be in a parabolic arc or whatever. And it's going to tag somebody five miles away and kill them because it's carrying that a lot of energy when you shoot it at any angle for the, the duration. I've heard that and I'm sure you're right. It just doesn't. It's not what I expect. I would expect like let, so let's say 90 degrees is perfect, right? Or 180 from the ground. Um, I would think that me eyeballing it doing the best i could would get mm -hmm. to like 85 to 90 you know like like in that you're trying range. to shoot straight up yeah mm. and uh it'd probably be okay i don't know i don't yeah, know you could do the math the I math is, is, is like, like 80 is not good enough and i'm like really i kind of thought it would be but um I, I i don't know how to do the math off the top of my head but i know it's some, some equations they figured out a few hundred years ago and we could just really quickly figure out how many foot pounds of energy no. that bullet's carrying at an 85 degree angle at a yeah. 45 acp leaving okay the barrel professor out. Like, like we can, we can mark, mark this out. but i bet it was fucking smart it was what it would come down to but what's really interesting is when you're in space and there's no goddamn atmosphere to slow things down and shit gets up to those crazy crazy scary speeds where a bolt would be like not a 50 cal but maybe an explosion hitting you in the chest it would just be because a tremendous amount of power I've seen those like hyperspeed videos of like tiny things hitting blocks of steel at those speeds. It plows deep into them and makes like craters like a big bullet hit. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, mass times what speed velocity, you know, it, yeah, it's there's a no huge telling. amount People of energy being created. The uh, when I said 50 cal, I was talking about just the mass itself, the speed. Sure. It would be like a 50 cal traveling five times faster than a 50 cal. So you're, it's not yeah, good. And we don't and we need less <laughs> space litter. Less and space if the Russians that's what space are the force. ones causing all of it, then we need to get them in line see, with their space. See, that's the litter concentration, so more space would do too. That's what space force check on the job Chinese also. We, we learned the forces. other day how they do plastic in the ocean. I bet they're fucking ruining the skies. They are. Did you, yeah. did you know that? They, yeah, so China did a, a huge proportion of the space debris out there is from one Chinese test. Of course. And the mm -hmm. test was, can we destroy a satellite? So rather than do it some responsible way where they put it in the like low earth orbit and they made sure everything would fall to the ground, they put it way up high, they blew it up, and it's all still out there but scattered <laughs> out. What a bunch of assholes. Yeah. Like they knew what was gonna happen. They were already in space. Like they, they knew the consequences of it falling <clears throat> apart in space. You know, if I you're bet good if enough to wanted... hit a satellite out of space, you're smart enough to know it'll make a mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't buy that lapse in judgment. I bet if someone wanted <clears throat> someone like India Ooh. or China or Russia that has the, Take this the rockets down. or whatever, um, <laughs> it doesn't support what I said. <laughs> I, I, could they ruin space? Could they launch like lots of missiles into into space with ball bearings, like huge amounts of ball bearings, and like ruin space effectively for That's like? That's a really good question because my knee jerk reaction was no, space is too big, and then I was like, well, I mean, if they were trying, they could really make it suck, right? Here's the other thing, and I don't know. They're definitely good. So there, there was initially this idea that, hey, man, y'all are using those Saturn V rockets or whatever they're using to, to launch these satellites. It's incredibly expensive. Every pound you put up there is costing you like $20,000. Why not a big cannon? 
Why not a big cannon to blast them into space? Yes, mm. yes. we need some durable satellites. But isn't isn't there one uh, where it it flings them into space? That one's pretty cool. At least like they're testing it. That'd yeah. be fun. So, so that's more of a um, that, that like, space, space trebuchet idea where like. <laughs> I've I've seen like simulations of it operating in space, like this arm yeah. that's uh, about to catch up, catch up. <laughs> but but <laughs> it, it, it involves like bringing your space. You have these these big rotating arms with mass on one end that orbit the Earth, and they're rotating at very high speeds. And you bring your spaceship along, you uh, attach to the the long arm, the and you're flung by that um, to to your destination. It, it, it's a tremendous amount of energy for free. You know, in that escape velocity, this, um, that's cool. But the cannon for the satellites was built uh, into the side of a hill because the, the barrel was so long you couldn't just have the barrel in the air. It had to be built underground to support mm-hmm. the mass of it. But while that turned out not not to maybe work for satellites and their sensitive inner workings, if you were just shooting like capsules full of ball bearings that would then release <laughs> and explode into like the upper um, um, atmosphere, like or into space, whatever, so they would stay up there for a while. Like, would you just ruin this? space travel for every yeah. other developed nation nah, just put the ball bearings over russia i don't see what could go wrong ah they're gonna go everywhere nah, like a, snow, you ever see a carefully. snow globe, <laughs> snow globe <buddy. laughs> how would you fix that just complete area denial for wherever you wanted yeah. it to be you have to send up and a if series you're of India, here's yeah. the thing though i can't imagine anyone doing that because the world enjoys the wonders of gps and they have for the last 40 or 50 years or whatever it's been mm-hmm. it, isn't it amazing that, that that we just made that shit free the, the, yes. it's like hey world would you like to always know where you are? America's your guiding light. And we <laughs> didn't put the stars and stripes on it. We didn't put USA on everything that says GPS. We should have called it USA, not GPS. <laughs> but but <laughs> it just, how did that happen? This is you know, the, Russia has one cure too? for polio. Yeah. I mean, did what sort of information can we own? gain? <laughs> of course, I, I would imagine so. You yeah. Know, I, I have some kind of backup or you're kind of in a big... Yeah, my watch war. lets me choose whether I want to use just the American ones or the American and the Russian ones. Like, mm. do you want to use these extra satellites? How do you feel about yeah. the you quality of service between the two? Yeah. If I don't any. know. I can't tell. <laughs> I just add more satellites to the watch and it still takes forever. I'm not sure. So, like, if you is it possible that you could like set it up and you'd be like, wow, Russia's getting me to the store a little quicker today. Step it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just the just like ways. <laughs> oh, I'm fascinated by your watch technology now. So, you, so um, what can your watch do? So it has GPS in it and it can like leave breadcrumbs on the map to where you went and perhaps get you back. Um, Brilliant. It'll, it uses the GPS to set the altitude because the altitude is based on the barometer. So as the air pressure goes up and down, the watch can't know that you're not going up and down. You mm. have to tell it right Where now, at this, I'm at 300. And then for the next few hours, it'll be pretty accurate. But in three days, it'll be kind of inaccurate. So it doesn't can, have the barometer in it? Oh. It does. No, but the, It does? Yeah, of course it does. You need a barometer to have of an course. altimeter. But... You have Dumbass. to tell it like <laughs> you know, like right now, right? You know, Thursday at eight PM. Just doesn't use lidar. <laughs> Thursday at eight PM. This is what three hundred. This is the pressure you find at three hundred feet above sea level. And then tomorrow, it'll be like, well, now this is the pressure to yeah you know, above three hundred feet above. Sea I level. love the breadcrumb thing, but like, the GPS can set it. So in case you don't know your current altitude where you're standing, the yeah, GPS will tell it for you. you. Yeah. Can, I guess what I was. Can you guide yourself out of the wilderness with it? Would it be like, I, obviously, you've got a compass inside of it, I'm sure. I mm-hmm. mean, everything's a compass, it seems like. But, like, does it have any guidance abilities? Would the arrow just keep, could you be like, take me home, and the arrow always points toward home on your watch, so you could just use it that way? Because that would be enough exactly for me. That, yeah, which is useful on a paramotor. It's, I don't have That's the vision. Piece. I'm liking that really, watch. <laughs> I don't have the vision to really, like, look at a map. And also, you're ta- I'm flying. I'm literally flying a lawn chair. So, like, I'm kind of busy right now to yeah. <laughs> stare at the watch for oh, too long. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, it's really handy to. What's the price to tag on one of those? Simple. Is it about fourteen hundred? No, uh, higher. So this was like no. This is a good one. It had the sapphire lens and you know the stealth yeah. black whatever, and it was like five hundred. Really? That's what a that's what my Luminox costs. You know what it does. It glows in the fucking dark and it's waterproof. <laughs> real with real radium. Yeah. Holy. 
I don't think they use the real radium anymore. No, they don't. <laughs> I, on, I've been in, in, in your in, wrist um, hurt. <laughs> all of the old Russian um, like armor troop carriers that I've been in and like mobile artillery pieces and all that, they use radium for the gauges on the inside. Like they glow well. When you get oh, in there, it's like a sci-fi movie. First of all, your eyes adjust to the darkness because now you're inside this thing. But all the gauges are this pretty like green color. You know, uh, like the I'm sure you do. Like this seems like the kind of YouTube video we both watch. Like the history of the like the women who used to work in watch factories. Uh, so basically, they used to paint radium on watch hands manually. And hmm. women were sitting in these warehouses. And if you don't know, radium is more radioactive than uranium. It's unbelievably radioactive. And so they would like use their tongue to straighten out the tip of their paintbrush all day oh, no. <laughs> for years. And like all of them died of like their jaws falling off and like all, all their husbands like, just all their husbands got prostate cancer it was a real mystery yeah the life out of me <laughs> and just like back then this they one just, guy got radium, radium cancer. Whore. <laughs> who's the lucky dick who got ate his cancer <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it just made mine enormous like the hulk <laughs> <laughs> like no that, no it I didn't that you're marvel dying <laughs> <laughs> i want that marvel superhero that's how he got his powers a radium. It's leukemia man he can summon pity in a single bound <laughs> <laughs> in a single fall <laughs> like, do they phase it out or is it the, what do they use now because if you've uh, written in older machines like at what point did they realize this is really not it good? It wouldn't surprise me at all if did. the Russians still use radium. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we use radium. But the only reason I would imagine we wouldn't is because we just spend more money and do things like heads up displays. And uh, I know the helmet on the see the helmet for the F twenty two pilots or the F thirty five pilots. It's like a quarter million dollars. The helmet is this thing mm -hmm. is like crafted to fit you. That this is your personal handcrafted. A, mm. like super duper cutting edge piece of technology with all sorts of heads up shit. When you're turning your head, you're do it's got all sorts of actuators and sensors inside of it. I think there's tactic tac uh, tactic feedback. Is that what I'm looking for? Haptic. 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 Oh, doesn't it yeah. give you a full 360? Like uh, you can look down and you can see through the through the cockpit. Of the, yeah. Of, yeah. That's so cool. Fuselage. Cool yeah. yeah. I want to see a demo of that. Like that. Yeah. It seems scary. I bet, oh. that tech, I bet that tech could be integrated into anything, though. Like, like, like if you yeah. just wanted that, yeah. you don't mm -hmm. need the, all the other nonsense. That sounds like a twelve hundred dollar piece of equipment. That sounds like some something. It's like, yeah, I put this on, and now I, I couple it with my iPhone, and I can just see through my legs if I look down when I'm flying. Motorcycle helmets have been ruined by oh. tech, and it's a bummer. Like, so here's what I mean by that. There have been a few companies who said, hey, we're going to do a better motorcycle helmet. Maybe they have a little map, like a GPS that's in the side of your vision. Maybe it's just augmented, right? Where they have your speed and your tack or whatever. You know, this like mm -hmm. a little extra, a little mm -hmm. heads up display. And the companies that do them were all like Kickstarter campaigns that took the money and ran. And it's mm -hmm. happened like three times. Now, anytime a helmet tries to, you know, like, hey, we're a new helmet company and we think we can build a better mousetrap everyone's like fuck you we don't trust new helmet companies it sucks because i would love the tech i think See, that'd be I, pretty awesome. I didn't even want bluetooth in mine like, like, like i've i've mm. considered a couple times since and i've worn someone else's helmet that had it and man i want to hear everything i want to hear everything like like i just feel like i get paranoid sometimes if i'm at home sitting with like headphones like if i if i can't hear my surroundings it's like maybe somebody's sneaking up on me like, like I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to go outside, put on earmuffs, and close my eyes, you know. No what, <laughs> and, and that's what it feels like sometimes. That's yeah, yeah. I'm different. So one, I'm wearing hearing protection, so I can't hear. Like I, I don't trust my ears to sense mm. a car coming through an intersection or something. That's got to be visual. And now, once I have a helmet and hearing protection, might as well pipe some music in there. I don't hear shit anyway. Yes. I only yeah. ever wear one headset. This is all, the whole time I've ever done this show. I only have one <laughs> headset. Oh, the, on. One side yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> one mm. side of it. Like I just I was I like, you no. had a black one. Don't lie to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't have a different headset. You're right. You're technically right. The worst kind of right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'll uh if I'm gonna be riding for longer than just a few minutes, I'll put I'll just put some earplugs in. I've wondered mm. if the, if some sort of active ear pro might be like the way to go there, something that could block out the motorcycle. 
um, but give me um, like a clear mm -hmm. version of like the road around me. Because again, I'm my my fear is that I'm not hearing a horn that's just a little bit far away that's warning me no brakes or like totally big valid. emergency around the corner yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Like I'm gonna hear the guy right behind me going, "I'm hitting you! I'm hitting you!" And I'll know I'll be able to react. But I don't know. I want to hear, and I'm scared. <laughs> You need engine canceling instead of just straight noise canceling. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. someone needs to make a startup where they can isolate different fre frequencies of different motorcycle engines, remove it, and then allow everything else. I'm sure that I've, would give you something, maybe. I've tried a mm -hmm. few different things, like ear pods, two different bows, and like these Beats by Dre, like with active noise canceling. <laughs> None of them fit under the helmet really well. I tried one that I didn't like. It fit on your jaw. And it's bone conductivity. Have you seen that? Yeah, we looked at those on here. Really yeah. neat idea. And I have a friend who swears by it. He's a bicyclist also. But for me, like, I don't know. Like, you could press your jaw here in a really uncomfortable way, and that's what it did. Have so. you ever used a throat mic? The ones that... No. Uh, so, so the microphone goes here. And uh, it doesn't matter how loud you speak because it's like tapping, tapping straight into the vibrations of your... Is it your trachea? Um, wouldn't know. I, don't, I believe so. Yeah. Esophagus I, is what you die if you trachea choke. trachea that the allows trachea. you to, to speak. I, and, and recently, mm -hmm. paleontologists found evidence that dinosaurs had, had tracheas, which would mean that they could speak, I think. Uh, or not That's, speak. They're not, they're not they're language, but noises. That, don't sell yourself way. short. Yeah. Just talk, no, I, no. I'm going, look, I've seen several cartoons where they spoke. I put on one of those. <laughs> I, we were wearing those mics and the, the tanker uh, ear sets one time when we were inside this APC, and it's just punishingly loud. It's like being inside of a tractor. Like, like if you, if you <laughs> somehow you could get in the track, I can lot. imagine that. It's like that. Ticket, <laughs> ticket, ticket. And, and then you put on this heavy duty, old timey Russian helmet, and it's like, oh shit, this is noise canceling, old school style. And like his voice is being pumped into me, like almost through a tube or a hose or something via his throat mic. And it's just, it's we've got perfect communication. Me and this guy, who's also who's in the front role playing, mind you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've and had it just, that it in, touches your neck. I've had that in uh, yeah. airplanes. Oh. It doesn't touch your neck, so maybe yours was better still. But um, if you hop in like somebody's helicopter and they have Bose headset, they're the best, I think, uh, for their passenger. It's like, oh, this is gonna be nice. And sure enough, like it is an incredibly loud environment inside a helicopter, super loud. Yet, <laughs> yet uh, the right noise canceling and headset can make it seem pretty good. You can talk to each other well. What yeah. do you wear when you fly? The paramotor? Surely you're not listening to that lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> so I have um, like ear protection that you get, like construction would wear, earmuffs. Yeah. And then under that, I have noise canceling, uh, like music. Be they're the Beats by Dre things. I don't know. They're like, I Apple makes them now, of course. But anyway, yeah. So just wireless earbuds under hearing protection. So I kind of double up hearing protection and listen to music. And then you have the altimeter on your knee or not? On my watch. Okay, so that's the only thing you use. You don't have any knee pad stuff when you're mm -hmm. flying. No, no, that's nice. Keep it no. simple. If I do acro stuff, I'll put a GoPro on my thigh so I okay. can film it in the wing. But And that's just mostly for learning or maybe if I die or near die, there'll be interesting footage. <laughs> yeah, you got to hope. Last moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? Hopefully, knock on wood, it's an another near die. You know, <laughs> <laughs> another near die. Yeah, fingers crossed on that one. But yeah, it, or even like if it goes well, it's footage that only I'm interested in, where I can look at it and you know just evaluate my inputs and what I did and learn from it. Because it, if you're doing like acrobatic flying in the air, I'm really task saturated, and, and my memory of what happened doesn't always match the video. So it's nice to have video and really get it right and know what you did right and wrong. It's so. a good term, task saturated. I yeah. like that. It's how I feel playing Age of Empires when I get attacked. <laughs> <laughs> task saturated and I start to panic. Uh, Josh, I wanted to uh, check in because last time you were on, we talked a long time about your family and that that situation and everything, the, the drugs, the, the betrayal and oh all that. God. Has no any way. more, anything new come of that? Are you still in the kind of the clean break not clean break, but the, the break uh, portion of it. They've tried to reach out a few times, but I'm pretty much unresponsive. Um, I Can you refresh for you. my and the listener's memory? Like just a quick one. Sure. So um, uh, when I started doing YouTube, I was trying to help my parents out because they lost their house. My parents lost their jobs. And so I brought them to Utah where I live and floated them until they got back on their feet. Um, 
it turned out they never got back on their feet and they decided to start doing drugs. I mean, I make it sound kind of bad, but like, the, you know, I, how do I, how do I phrase this here? Um, it didn't go as we planned at all. <laughs> and yeah. uh, drugs were involved and they started lying to me and stealing from me and pawning my stuff and so on. Um, and I didn't want to believe it at first. Um, you'd never in a million years would you think that your parents are doing that and i guess looking back of course i can see yeah that's pretty obvious now but mm -hmm. in the moment i you know i'm i have the flu today i'm sick whatever right like i need some money i was like okay um but then eventually uh i had to cut them off and well i refused to pay their rent and my grandparents cut me off uh and said never talk to us again and that just basically no contact with uh, with the family. So since then, it's been like maybe two years or something so far. Um, and they've reached out a few times, but it's, of course, I've had this conversation with myself a few times, a few, a few times how I would handle it, mm -hmm. uh, but it never goes the way I think whenever I get like a text or an email um, because, of course, their numbers are blocked, but they just make new ones or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> so my sister has a kid now, apparently. Um mm. That's interesting. Is that uh, your problem now? No, no, I don't. I don't think <laughs> so. I just like it, part of me is just like I don't know who thought this was a good idea. Like you know, like why did this? I, I mean, I hope it goes well, but like. <laughs> <laughs> I love your. Yeah. I love. I know it's going through your head right now. I mean, I hope it goes well, but uh, I don't but know. It's, it's not just, looking. I don't. Hope, I doubt it. That's <laughs> uh, not where the smart money is. I don't know. <laughs> From, is this sister also really struggling really with drugs? Situation. You mentioned the parents. But... I, yeah, that was the actual cause. It was uh, um, my sister uh, some was like involved with some bad dudes, and then that spread, I believe, to my parents, and then they were all doing it. Um, yeah. So, has there been any attempt at like reconciliation from their end at all, or are you are you not even hoping for that anymore? They tried, but it's very like it's like nothing's changed. You know, they'll say things like. Uh, well, my dad sent me some emails like a few weeks ago and I've, I haven't said anything about it or anything, but um, it was just like, well, if you don't talk to me, I guess I'll have to live with it. And it's like, what? What Are you, are you guilting me with like an apology sort of thing? It's, it's just a weird thing to say. Yeah. Or like, um, yeah, I'm sorry about then, but this is now type stuff this is what they've said. That was then, this is now. Just manipulative stuff. Yeah. And um, of course, there's like a part of me that wants to share like life achievement ch achievements with my parents, you know, mm -hmm. like, look what I did, look what I've, you know, um, and that goes through my mind every time they reach out, like, would it be different if I responded? But then I, you know, no, not really. What is the drug? Which drug is it? Uh, heroin, I believe. Oh. Yeah. I'm they just were... wondering. I'm like, maybe it's just pot and Josh is <laughs> a bit of a square. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> be a great turn of events. It's like, I go over there, Woody, Doritos everywhere. <laughs> Garbage, untaken out. Dishes in the sink. In the sink, Kyle. <laughs> I cut them off. Woody, they, 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 they were watching... They were watching Cheech and Chong. I don't know how many times they've seen it, Woody. They're like zombies. They're not my parents anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. I'd be like, shit, man, maybe you should smoke with them. But no, it's yeah, heroin. Not this, you, you just walked into their apartment and they were there, boneless, uh, like those old commercials, soaking well, into the couch. Remember those weed commercials? Like, I used to oh, like yeah. hanging out with Sarah until she started getting high. And then it was just her on the couch. Dude, I like, love yeah, those Sarah's movies. having a dope time right now. Give her those a break. commercials made me think that weed must be so fucking crazy because it was <laughs> like, like, like you would put a baby in the microwave on weed. What? It's like, I don't, I don't think I'd do that. You not remember that one, right? Really hungry. It's not the microwave, it's the oven, actually. But I, I think the deal is like the babysitter's getting stoned while the mother's away and she's like doing a bunch of stuff while she's stoned and she's, she like, she's supposed to put the turkey in the oven and the baby in its crib and i think at one point like she she wakes up and hears the smoke alarm going off and she looks in the crib and the turkey's in there because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a different that's a different commercial this is the one i was talking about yeah i remember the deflated person just out just uh, yeah yeah I didn't they, see they let off strong none of the these ring hot. a bell for me but what i did see was nancy grace on fox news she was always banging the drum about how pot made you murderous. Mm -hmm. It made you want to kill people. And every time a murderer 
also had like a fucking roach in his ashtray. I maybe used that right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're like, this is the cause. Here it is. He went into a murderous rampage because of the marijuana. Yeah. It's yeah, like, well, what was he doing before he got high? Him. And it's like, well, he was a rapist, but it's like, <laughs> it's like okay, I think we it down. Uh, so with, with your family, uh, I guess last time you were on, it was like a year ago. So it, like, it's been like twice as long. Mm-hmm. Has it been like, I don't know the last time you spoke about your girlfriend and how like her father, like he had a great relationship with him. Have you kind of started to feel like kind of shifting families almost like you, you have another support system network, hopefully? I. I would say it's like 100%. I've just leaned over now, but it wasn't very easy at all. There was a lot of me like, can I trust them? Can I trust mm, them? Do I really I'm know sure. them? But he, he, I mean, he met me like three times and he was like, yeah, y'all can come live in my basement if you want, if you want to get out of the city while you do something else to figure it out. <laughs> like that to me is pretty open human. Like he had no real reason yeah. to do that other than me being this with is your his daughter. Girlfriend's but, dad. Yeah. Standard on, if, I, if I'm being honest, like, standard that's what good that's what decent people do yeah <laughs> to offer that yeah that's decent people type shit what you yeah. need <laughs> decent what people. you need is like an arbiter of decency to like hang out with you and be and when somebody's like like offers you some gum you be like, can you believe that guy offered me gum shit what should i do to thank him like dude you should just keep walking and chew i mean shit. it sounds funny <laughs> but there's been a learning curve for me yeah. realizing what is normal now like yeah. people being nice or people being nice to get something like it's uh, easier for mm-hmm. me to see the difference. Whereas before I couldn't, um, I mean, to put it simply, I guess I was just pretty gullible. Like I try to see the the best, give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And that mm-hmm. I think they instantly know that if they're that type of person mm-hmm. and then I don't know, they take advantage, but it's been a lot of me. I don't know. For a while I just trusted no one, no matter what, like everyone's mm-hmm. at a distance and now it's like, okay, yeah, this, this feels, this feels all right. But, I would say like they're, they're basically my family at this point. Like we, we, you know, all the holidays together, we go on trips. Went That's great, to, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good wholesome. For you. I'm glad I have this ending to tell, I guess, but no, yeah, it's, it's, it's good that you get to see like the other side of it. Cause mm-hmm. you, you had kind of a, a warped sense of, of, of what family and those relationships are about. I mean, like, that's, but there's a, there's like a little bit of like maybe resentment for having, just now finding out that it didn't have to be that way and for other people it wasn't that way and so like Mm -hmm. you know i have to remind myself like it's not too late you can just enjoy it now but like you know i look back at my childhood and i'm just like wait other people didn't do this Mm -hmm. and and, i like i can't imagine my father lying to me like 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 that's such a crazy thing that that he would that like like i can't imagine like if 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 there was any money between us him trying to like get away with not giving me my money back like like that is such a foreign like you might as well like say it's it's like someone who was molested by their father man like what your your dad doesn't you know fill you up a little every morning like no dude he doesn't ever (laughs) the fuck that is not a daddy thing (laughs) yeah (laughs) probably the most (laughs) it's just as alien like probably the most memorable times where i was just I didn't know he was lying at the time, but looking back, he came to one of my pilot lessons when I was getting my PPL and um, he rolled up in the parking lot. He had like this little, I don't know, like a scarf on. He was covering his face. He cracked the window. He's like, come over here because he was going to come right along with me just to hang out father son time. Uh, but then he's like, I got I got I got COVID. I'm sick. I need money. I got to go to the doctor. That that wasn't true. And I told him. Hmm. Oh, no. And it turned out that was a lie. <laughs> you know he's gone well we'll have to remind him where he was his i, I think i remembered i think he told that when he was on i can't remember the amount, of, dad lied the amount about, of money yeah the amount of money that, that we were talking about too is like tens and tens of thousands of dollars don't forget like it, that, that whole we got to get off that story you're gonna depress me i know he's i know <laughs> i don't even want to talk about it anymore it's such a sad fucking shitty story it, it's awful uh, well it seems like it's going better for him so that's a yeah. good thing there we go. Hey. Sorry, I hit the refresh button on my browser, and uh, yeah, my bad. Oh, I, I did hear worked. what you were saying, Kyle. So we'll move on to yeah. the next topic. <laughs> no, I, it, I don't think it's a bad topic. I just feel bad making you go over it again. Yeah, it's, it's so rough, man. No, it's it's been a learning experience. So I've learned to like kind of put the emotional side away. But there was that where he pretended to have COVID and had like an actual emotional breakdown in the public parking lot, and my my instructor's there, and I gave him the money and he left. And there was another time. He's like, hey, I need 80 cash. Here's my check. I, I get paid tomorrow. Um, 
you can cash it then. I was like, okay, here's the cash. I'll cash your check and you've paid me back. But he knew that check was going to bounce. Like things like that, yeah. that you only realize now it was premeditated and just manipulative that makes you go, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievably <laughs> shitty to knowingly yeah. use your influence over someone that way to to take from them leveraging your kind of emotional influence I, on them. Why, I would never do that to my kids. Like I don't have kids, but I can't imagine yeah. ever t- stealing from them or lying to them. Or, yeah. That makes it worse, so why, right? Like, first... like, and if something bad happens to you when you're out and about, that sucks. Yeah. If someone breaks into your living room and does it, now your home, your, your safe space has been violated and it doesn't feel safe anymore. This is your parents, right? If someone's a dick to you, and you met him in online and you just trusted the wrong guy and whatever, like that sucks. But when your mom and dad do it, that like, ah, uh, that wasn't supposed to come from them. Well, They're yeah, supposed yeah. to be on your side. They know how mm-hmm. I tick. They know all the things that would stress mm-hmm. me out or push me over the edge or whatever. And so it's yeah. just, yeah. You yeah, probably cool. already found with YouTube frame how so many people who just entered your life want to use you in some way. Like, get- Ooh, do you have this many subs? You know, I've got a message I'd like to get out there. Can, I'm doing a Kickstarter for my next trip. Can you tell everyone about it? it or whatever. How many, I'm sure you get tons of emails from people that have great business ideas. Does that happen to you often? Because it happens <laughs> to me. Lots yeah, of startup ideas. You're overestimating how much email I read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, have you, have you, you know, there's going to be a diamond in the rough in there somewhere. You got to keep reading all those business suggestion emails. You know, <laughs> I mean, steal the good one. It's like, hey, you and me can like do this and you build it and then chill it on your channel and like I'll manage it. It's like, well, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I do everything. <laughs> yeah. It's like Mr. Beast Burger, but it's my channel. And it's like, you're not Mr. Beast. Like, what, yeah, what exactly. are you going to do? <laughs> that yeah, guy's more famous than like Leonardo DiCaprio almost at this point. If yeah, you include like the total global population, I bet it's hard. To, he's there. I don't know who I'd pick. That's a good point. That's a good point. Every so often, I think like even my own press. What do I have? Four hundred million views on my channel, something like that. Um, who am I more seen than? Right? Do, do I have more views than? I don't know. Taylor Swift. Uh, fucking definitely not that music videos. Yeah, she's. I think she's one of like those. Okay, like so she's billions. a mega star. Yeah, well, yeah. G- g- you gotta give me another one. Like, uh, so uh, bad with celebrities, right? Who's, like, the Kardashians, they tons, tons right, of followers, tons of views. Yeah, but yeah. like, I, I, I just feel like there's someone you know, like, that, like a name that you could do and, and be like, yeah, actually, you know, Woody's more known than that guy in Boondock Saints. Not you, if it weren't for that one fucking one. movie, you would have Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Like if it weren't for Home Alone, as far as total views, because like his online I presence, he's one of those even... celebrities that was big a long time ago. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like those ones. I, I almost sure. wonder if you took away Home Alone one, right? And I only had to compete with Home Alone two. I may have Macaulay Culkin. Oh, in what in what Home regard? Home Alone two is big views. In what regard? Views in what regard? I'm just comparing every. How does random... Macaulay get a view? Someone watches his movie. I don't know oh, where else so he's fucked, getting dude, views. Too. Dude, he's on multiple television shows in prime time. Is he? Macaulay Culkin? He's in multiple YouTube videos with like multi millions of views. Like he, he pops on Red Letter Media's channel sometimes and does like a two million uh, view well, video. Then Kyle, then the you would be better at this because like I just picked him because I'm I was trying to think of an older yeah. celebrity. Woody was saying his channel has like 400 million views. Tremendous. What, what level of celebrity would you have to okay. go down to to be like i've got more views than like I, so that guy here's uh, what i've always liked to do ron to howard's like, brother you got him beat <laughs> i always like to compare youtube views to movie ticket sales because yes. that's the way you can really shit on that yeah. in that regard <laughs> the you can movies. Win. but those are people who show up to a place and plunk down 20 fucking dollars so it's a real shitty way to compare like the guy yes. who went yeah, it's not nah, i don't like him at all never again <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, those aren't as a ticket things. sale <laughs> yeah right the guy who watched but, six seconds of my video and said, "Nah." <laughs> yeah, so it, it, yeah. It, it, it's weird to it's a weird thing to like throw any kind of a metric around and get a feel for for like the impact of a of a YouTuber. But yeah, four hundred million views is such a tremendous amount it's of big, eyeballs. Minutes watched bill. is a cool metric too. Uh, you can go in and see like total minutes watched, like consumed minutes. So each person who watched a minute, that's counted. You know, mm. that's yeah. a fun metric. I feel like that's like a pound for pound kind of kind of metric. Maybe gives you a better an idea of what's really going on. It seems like it'd be when I look at mine, it's I just compared to like this is multiple people's lifetimes. There's no way that 
you could ever yeah. achieve this as one person. Impossible. So this is mm -hmm. insane. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you guys ever like, I'm sure you've done more meetups than me, but like to me, when I'm looking at my channel, I just see views. And then occasionally I, I'll, you know, poke at CEOs and stuff on LinkedIn. And sometimes my subscribers will go there and also um, let them know what they think. And it's just so like, it's very uh, like maybe a humbling experience to see the real people sure. and their professional icons and what they do. Cause everyone's just using their, their troll names and meme names for their comments mm -hmm. that they would normally do. But then you have, then you see them like maybe forced to be a little bit more respectful. Like, I don't know. It's just wild. Sure. Cause I, I see a view count <clears throat> and then I don't know. I just like, these are, I, I sit in my room and rant, you know, and then, I've done, I've done a bunch of <laughs> different meetups and gone to a bunch of different events that like, so we've hosted a bunch ourselves. Like, like oh, yeah. our little podcast here has done like multiple paintball events where people would come and join us. That's cool. And I've done I've done some of those myself, um, and then I've gone to a bunch of like events and stuff like that. I find that people are overwhelmingly awesome when you meet them. And once, as as someone who does stuff, like once you get over the weirdness that each of these strangers that you meet is it is as it knows you as well as you know yourself. Like like just go ahead and greet them like they're your best buddy and like go right into inside jokes and talking about like people by their first names without explaining as soon as you're comfortable with that um, closeness that you have. Like I, I always like meeting people, you know, it's always ever, funny. At a meetup, do you ever feel like you don't have enough time to like give them that time they've given you? I imagine that's kind of how I would feel like you've watched so many of my videos. I wish I could talk to you specifically for 20 my minutes. Very, my sense, very yeah. first one, um, I did a paintball event in, jo in Joliet, Illinois at a, uh, at a place. It was very cold, and I was there for two days. And a lot of people showed up the first day. And it was just me, and the park's closed. And I got like 275 people that have shown up, and each of them has spent over $100. Um, and I was not physically up to running for eight hours a day for two days straight. So it on is. day two... Exactly. Well, I wasn't prepared. Military, right? But I did, but what and, and because like they there there's so many of them that like they're not all playing simultaneously. So so they're taking breaks. Like this guy will go and play for 20 minutes, then he's out tinkering with his gun, filling his shit up, buying a snack, having lunch. I can't do that because yeah. another group is going out there and they want to play too. And then they're coming off. So they're rotating and I'm going. And I went straight for both days and on day two when i started i just remember my quads and my thighs and my ass because you, you it's a lot of crouching like if you're yeah. master chief in halo lots of that going up and down over cover and i'm i don't know how many squats i had done the first day but more than i'd ever done and i was i remember just being so in so much pain like starting that second day but being but feeling awful if i if i didn't go out there and like give these people their money's worth i didn't want it i didn't want them to go back and be like yeah, he just hid inside the building the whole time. Mm -hmm. I think his butt hurt. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be that. Yeah. <laughs> so I want um, to remember you fondly. Yeah. No, we've always done a really good job. I feel like in those things that giving people their their money's worth. We saved that one kid's life. Remember that duct tape kid? The kid had shown up, and instead of buying paintball gear, he had crafted it all out of duct tape. <laughs> you know, you're like like Jeez. making layers of it and like patterns and like like knitting it together. And he'd made this tactical vest, and he wanted to meet me so much that he was waiting outside the doors like our exit oh, entrance not the public exit entrance like our little personal area there but he was sitting on black concrete in july Melting. and like mm. and and i'm wearing was duct tape not very breathable wearing duct tape and i just had come back into our building and i was just gassed from the heat and the running i'm cooling off stripping down drinking gatorade and I see that kid and I go, how long's that kid been out there? <laughs> and nobody knew. <laughs> wow. and I'm, like, I'm like, hey, buddy, you okay? He's like, ah. <laughs> Come in, give Kyle. Some water. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> like, we got to get some Gatorade. He was about to die out there. It turns out he's like he's somebody's special needs son of a friend or something like that. I still have a cup that that kid gave me. He gave um, I think his mom worked in like the, the um, ceramic industry or something. So she had just had like tons of samples. And so he brought those samples and started giving them to us. Which some of them he, like laser etched for us. Like, did he have yeah. our names on them maybe? Or... That I don't recall because okay. mine is a kettle one, like copper vodka mug. I think hmm. you're supposed oh, to drink uh, like, like white Russians out of it. I think the copper or something about no, like Moscow mule. Thank you. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it is. 
Um, and uh, I, I've never done that, but it's still in my fucking like cabinet, and I've never used it because it's copper. And it makes things taste bad. But I look <laughs> at it and I think. That's that weird little kid's mug he gave me that time <laughs> <Yeah>. in Chicago. <laughs> that's that mug that's supposed to be used for that one specific drink that I don't drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that kid gave it to me, so I held on to it for the last decade. Yeah. Well, you just keep trying drinks out like of it. That. Something will be good. Nah, I think Maybe I should milk. in the last move. <laughs> milk out of your copper glass. Yeah. I was... Uh... Got... Oh, go ahead. I got a couple things. Is that a cuneiform tablet... Yeah. What is it? You got your notes? Okay, what do you got? Yeah. Um, I watched a movie and a TV show. Um, I, I, think, I think they're both good recommendations. Which do you want to hear about? Movie. Um, it's, a, it's a Nicolas Cage movie with Pedro Pascal. Man. It's called... Um, it's got an odd name. It's like The Incredible Burden of a, a Measurable Talent or something like that. You'll find it if you search. But it's, uh, it's fascinating. Nicolas Cage plays himself. And the premise is he's, he's down on his luck. He needs some money. His agent's like, there's a guy who wants to pay you a million dollars for a birthday party. And it's Pedro Pascal. And so he goes to Pedro Pascal's like amazing place. And uh, like they have this bromance that, that, that kicks off. And it's really interesting. It's really funny. And, uh, and I liked it. And it might be the best Nicolas Cage movie I've seen in a really long time because it's a little meta um, because they're talking about making a movie together. Pedro's like, uh -huh. the, and, and so they'll, they'll be like, I don't know. I, I definitely want a big drug scene though. You know, where, where they're just fucked up. Meanwhile, they both just dropped acid. They're referring yeah. <laughs> to the drug scene in the movie that they are making, that they are in right now, as mm. well as the movie that they would potentially create together in this fictional universe. So it's, it's very meta in that way. And that happens a couple of times. And then he's like, I don't know. You're going to want some, some, some moments for the, for the trailer. Pull. Boom! <laughs> it's like that was in the trailer. Him shooting that gun was in the trailer. Like, there it is. Yeah. Um, but the, sto the the story is actually interesting, and I found Nicholas Cage Cage's performance of himself was really good. It was yeah. really good. I don't know. I think I he's one of the lot. greatest American actors. You know, you don't have to do that. You know, this is <laughs> like that. This is like that thing when somebody shows up and they're like, "Guess how much? Yes, guess, guess, guess how much I spent on this?" Until it was like eighty-five million dollars. <laughs> There's guess nothing better. I, like, guess how much weight I lost, Taylor? Seventy-five pounds. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Fuck, no, <laughs> no, not that no, much." Are, damn it! <laughs> are you being a piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I've been enjoying the last of us so much that I, I wanted to watch some more Pedro Pascal stuff, and I yeah, that's. I knew that was out, so I went back and watched it last night. I really liked it. I thought it was great. How do you the meaning, what's most that? recent one? I was going to say, how would you compare Pedro Pascal's performances to like one of his more, like the Mandalorian? Do you prefer him in that role, or I, I prefer the Last of Us? But like, what do you think in terms of all of his other roles, like Game of Thrones? You know, mm. I really liked his his suave nature in uh, in Game of Thrones. I liked that he was. Finally, we had a character that had enough um, like power, like 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 not just physically, but enough um, um, power, like socially in that in that world that he could talk shit to anybody that he could go up to the, the Lannisters and 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 be like, yeah, you know, it, they're, they're like, oh, yeah, we don't really have bastards here. And he's like, yeah, well, we don't rape women and their children to death in my country. We find that distasteful. You know, he could he could talk shit to him. So I like that mm. a lot. Um, that that's my favorite performance of his. That being said, I'm loving him as Joel. I'd never played the games before. I'm vaguely familiar with what they're about, like I you know, but um, ne don't have any interest in the game. But I'm I'm loving the show. I think we're all up on the show uh, to yeah, varying degrees. I think it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the so newest far. episode was good. Um, there's a few little things that that are like pacing related that I don't care for. It's, it's it seems like they're kind of rushing through too fast. Thank they got to they got to stop. They they should have spent some time taking a break. And then they can carry on. Yeah, yeah, I think they just—it's supposed to take longer. At least the story is like what a few months is like the travel time in the Three, show. Yeah, and then it, that's like an episode or two. And I think that's a symptom of a a project that 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 needed to get enough viewership to get a season two. They needed to craft a season one that would be a winner no matter what. Um, and I think if it was a slow burn, and it wasn't at the quality, I think it's capable of being a slow burn. 
it, it turned out it is, but they didn't know that. They didn't know that the, the, the chemistry was going to be that good. Mm -hmm. So I think when they wrote this thing, when uh, they were like, yeah, let's, let's get them all the way there by episode five. How about that? That uh, was ridiculous. Made that like it was jarring. It was just one week an episode when, what was it like episode three or four or whatever, where they're like, the ah, one. like they're like passing the fucking Royals stadium in Kansas city. And it's like, that is, so you're a thousand miles like <clears throat> in, in just between episodes. You're right. And I, I didn't sent like you that. Guys I wanted more map. of a, an odyssey across the country. Um, I, I sent you guys the map today. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to Zach too. And it, it's a map of like the infection according to the, um, is that what that map was? Yeah, I, like, uh, I don't know what cordyceps is. I know St. Louis is a little fucked. I guess I'll learn on this show. Yeah, yeah. why is KC are, so fucked in this scenario? Uh, so cordyceps are you know the fungus that 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 caused all this. It's the it's the the MacGuffin, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the big bad guy, and um and this is the this map is based off of the intro map. When you're watching the show, the intro is a bit like Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. You're not just seeing colorful montages mm -hmm. of stuff. You're seeing relative information. And Game of Thrones, it changed week to week. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, uh, but go. but but here you get to see kind of how the outbreak started and spread in various areas. But but if you look at this, how difficult it would be to go from Boston, I always forget just how far up and in the corner Boston is. Some For some reason, I always like picture it up there around Virginia, just on the right side of the mm -hmm. coast. No, it's way the fuck up there in the corner. And uh, they, they're going from there through like, there are a few paths that you could take the, on this map that would be more difficult than what they chose if, if yeah it, I'm, I'm sure zach will get it up eventually it seems like they took one of the scariest routes possible to do what they needed to do not intentionally it's just there was no there's so much shit yeah. between them and where they're going but there's no reason when going from boston to wyoming to have a stop in kansas city uh, if maybe. Kansas City is also like a ground zero kind of place. Well, I think they're following. Them. They might be following the games as far as that. I don't care oh, where okay. they stop or, or like where they do detour. I just wish they'd slowed things down a little bit because to me, the meat yeah, and potatoes of the show, the meat and potatoes of the show, um, it's the opposite of Walking Dead. And Walking Dead thought we needed to have these characters chatting all the time. And it's like, dude, we're done with that. I don't <laughs> care about this eight string character's backstory. <laughs> I don't care that his pregnant wife, like, like, like that he had to kill her five years ago because he's going to be dead. Well, when they start episodes, introducing, when they start introducing characters where it's like, hey, calm down, Joshua. This isn't your D3 football field. And it's like, oh, yeah. like, oh, that's how we're <laughs> Never introducing had the makings of a varsity athlete. Like, if I don't he throws a his... brick and kills someone later and makes a comment. I'm going to scream. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't need those guys' backstory. But, but in this, I feel like the meat and potatoes isn't the the fighting of the zombies like it was in walking dead for me i loved a good like zombie battle in that show mm -hmm. or you know for in this i want to see joel and ellie talk i just want to see them talking the whole episode because she is so good yeah mm -hmm. look at this fucking trip they're making their chemistry is, is fantastic um yep. i thought that his performance in this recent episode where he, where he cracked up and started crying um was tremendous when he's crying to his brother um mm. Um, I, I thought that was great. That that almost made me cry. And um, but yeah, you look at this trip that they're making. You know, the, look where Kansas City is. It's right under the biggest blob in the yeah. nation. <laughs> the biggest blob that exists in the nation. Right and you, we're just gonna pop into KC. You know, why it, go to it, why go through that nice little area from Toledo to Chicago up to Minneapolis? Yeah. When you I guess go, it'll be cold up yeah. there. You know, to be fair, Taylor, like if you but cold's if you better think, for it, right? Well, I mean, but do you want to walk in the cold? I would. That would be my I would, choice. I, I, would, I would choose the cold. cold. I would choose the cold. And yeah. those zombies, by the way, we've talked before about how there's different kinds of zombies, right? Yeah. There are the slow, dumb zombies that can't navigate a ladder or a chain link fence. Mm. And there are the fast, scary as hell zombies from 28 Days Later. These Crazy. are pretty much 28 Days Later zombies. Yeah. Some of them with are They have special yeah, abilities. Am I under, the, the, so the infection slower. But don't they run hard? Am I yeah, this yeah, is its yeah, own thing, hard. right? This, this is very interesting. I, I like when we get new kinds of zombies. 28 Days Later is a good example because those weren't zombies. Those were those were people with like a hemorrhagic fever slash rabies type thing. Yeah. So they were alive and living. And, uh, and, and, and you know, you don't have to shoot them in the head. You just got to put them down. I have a more inclusive zombie definition. No, oh, I, no, no. no. I, I allow, they're in yeah. there. Yeah. No, no, no. I appreciate them. They're, <laughs> oh. they're, they're, they're one of the types of zombies, if you ask me. This is a whole new thing, though, being like a a fungus um, um, puppet 
uh, I, I really like uh, the implications of that and the and the special types of them is neat. You know, that the bloater thing, yeah. I think that the, the cake, clicker they, coming up from the ground. You got the I like the thing, boss the one that ears. came out. Yeah, um, I That's find all that very gaming. interesting. Here's another um, um, thing I did not like at all: the casting of like the boss lady back mm. in the town. Yeah, I got no problem with a boss lady. But like, why didn't the, if if you wanted that kind of character, her to look and sound like that, why didn't you just get um, um, Mulaney, uh, who's a uh, Nick Offerman's wife, Megan Mulaney? Like, like, I don't know. I'm, oh, she's a good actress. She's on SNL. Like, like, I don't know. Google Megan Mulaney. You'll you'll, you'll see what she looks like. Um, anything would have been better than the 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 chubby chick from Two and a Half Men. Is that's that who, who she, that was? Yeah, because yeah, like, that, yeah, that's you're Charlie's right. Charlie's like, like obsessed neighbor who's like always trying to like get him to fuck her again. Like it was, it was distracting seeing those like hard hitting guys like pretending to be afraid of her or whatever. It's like respectful, I would say, because of her brother, Megan which is her brother, but like she wasn't doing a very good job. Yeah, my, Nick Offerman's wife, Megan Mullaney. I just thought that. She, and like, who like, who puts all the fungus down there in the catacombs? And is like dusting their hands off, like fucking it's done. Hundred percent like done. You gotta, you gotta I, do more than just put them in the basement. You gotta do, fire them, something, fill it with concrete, anything, anything, but nothing. Get her in there. She's great. Him without a beard is weird. To that me. took me a second. That's neat. yeah. I like I, his hair like that though. Like the yeah. no mustache. I'm good with the hair. The beard is just not the actor. He's much younger than you think. Beards age you. A lot, the, which is like when you can add on a few years and still look good. That's a bonus. Like when you're you 22 and you look 27 at work, that's a thing. But when you're 45 and you look 55 with your gray beard, that's a whole different ball of wax. T- Taylor guessed his age. I dude, so I was I'm on the fucking money. 52. Yeah, 52. you tell I was stoked on that. He oh, has a yeah, good beard. I, no, Woody, you're 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 dis, you're. You're making fun of gray beards, and I think it's because you don't want to come to terms with the fact that you have you have a tremendous gray beard. <laughs> My that, beard is gray. That as fuck. Jackie it ages me. abuses you. She has the, into the world of one good beard. So like, like, like if you, all I'm saying is like this Dang chick is a better actress than the one that they used, and she's Nick Offerman's wife. I'm sure she'd have been happy to work on the same project as her husband. I just had that thought when I was watching yeah. it. But really, any other character would have been better. There's um, also I, too I, many fat characters. You know, mm. here's my pro- here's my problem with there being fat characters. They shouldn't be fat. Here's what I would mm-hmm. love to see, Taylor. I'd like to see the overweight characters be like the most greedy, like yeah. rich, mm-hmm. overfed characters. Like like everybody else should be. Li- I, if you went to a place and met a community where everybody seemed to be starving, but then you met the boss <laughs> yeah. and he was like 350, 400 pounds, which in would in their times would be like 800 pounds mm-hmm. um that would be a cool thing to say like, like yeah yeah they call him boss hog, boss <laughs> he's, hog. Up there. he's like oh, i get seven parts and you get one like he's just an ogre he's taking like he's taking never everybody. point out that he's not british ever like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what as i think about it tie it back to the guest <laughs> that's what that's how american companies run like the, the ceo at top gets paid 3,000 times as many as his workers, 3,000 times as much as his workers mm-hmm. do. He just hogs it all. He fills his own mouth, and everyone else is left for scraps. Aren't they 3,000 times as rare, though, than just a guy who can turn a knob, if you think about it? I don't know. It's, I don't know. I, don't I mean, when you have a dude, like, I see the argument, right? Like, a lot of people are like, you don't do anything, whatever. But, like, they, I believe it's because they have the ability to shift a lot of people's money one way or the other. So, like, if they're managing hundreds of millions and they're getting paid a few million and they have the ability to make those people way more money or way less money or make them lose money, uh, then I think at least that's the justification I've heard from them. I saw a, I saw a congresswoman um, talking to a CEO today. He runs some like he runs he moves two point six trillion. He manages two point six trillion dollars, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she's like a cashier at one of your branches here in Irving, California. She makes sixteen fifty an hour. She's a single mother, and uh, her apartment's sixteen hundred a month. And he starts. She starts going through this math, and before she's even done with it, I'm like, "Why is a single mother trying to live on her own in Irving, California, working as a mm-hmm. cashier?" Like, like I think that she's made like eight poor decisions before we get this CEO <laughs> in a spot where he needs to justify what he's paying people. Like, 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 where's where's the baby's 
dad? Where's the where's the lady's husband? Where's she mm. took no he has zero education. Okay. Where oh she's paying for childcare as well. She has no parents, she has no network whatsoever. You're talking about a special scenario here. A lady who has gone out and had a child on her own who has no one in her circle who could be her dad, at all. I assume. Like not only that, her mom abandoned her, her dad, her <laughs> sisters won't watch the kid. Like, like she's got nothing. And and when she finishes this math, of course, this lady is in a deficit, not even a, a accounting for other necessities that, that like clothing and, and, and school lunches and things like that. Still at a deficit. She's like, now nah, how is she supposed to make up this deficit? And he's got one of those lawyer answers. I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it. You'd have to think about it. You operate two point six, run two point six trillion dollars, and you can't make up a five hundred forty seven dollars deficit. To, I'd have to think I'd about this. Think Are we done? Him. I have a one thirty blow yeah. job on a yacht. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it went. But but I can't wait for You know what? For that, I'm gonna have you killed. You know, <laughs> Dude, that's the kind of billionaire I'm going to be straight up I, bad. <laughs> when, whenever I see those, like it seems like almost like a court proceeding in that they're afraid to upset the senator or, or the congressman or whatever they may be. I, what if he was just like, fuck you? What would happen? Oh, is he dude, a like you can see court that, or like, something? Uh, like, what would happen? Have you seen like when Zuckerberg, like when he's been questioned by him, it's mm -hmm. like Zuckerberg is trying to look super serious as though <laughs> he's not more powerful than all of them. Where they're like, you know, Mark, uh, what's the deal with this part of Facebook? And he's like, Don't know. And that's that's not my purview. Like it, he just he said whatever he wanted during his what was it, depositions? No, not depositions. What is it called, buddy? Is it a deposition? I'm not sure. Uh, isn't no. it like that's, uh, don't they ask like, no, when they this. when they summon like, the CEO of yeah. of Google they'll ask questions and just some of the senators and Congress people they just don't understand the answers yeah, that he's giving no and mm. so they're just grilling him and grilling him and the, and he's just repeating the same answer like this I don't know how else to say it and they're just like well we don't we don't know and I imagine that happens with Mark as well. Remember the vocabulary. Steve King. Steve King is a racist as fuck. I think House of Representative guy. I think he actually got voted out. But um, he's like, why is it when people Google my name, they keep coming up with the racist things I said? Different news articles, different <laughs> things, different quotes, videos of me. It's all negative. And you know, to his mind, it's Google, big tech, out to get him. But in reality, it's like, dude, that's the most newsworthy part about you. The, yeah. Your racist stances. Yeah, they, they don't have the vocabulary and they don't have the experience with those tools, platforms, and technologies to, to, yeah. to even explain. I think he was complaining to Apple about Google results. Yeah. And they yeah, were trying yeah. to explain. That's like, happened. That, yeah. Was that that ancient guy like that. who like, was like, why can't Google be on my phone? And he's like, that's not... It's That's like complaining iPhone, to Chef Boyardee <laughs> because your food was cold at the Olive Garden. Yeah. All right? Like, like, you don't even know what you're talking about, sir. <laughs> it's like, they're both it's, greasy Italians and I don't like them. <laughs> I'm telling you, the breadsticks were cold, God damn it! You're a chef, aren't you? Well, yes, sir, I am a chef. All right, and what does what chef do? <laughs> and he's sir, making you go through this, this yeah. list of things, and in your mind you're like... How how is he ever gonna get to me controlling the temperature of breadsticks? Yeah. <laughs> and they'd have what like I they, do. some like eighty five year old Republican would have a gotcha where it's like I explain this. Are you having us believe that you are not a chef? Look at this photo, and it's just like him on the can, the and he's like again. I am a chef, but I have nothing to do with the unlimited breadstick policy. <laughs> <laughs> if, sir, if you were short, it's a minestrone soup. <laughs> I will make it right. Oh, so you're, so you're admitting you're culpable. No, I just want this to end. Yeah, I just want to end. Some soup will yeah, get it. You'll done. be you know, feeding chef, the people in Guantanamo Bay now, Mr. Boyardee. You know, Chef Boyardee was a real man. Um, him and his uh, his sons, I believe, started a meat. Initially, it was a meatball company, I think, and they or maybe a deli, and they they ended up transitioning into the canned goods market. And mm -hmm. they uh, they spelled his name phonetically because uh, may have been around World War II, and maybe you didn't want to be a mamma mia kind of food out there <laughs> in cans. So <laughs> Chef Boy R D sounded a lot better, so they just spelled it like that. <laughs> plus, plus we can't. Howdy, yeah, everyone! Like <laughs> this is my American. I saw them eating that Chef R D. I think in like Last of Us. And uh, and they, they kind of commented about that. She's, she's like, he knows it. She's like, Chef R.I.D. knows his shit. And he's like, yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> you, you know what kind of stinks is like, I bet he was really good. 
He like I'm sure. I bet he was yeah. really good at making pastas and stuff. And now it's like I guess if he joined the canning operation, I it's haven't not like had Jeff Boyardee since I was like seven. And really, therefore, I still think he's really good. I recall <laughs> it being top Look, flight it's food. Good. It's it is good. It's not <laughs> bad. Like if you add, it just needs a little garlic. It, it, that, that's all it's lacking. Like, Seven like, year old me did not share that opinion. <laughs> yeah, it, the sauce is it just needs like heat. A, the sauce is like this sweet kitty sauce that needs like some basil and garlic to like kick it up a notch. But like. I haven't had Chef Boyardee in a long time, but I, I do have it in my pantry as like emergency food when I bought all that shit when we didn't know how bad the pandemic <laughs> Emergency! Was be. I'm so high! <laughs> like, <laughs> that's that's no. what I have, Chef <laughs> Oh, it's I'm like, glad. <laughs> I shouldn't be using be. a stove. <laughs> that may, you reminded me. Donald Trump um, oh, yes. taking the move, flying into Palestine Wait, uh, this fuck? week. What your notes he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like... I, I, didn't, I didn't show you my cuneiform tablet. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a bar of soap. It's the first language, Woody. It's, 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 it's real. Sumerian. Of course, yeah. I should yeah. know. I had to bake this in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's been terrible weather. <laughs> I had to learn another language, for Christ's sake. Uh, so Donald Trump landed in Palestine, Ohio this week, trying to take advantage of sort of the the left's sort of non take on the whole thing, or mm-hmm. or at least they're non like hyper focus on the thing. And I noticed that he landed with supplies. I saw a bunch of Goya beans, like big pallets full of beans and pallets full of water. And the Wait, first thing he did, or the first video I saw anyway, he goes to the McDonald's <laughs> with with, and he's like. And he's, you know, he's so personable. He immediately, everybody's smiling and everybody's like take, recording him and everybody's happy he's there at, behind the counter. I mean, everybody's lined mm-hmm. up like at, at attention. The boss is here. And he, he's just, he's, he says, uh, I probably, a lot of good looking people back there. A lot of good looking people. I, uh, I bet I know this menu better than any of you. I yeah. bet I know it back. I know it backwards and forwards. I'm going to tell you, look, we're taking care of all the fire department and all the police officers. So whatever they want. I got it. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and, and he bu- kind of buys out McDonald's. And it was just like. It's a good move. Dude, it's hilarious. If, if, I, I buy if, it. Bi- he knows that if, menu. If they sent Biden into Burger King and had him try to do the same thing. True. He'd have had a hard time raising his voice loud enough for everybody <laughs> to hear it. Yeah, he wouldn't know the menu. Yeah. He wouldn't know. The I menu. also struggle with that. I can be loud. I just can't be loud and nice. I can only be loud. <laughs> it's and hard, mean. right? <laughs> yeah, you've got it. Here, here's the trick. Smile while you yell. I'll try it. I'll yeah, that's try what you do. That's how you okay. do it. Hey guys, you get one of those. You get the, yeah, you get there. I've, I've heard. I've heard what a yell. It's it's oh that um that AI program eleven I think it is where you oh, can no. sample lots of like uh, audio uh-huh. and then they 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 had uh they've got one they call Blue Boy Woody. <laughs> and and they're using it against each other in our Discord. Like, like, when it, like, like they're being mean to each other with our voices. So, so, so it, and it sounds just like me, and it sounds enough like you that that it could hurt somebody's feelings that, that grew up watching your Minecraft. So it's, it's real funny shit in there. They're they're, they're going great. back and forth with those. I want to um, see it. I saw well, maybe the hangout this weekend. So yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hangout um, this weekend. We'll definitely hangout is coming samples. up this weekend. Always have a blast in there. I uh I haven't seen any nudity in there in a while. It's very disappointing. I'd like to see some at, at least some I'm cock say and no more, Kyle. I'm on None it. it. <laughs> I, I've got enough ears on my phone. I went to clean out my phone the other day, and there's so much woody vascularity in there. It's he's just popping around every corner as i'm i'm going through my well, my phone warned me it's like you've got 95 <laughs> megabit megabits left or something of, right, of woody we gotta, shirtless we got to get in here and clear well i uh you know i've been on a cut so <laughs> people oh, start sending you know, up. Proud of you. <laughs> on. um I'm, I'm getting a new phone um for some reason hmm. the s23 is really cheap um it seems like a good phone to me it seems like an eight nine hundred dollar phone but i think i what? got it how much is it I, I think like eight. I think they're like eight or nine hundred dollars, but I got it for like a couple hundred through via my um, my carrier, I guess. Hmm. Does that have the pin? It doesn't have the pin, right? It's just the brand new S twenty three. Is it the ultra or just regular? I think it's just the regular. I think it is the regular. Oh wow! But I, so, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just googled the phone and yeah, it's a big upgrade for me because I got like a Pixel five. I don't know what this is. It's, um, uh, it's like a three year old phone though. It says a thousand bucks for the regular one. On just quick Google. Yeah, I'm excited. I got the green one. So nice. it's going to be fun to have a, a new fancy phone with a bunch of features. I'm going to take a have? lot of dog pictures. Again, I don't know what the fuck this is, but um, 
I can't remember. I just remember I got the one that had the big, the best battery life. It's a Motorola something, um, and it's so heavy. But it's got a two-day battery. Who will you be giving the new phone to? ATF, DEA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Oh, geez. I literally like like when FBI. Like, like, you want to change it up a little bit? I, I, I literally <laughs> said that at the time. I was I was like, you know, the last nice phone I had was the S8 Edge. You ever see one of those? There, are, it was amazing at the time. I think at the time yeah. it was like it had a four, maybe it had an 8K screen. It had something like cutting edge. The nicest like phone in the ago. evidence lock. It, it was the nicest <laughs> phone. The ev- they came, they came, they locked me up like three weeks after I bought that fucking phone. Cash, like, 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 like the, it, it was <laughs> so, nice. so nice. The, the, the gimmick on that one is that there's no bezel. It's the screen just goes to the edge and wraps over, and mm. it's I don't know. It, it feels nice. It's nifty. Um, Did you but, have a case on it? I don't. I don't know. Okay. I I I, gen, I generally don't use cases. Um, this one's broken right now, which is why I'm replacing it. Um, I, the one the they dog took, fucking knocked it down. Are you ever gonna get it back? Like, what happens no. to the stuff if they take stuff from you? You can't ever like you can't like petition to be like, hey, can I get that back at least? Or are they just like, this is ours, and we'll talk to you? How I does think. It work? I, I think because it was evidence of like, because uh, that was the phone where I had texted my girlfriend and been like, hey, you want to smoke some weed tonight or something oh, like that yeah. one time. And uh, and so they just keep that bitch forever. Um, and I, I got a bunch of my other shit back, like like my PCs and like they took my Garmin. Like the, the way those warrants work, it's like anything that turns on, they're, they're, they're getting shit that doesn't have any connectivity. They're just getting little devices and shit like anything like, like that's a vape. That's a vape pen. What are you taking? Uh, you know, anything that turns on, they'll they'll gonna write them up. on your behalf. Like, hey, hey, the FBI. I have a lot of pictures of my shirtless friend. They mean a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a copy? <laughs> I had um, yeah, FBI. I just wanted to put myself on your radar real quick. <laughs> <laughs> because because I made so many uh, videos, one of the things that I would do, um, I would get somewhere to film. And I'd be like, oh, fuck, we didn't bring any memory cards. Go to Walmart and buy three memory cards. And so I ended up with a huge, a plethora of memory cards. Everything from, from eight gigs up to like 64 gigs. And I'm, I mean like a double handful of them over the years. Each one of those individually bagged, labeled, zip tied up, wow. and then placed into a bigger thing. So when you get your shit back, it's like, where did y'all take? Because the yeah. cause like, cause like they made this many memory cards look like a filing cabinet full of evidence. Um, so they and just had to sit there and watch your videos. <laughs> they they had, had to sit there and be like, "I bet one guy was like, man, this is a sweet job. We're gonna leave like, this guy are, alone. These are Come good on. videos. <laughs> is that a tank? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, and a lot of it was like the B-roll stuff. Like you would take a GoPro with a magnet on it, stick it on the barrel yeah. of a tank, turn it on, and let it roll for three hours. Stupid question, Kyle. Have you ever been in a tank? And I ask because I can't tell the difference between a tank and all the things that look mm-hmm. like tanks. Yeah, I have. Um, okay. I think the Bradley, right? Oh, uh, the, the Sherman, no, no, Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. The uh, Sherman. the World War II like Sherman tank with might be a thirty-seven millimeter cannon on it. Um, I've been in one of those with the working cannon and shot the cannon and okay. driven over a jeep. And um, that was the time when it was like a collector's item. Like like obviously these things are rare because they're World mm-hmm. War II tanks. But this one's like dressy, like the, the stars are painted right. The fenders on these things, you might think, oh, it's a tank. I bet it's tough. Well, the fenders are just like car fenders, the part that like sticks out on the edges. Mm. And uh, the guy who owned it was this big belly guy over there with overalls, arms crossed. I don't know what they told him to let me in this thing. Mm. You know, Who mm. knows what lies he'd been told by because <laughs> there was like a middleman between me and him anyway. And me and the and I'm filming with a reenacting cr- crew. These aren't, it's not just a guy. Yeah, that's Mo. He drives it. It's like, no, that's fucking gunnery sergeant Pete Townsend of the 44th <laughs> Brigade. And like, they're all wearing the exact shit. It looks like Fury. There's pictures of it. I'm sure on my so- social media somewhere. I, it's like Fury. They're all in the, 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 their gear with their helmets and everything. And uh, I'm in that thing. And, and we're supposed to drive over the edge of this Jeep Grand Cherokee that I've procured for $800. And, uh, Hmm. I want to crush the motherfucker, right? But they're like, <laughs> slowly go up to it, push up onto it, and then back off. And I'm talking to homeboy that's driving it. I'm next to him. And, you know, he's got his gear on and everything. And I'm like, this is exactly how it would have been, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, rolling through the streets of some French town. <laughs> Look how hard he hit this motherfucker. <laughs> he, he hit it full fucking speed. 
he didn't, he didn't slow ease down a bit. To it. <laughs> I, dude, I hyped How him fast? up and he crushed it. No, you know, it's a tank, so like a couple miles per hour okay, okay. In, in reality, like okay. jogging speed maybe, uh-huh. but it's a tank, so it like... <laughs> and and I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but that front fender thing there is fucked up on the other side, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's... Uh, what am I holding there? Oh, I'm holding... See, I've got two rounds there. The one on my left is like a solid lead projectile, and the one on the right hand is... Uh, my right hand, your your like camera left is uh, like a shot shell, um, which turned out to be completely ineffective even at close range. Just nonsense. But what does that mean? Like it was a like a tank. Uh, shot I gun? think it was a round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was supposed to shoot a bunch of balls or something. If but but we shot it and like I don't think we made contact with the target. We saw a little dust downrange where it like hit the ground a few oh. spots and it was like that would have How scared many, some folks, wouldn't it? Yeah. How well, many times did you shoot it? it? I honestly don't remember. We probably had a dozen rounds or something like that. I'm sure, like what like was, those, you could. They, they're just loading those. What was it like to get the rounds? How did you procure them? Where did the guy? Oh uh, yeah. Bring? So um, if it the guys who own tanks, artillery pieces, things like that that still fire, um, they load their own ammunition. So they have enormous loading dies, kegs of powder, like out of like video games, you know, the exploding yeah. barrels. They've got those. Um, and uh, they'll make their own projectiles, form them out of liquid lead, um, and make their own bullets because obviously you can't go yeah. uh, get those old rounds anymore. And it requires some special licensing. Like, first, you've got to have a tank, which is yeah. really just an, a, a road vehicle in the end. A lot of them have plates on them so you can drive them somewhere. <laughs> we did that a couple times. But then getting the breach to be live, um, I think it requires a Type 10, um, which is very, you know, a very high level. Um, you're, you're able to manufacture destructive devices and make that breach live. And then you just need rounds for it. Like I said, that's kind of a small cannon. I think that's 37 millimeter. If I remember correctly, it's been a while, but I shot a tank destroyer one time and that thing was like, the bullet was big. Like it, it wasn't like a, something you'd hold in your hand. It was like something you support with both hands, like a goddamn child. It's like, this is the fucking bullet that goes in this fucking hell cat tank destroyer thing. So that thing was, was different. That was like, was it open top? Mm-mm, that was also like a, it's called a tank destroyer, but to my mm-hmm. eyes, it's like, what's the fucking difference? It's a tank. We're down in this thing with the, yeah. you know, with a, you're, and you're in it. That one was a lot cooler. That was a more modern piece, like maybe Korea or Vietnam. I'm just guessing. I don't know shit about tanks. That was when we nearly killed Jeremy because Jeremy was hanging out the top of the tank recording. <laughs> And I was shooting a plywood hut that we had put a trash bag full of tannerite in. I don't know how much. We just filled the trash bag, like a big, like black trash how bag. How did you shake it? Did you just shake it in the bag? Wow. Yeah. And then we like tied a knot in the top, tied a rope to that, ho- held it in the center of, in the air inside of a car, uh, plywood hut that was like two by fours around the corners, begged the crowd to back up and they refused. And so I got in that son of a bitch and like let her rip. And shit went everywhere. Pieces of two by fours that like a tornado had like torn them asunder and made them into like lethal splinters that would just right, right past us. Like, like, like I'm down in wow. a tank. I don't give a shit. I've You're... warned everyone. <laughs> I'm not sure you wouldn't be liable. Like, not my hey tank. guys, I'm not my shooting land. toward you. How many people move. were there? Like, they didn't move. Them. Not my 15, fault. 15, 20 at least. 15, How 20 close least. were they? When you're like 30 yards up. behind me um, yeah. and like and like up on a ridge like like they were in the blast zone like they the shit went up there to where they were um they they, they refused I, I i begged and begged and I'm, I'm like i'm filming here they like we're on public land this ain't my tank <laughs> like y'all need to leave i'm about to blow this shit up and they were like let her in <laughs> you know it's pretty dope. usually usually tried to uh not have a fucking studio audience for things like that but i think that the guy that owned the tank like brought all of his buddies um to to see the show what russian tanks have you been in the ones with the oh glowing i don't i don't know what it's called um but it's um i drove it through this guy's house in texas um Mm. he was he wanted his house destroyed because he was building a bigger (laughs) fancier mansion and uh and he also owns the apc or whatever it is it has a cannon but it's not operational or at least it was at the time they hadn't gone through the paperwork and everything of making it fire but the gauges in that thing were um, were radium. The, I think the gimmick we did there was I drove through the house at like full speed. And then at one point I parked in the house and then we were trying to blow the house down onto me. So we set charges all in the house and like blew the house down. Yeah, there you go. Wow. 
See that that's a good shot from the drone there. That's Richard Ryan's mm. work. Uh, Rich, it, Richard was wow. on the drone. Yeah, Richard why Ryan's is, on the drone there. Why is the explosion coming out of the roof like that? Because we set spots. the charges on the second oh, floor. Okay. There's uh there's three charges on the second floor. Those charges are um, I don't know the exact mixture, but it's uh there's some plastic explosive and uh. I, and uh, I think it's all plastic. It's mostly plastic explosive, but it's against water barrels and it's hyper pressurizing that water and creating those mm, jets uh. that you're seeing blow everything out. So everywhere you see like a cloud of, of vapor, that's the water being used to send everything flying. It's a lot safer than the alternative, which, would, I, you know, I didn't realize it was on a river when you felt when I saw the video. Oh, that's a little. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a yeah, nice there's, place. Um, there's a yeah, there's a sick pool in the backyard that like overlooks that that little valley, and uh, and that's his river. It flows into a big lake that he's got. The lake is full of like these giant inflatable obstacles to like ride your jet skis around. Um, <laughs> that house say, was nice, wasn't it? Before you blew it up, like it. That was technically a mobile home, like like so they brought that in in um um mo a module. That's a modular home. See that is a that, that's because yeah. Dale Earnhardt lived for a long time in what, what's called a modular home. They bring it in sections and stick it together, and because uh, he wanted a nice place fast at, at, at one point when he when he got all that money, um, but they were destroying that to build a a very legitimate mansion. I'm told, hmm. um, but yeah, that, that guy's got every toy you can imagine. I I I can't think of anything he doesn't have that you would want. You know, like if you want a fast car, a jet, you want your own skeet range. I mean, he's living on a wild game preserve. <laughs> I have I have a wealthy friend, and uh, he's getting into flying now. And he's, he's like, yeah, I think I'm going to buy a jet. And it's just like <sighs> that. He was asking me for like, yeah, what would you look for if you were choosing a flight in school, like instructor, you know? And and I, I didn't know, but I had friends who have licenses, so I passed it on. But uh, I, it's just kind of neat to be like, to have that kind of cash. He can have anything he wants. Yeah. Nearly. I mean, there are some super yachts and stuff. He's but. yeah, but like he can make things happen as well. Because like I know there was a time um, over there in Texas where they were like, "Well, can't have a jet without a runway, can we? Let's get started on that." <laughs> and it's just like, "Hey, get, call, call the graders. We need a runway. <laughs> we're gonna need <laughs> we're gonna need three miles of concrete to make that happen. <laughs> like, how do you make that happen? Um, they just made a fucking runway, you know, right there on the property. I don't know what that must have cost. What does a runway cost? I don't know. Land and take off, jet off. Is it a million? How a nice million? is it? I don't know. Was it got, we got, is it, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's just a private landing strip in the end, Kurt, but but, he, but I know they land like a, a jet, like a like a jet that you and the boys get in and, and yeah. hop on over to New Orleans and kind of thing. <laughs> I've never seen an asphalt runway. Asphalt taxiways, yes, but not runway. Maybe it has to be grass or concrete. I don't know. I guessed concrete. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that's no, that's, just yeah, that's, that's pretty wild when you've got hundreds of millions of dollars and, uh, and, and you've also like the way his thing is set up there. I don't, I don't think there's a bottom. I think, um, you know, it's a, it's a nonprofit that they're running there with the wild game thing, taking care of those animals. So, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think the things are set up real well there. For sure, in but I think the nonprofit is making a profit. I don't know. I'm just guessing. The profit yeah. is enjoy the enjoyment of the uh, <laughs> rehabilitation of animals and uh, and get and, uh, and and a love for the outdoors. I'm sure. And well, I stand corrected. All right. The Dude, that's why to survey his land is his private jet, of course, to check on his uh, his animals and stuff. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> I want to. I would like to. Go, I, I keep saying it. But I still. I want to go kill a bear. Every really? time I like. Yeah, I, I really want to go on a bear hunt. So, would um, any bear do? What kind of bear no, do you want to kill? No, any bear won't do. It needs to be a scare bear. A grizzly or a polar. A polar bear. Jesus, want to go to the zoo? <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids are crying. I'm going yeah, to the yeah. Don't worry, kids. Stay back. Make yourself out to be some total badass with a jungle background and a spear. Who's like, I gotta go on. for a bear. And then you throw the spear into the cage. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, God. I come up like an Arctic explorer. <laughs> How's he gonna a, a polar bear? It looks like he's in the tropical rainforest. Or everyone, I'm <laughs> Maybe you go to the next fashion. biome. You have one of those thick pelt coats in Atlanta. <laughs> You're so sweaty. <laughs> Sweltering.
I just imagine you as that guy from Jumanji with all the stereotypical hunter gear, just walking yeah, through the zoo. So perfect. you would fit in yeah. as well, you know? Oh, yeah. I worked at a morning. polar bear hunt. I, I mean, mean, I was dressed for the warm weather. <laughs> What yeah. else do you really want to do? And maybe I think it's tall order and it's um, exp- expensive at the same time. I don't even know it can, if it can be exactly legally done, but I would like to kill a grizzly bear with uh, some primitive with primitive arms. I want to kill it with with um, a bow and or a black powder rifle, but I don't want to use bow, a super. Do you mean like? A compound bow. School? Oh, compound bow. No, I would use a modern compound bow. Like, like we ain't got to go like Native American uh, <laughs> uh, on this shit. I'm not going to fletch my own arrows out of horse shit or anything. I'm going to get a <laughs> modern compound bow that shoots 350 feet per second with a broad head that's two and a quarter inches of razor blade thunder. Wouldn't you feel heart. maybe maybe a little more satisfied if it was like a old-timey recurve bow or something? Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> not th- that it's wouldn't it feel cooler like you, br- you bring right. it down like that if we're t- if we're being silly then we can go down that realm but but if you want to know the truth about the difference in a recurve bow and a compound bow it's it's like wouldn't it be cooler if you killed it with like a pistol with no sights it's like yeah but i'm yeah. not a magician yeah <laughs> so i don't think I, the idea of killing a grizzly oh, bear settlers did it in the days bow, of old no they didn't nobody killed grizzly bears with recurve bows i nobody was banking that. that they did and that that would slide in past the goal no league. It's not. <laughs> no he would kill you he would kill you um I, I don't i don't i can't imagine someone killing a grizzly bear with a recurve bow i imagine it'd be like a two-stage fight the first arrow then you have to fight it spear. with your hands like, 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 like if we're falling back to a spear yeah. um or if we're in an elevated position we're just going to wound him like it just doesn't have enough power i don't think you could shoot him repeatedly a- Hey, yeah, he'll be quick for that. before it gets you. Uh, I'm I'm back at the zoo idea. You can oh, yeah. really get him with the bow. I got all day, cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looked like a bull at a bullfight with all the freaking things sticking out of him. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like yeah. mouth is stained blue from the icy stand. <laughs> you're just you taking look like me every time like... I play Minecraft with just arrows popping out <laughs> in every direction. But with a compound bow, you can you can kill a bear you can kill a moose you can kill an elk you can kill anything compound bows are tremendously powerful if you're you know a moose would be supposed cool. to do with them. a moose would be cool yeah but i want to kill a yeah. bear because i want the bear skin i want to make are a you rug picky you make would a you be would you be okay with I'll, any but put the rug grizzly? on the wall if that makes sense oh, okay. huh? would you be okay like with a baby or grizzly like or, or are you like no if i'm going grizzly hunting i want like like an alpha male that kind of has a territory well, well well i think i would be okay with any grizzly bear like as long as it was like big enough to kill me like like as long as it, like, like 500 pounds and up like i think i'd be satisfied yeah. I, I could kill a little one that's a good yeah. metric yeah like if as long as it's big enough to kill you that's still cool obviously yeah, the I, bigger the better i don't want to i don't want to feel like the bully in the situation you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> i want to feel i want to feel like i'm punching up but you, you are you <laughs> are the bully he's not coming to your house with the bow like <laughs> fuck you god up. gave me you know, over all the beasts of the land and the sky taylor i'll have you know you want to i want to look that one up okay so yeah he's in my house wherever he goes Keep, <laughs> so go ahead and god's house <laughs> jot that down we have been given <laughs> dominion over the the beasts of the land and the the fish of the sea and so mm-hmm. i think we should continue to uh, abuse them and pump them full of plastic <laughs> I, it's fucked. i'm I, I don't care about those Bangladeshi fish like plastic it up maybe they'll make, make some floaties and it'll be easier on them we'll get better fish that aren't so lazy yeah. Oh no! No, my Bangladeshi fish fries. Like, no. I'll care when it impacts me directly, and by then it'll be far too late. <laughs> Next time some fucker tries to tell me not to use a plastic goddamn straw, I'm gonna show him that that chart we looked at of how much plastic goes in the sea per country that we're not even fucking on. We're not even on the chart. The, the chart, United States. You know, what I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna start cutting these straws into itty bitty pieces before I throw them. <laughs> Before I rinse them down the drain, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna yeah. cut them into such tiny pieces they'll go down the drain. <laughs> just, just shredding it, making it. I'm gonna. You're gonna cut them into little worm shapes so the Dude, fish are confused and they eat I, them. I, I'm joking, like like being a piece of shit. But I saw, I've seen people on Twitter being like, "Take this, libs," and like pouring grease down the drain. <laughs> It's like and that's like, I hope you're that's not your house. Like <laughs> because that's not ideal, man. <laughs> lips. Bunch of fucking pussies say you shouldn't pour half a gallon of bacon grease down your fucking sink. Yeah, well, you shouldn't. You're I'll say this to. as well. Look, I always hear you're not supposed to do that. And hey, I bet you're not. I've always done it. I, and I've dumped huge gallons at a time of vegetable oil down 
down my drain. Never had an issue once. Here's what I do. <laughs> Because you know, I what I do. I move every water. year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Here's what I do. I move every year. That's it's fucking true. funny. It's true. My house has had a horrid leak <laughs> for, for months. Every, I mean, I did flush half a turkey down the toilet after Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, I just dump it down the drain. I, I'll tell you what. What my my method is. I usually heat it up first on the stove, the oil, and then I'll uh, you know I'll, I'll run the hot water down the drain. And then I'll throw some like di- some like lo- some uh, soap, some dishwashing soap down there because I, I like to imagine that kind of cuts the grease and maybe coats the pipes a little so it slips down through them a little better, doesn't stick as much. I don't know. It got to help it though. Sounds so like throw, it works. So I give it a big hurt. squeeze of that, and then I dump that hot grease straight down there, and I let the water run for you know five minutes with the you know add a little soap every now and then. I never have any issues, and I, I don't care what's it. on the other end of that. Follow up soap seems like it would cut it too. I. And you know, the get Drano is amazing. I, I almost want the thing to get clogged so I can use Drano on it. It's so satisfying. It is satisfying to use Drano. Drano is amazing yeah. if it's stuck. If it's slow, Drano goes right past it and it doesn't mm. work. You gotta get that fancy kind that foams up. I ha- I've had way better luck with the little fishing things that have the pokey sides. I have those. Ever, yeah, those did you ever good. make the did you ever make bombs out of the um, the uh, that 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 um, that lie uh, drain cleaner stuff? With I grew up in a city, I Kyle. I jumped off what? bridges. I rode None my bike everywhere. No. I, oh, I, right. so I went surfing every day. I've never, never made, made a bomb. bomb. Yeah, <laughs> y'all ain't never made. Woody a bomb. and I are lame. <laughs> like <laughs> lame All right, so here's what you do. You uh, in Minecraft, you get yourself like a 20 ounce bottle, two liter bottle. If you're going big boy, yeah, three liter lightly here, buddy. <laughs> for the three liters, you have to go to like a Minecraft Walmart or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then they used to make this product um, that had lye that you in can't it. remember the name of. Yeah, no, I don't even know what that stuff was. But you'd you'd put some uh, some aluminum foil in that bottle, and you'd add some of that other stuff in there, and you just put the cap on and give it a good shake. And I saw this happen to so many stupid kids. You would tell them, "Hey, man, shit takes about two minutes to activate. Then it's going to start producing a ton of gas. A chemical reaction is taking place. That gas is going to start." pressurizing the bottle at a rapid rate once that chemical reaction has begun you've got about 20 seconds before that bomb goes off that 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 bottle is going to get really big and you might think 20 ounce bottle popping what's the big deal it is like a shotgun blast going off next to your head it is the loudest thing you can imagine it is an because it's over pressurizing something take it to the very limit of that plastic and you'd be shocked how big that plastic gets a two liter gets huge oh it grows it, does it just yes. scale up? oh yeah could you do it it's with a plastic visual. barrel maybe it gets oh. there's an exothermic reaction happening too so it's like boiling oh. aluminum foil in there and it's getting hot it's getting hot in the bottle and it's making this gas and it's just boom by the end and so people are sitting there like it ain't gonna do anything and it's like you're playing with an explosive like throw it i could throw it uh, those things are. I can't believe y- y'all don't make any bombs growing what, up. Like, nah, like not even wasn't. any little black powder stuff. Any, you know, we didn't you make just, them, and we like, had firecrackers and repurposed firecrackers, cherry bombs. You ever dump out uh, firecrackers and just kind of repurpose them? That that was all I've ever done. Never. I don't know. The problem was that is like most Chinese firecrackers are kind of sealed up with that mud. They use like mud on mud. either end of the cardboard tube. Yeah, they think that, like mud on either end, um, and then. The powder charge and the fuse and then more mud and then it turns you know it hardens up and it's that's what firecrackers are made out of so like getting the black powder out of them was always a problem so i would just you know go buy black powder from the store you know then you then you could just get around all that other stuff and do what you and want have to your do. fun with your what age was this when you yeah. learned how to do that this is very recently <laughs> uh, I mean, like, no, uh, no, it wasn't. Was <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. It was four and a half. Um, I think I started making like the. Uh, I was about fifteen, probably making the um, the ones with the the toilet bulk. Old cleaner. enough for Kevin Space. But but I was I was probably like I was probably like twelve when I started making like my own firecrackers out of like brass shells and gunpowder and and like cannon fuse and stuff like that. You know, just that's what you would get out of firecrackers or what I would get. Um, I would either get the sparklers or I would, if I was lucky, I always want to go to the fireworks store, but I didn't want fireworks. I wanted cannon fuse. I, I wanted to make my own fireworks. I just needed fuse. Making your own fuse is a little scary. Did anyone question how you knew so much at such a young age about things that go boom? 
Well, I mean, I didn't run around town talking about bombs. I mean, if you, needed, <laughs> if you needed the materials, wouldn't they be like, why do you need this little little boy? He always keeps a well-worn copy of the <laughs> of the Unabomber Manifesto. And, and, and again, you know, I wasn't making like a daily practice out of like blowing stuff up. But, um, you know, I knew how to do that. And that's what we did for fun. There wasn't a lot else to do. We were just blowing stuff up on the farm, making all sorts of little, really just pyrotechnics. It, it, it depends how you look at it. If you look at it... Um, if we were in California, we would be testing pyrotechnics for our, for a film career that's coming up. But because we're in Georgia, we're like, whack power extremists, maybe. You never know. It's like, dude, we're just having fun out here. We want to make some cool videos. Yeah. <laughs> Learning how to, make to be Russian. <laughs> I remember uh, Freddie W. sent me this video on Skype when he just had figured out how to make these fireball pyrotechnics. And I was like, oh, I can do so much better. Like the mm. next day, like, like we were going to work trying to like do, blow that away, trying to like fix that. Um, no, I've always liked blowing stuff up. It's fun. We like, you grew Safe. up on a farm. Like when I would go to my yeah, grandparents' farm often, like we would ride ATVs and like do stuff with the cows and like shoot guns a lot, but no bombs, a lot really? of paintball on the farm. I have Yellowstone yeah. questions. So your grandfather has an actual cattle farm. Not anymore. He's, he's too old. He used to. Okay. That yeah. still works. Hmm. Did he use cowboys and horses to manage the cows? No. No, he used uh, ATVs <laughs> and a truck, largely. So how many, he, how like, many head of cattle are we talking? Hmm. Uh, it was like at the peak. I think it was like 700. How big is a farm for that? It was, pretty it, was big... pretty, it was pretty sizable. Usually it wasn't that many. Did he sell like, the uh, land since then? He sold some of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it was just too much. He like He just always loved it. Like he he grew up farming, you know, it's what he knew, what he's comfortable with. Like he's one of those guys like coming to St. Louis is like the big city. Like he it's pretty hates big. it. He hates coming here. Like so he he'll sell be here calves. for a day trip. He would sell calves cow, or cow calf pears or, or do you know? No, like he, he sold was? direct to like the, the fucking meat people. Mm. OK, well, so he, they were probably taking the um, I guess he matured Steve, the, the, the calves into cows and. Yeah, sold. Them. Yeah, so like he keep, would get probably keeping the cows and selling the males. And that's all he did his whole life, just cattle farm. Mm-mm. Uh, when he was much younger, he was like a uh, an electrician. Like he would climb the the poles and like do that kind of shit, like down a highways. Lineman. A lot. Li- yeah. yeah, he was. That's what it was called. He's yeah. a lineman. Did trucking. He he did a bunch of stuff. And then so, settled on so, cows. Can I go back to the ATV thing? That yeah, d- were there like a team of people directing the cows in some direction on ATVs? Like four of them, just buzzing uh, around. Like it, it wasn't because the pastures were like subsectioned off in such a way. Like he didn't have a shit ton of people, and so like they would just move them to smaller pastures, like piecemeal. Like it, it wasn't a huge drive somewhere. It's like. Get him over there, close the gate behind him, knock him over to this pasture, close that gate, and that'll be at this pasture and this one for the next X amount of And they're moving know, them so that, yeah. like, there's fresh tall grass for them to eat here and rotten old grass. Yeah, and so, like, you, you naturally, like, cycle through pastures to so that you're not over-fucking up one of them because the cows will just destroy the ground if you leave them in that there's area a ratio. over a while. There's a formula for um, how much um, square footage you need per cow if, if you're mm. not... You know, hmm. And and then a timetable, right? Because there's there's a amount of land that you can throw. You throw one cow in a pasture. You don't need to rotate them anywhere. There's a, yeah. How many do you need to add before you do? Right? You know, if it, it we've got 20 acres here, how many cows do we add before? Oh, we need to be rotating every six weeks or whatever it may come come to. 700 is hmm. a lot. 700 is a lot. Did you ever? Well, have it was. I, I'm probably remembering more. And I know like the biggest groups I saw were like when he and like a couple of other his other farmer guys were like sharing pastures and stuff. But I remember as a child, like being blown away by it and like having so much fun, like seeing so many fucking cows run across pastures. And then like knowing like I remember being kind of scared of them when I was like a very little kid because it was like that thing could just barrel over me. And then like it was a cool moment being like when he would be like, Taylor, come up, say hi. And then I remember like I got so comfortable with them that I would be like when the new cows would come, I'd be like, welcome to the neighborhood, like <laughs> saying hi to them. And I'd like pet them all and like play with them. And it, it was not play with them. I didn't want to play. But there's it was, a it was fun. place in Florida that teaches you to fly paramotors. And not far from there are huge. Just I can't even call them pastures. I, and I don't know how to estimate the acreage. I'll say 
15,000 acres. I don't even like miles of, of field. Anyway, they hate it, hate it, hate it when people fly low over the cows, like mm -hmm. within yeah. like 100 feet or 200 feet up. Can you explain the damage that I'm doing to cows by flying 200 feet over them? Like a miscarry. They, yeah, they, they're very easy to scare and stress out and novel, uh, novel stimuli like spooks them very easily. So if it's something that they haven't experienced before, you flying in low over them could could spook a couple of them. Could run them through a fence too. Yeah. So they would spook and just make bad decisions, like go into yeah, deep or it, or it or could just yeah. Like Kyle's right, it could fucking miscarry. Like it could just okay. Like skits go so scared. For what it's worth, I'm really good about it, but people aren't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh and, fuck oh, it! I'd go down there and kick one in the ass. <laughs> I don't care. I'm flying low. It would prefer that because if you kicked a cow right in the ass, it'd be. It wouldn't look at you. Like I think we said this before. Oh, if Brock Lesnar punched a, a a bull in the head as hard as he could, he'd he'd break his hand on that big flat piece of bone as thick as a as a cast iron skillet. Did you see that video of the Russian punching the camel the other day? I thought no, what an idiot no. who punches a camel. Dude, I'm, I'm guessing the camel hated it. He walks up to this camel. He walks up to this camel and fucking slaps him one. Like he thinks he's Arnold Schwarzenegger and Conan the Barbarian, right? Yeah. The thing mauls him to death. What? It, 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 it bites him on the shoulder and picks him up. That and pussy throws take him. a camel? It throws him. I don't know how far. Maybe 8, 12 feet. Camel's and then it runs it over me. there and stomps him a few times. And then it starts like biting the shit out of him, like mauling him. And then it picks him up again and flicks him again. Like it's like grabbing him and then flicking that big long neck. It kills him. And who's you can see the blood me? on the ground. If, if there's a video, was the uh, it's, it's like just a like... security camera type oh. situation. Is it in the snow? Yeah. I found it. Yeah. It, I yeah. just linked it. It's yeah. It makes... We can't oh. share it, of course. Yeah, we can't New share most hundred percent chance they'll wreck us. But good stuff. He hit the camel and the camel's letting him slide. He is well, continuing to fuck with the camel. Now he's wrestling the camel. He's on his back, up kicking the camel, and it's going poorly for him. Now. It's going very <laughs> poorly. <laughs> wow. Oh, now, and the it, camel is dominating. The, the camel, it, like Kyle said, it, he is picking up, yeah. dragging him around, and shaking him like a dog with a rope toy. Yeah. The camel. And once again, your champion is Corey the camel. <laughs> <laughs> shaking all comers, any human, any bipedal ape. He says, "I'll take you down in this snowy parking lot." You know, the, the human was winning the first 15, 20 seconds of the fight. No, mm. that was the that was the couple fight hadn't seconds. Begun yet. That was a couple seconds of the camel being like, what's going on? And it's like, I guess we're fighting. And then it murdered it. It killed him. <laughs> it's at a children's camp is what it says. So oh, like, what did, that, what did that camel do? Like, why is he? I don't know. Why is he bullying camels? camels? Yeah. yeah, camels are no are. It's an, an animal that everyone under understands they're mean, right? Like that's no, they're well, not mean. I didn't know. They're ornery, a, right? I well, hung out a camel with one. Friend. If it's in the I, snow, I, it might not be happy. Like it doesn't I, I seem bet like it's not it's having a great time, and I bet they're not treating <laughs> it well. Because I met a camel named Sushi, and and she was amazing. That camel, I thought they I were go, mean. I met a camel at a petting farm, <laughs> and their lips are almost like fingers. When you fingers. when you feed them, you put your hand flat, and they they just sort of pick it up with their lips. But unlike your lips and mine. The two fronts are different sides, so they kind of have. Mm -hmm. Is it prehensile? What, what yeah, is like an opposing? They got this thumb? like yeah. vagina prehensile. mouth where like the left side and the right side can do stuff. They work independently bet, to pick. Things I bet up. a camel could suck some real dick. Oh yes, I'm not storming that beach. Oh, speaking of <laughs> sucking dick, I saw someone link me this earlier. I guess. Um, <laughs> this I can't Twitch wait streamer, to see where this goes. Yeah, this. Oh, actually, let me just link you, like, I, so so that you have you guys have the visual. Um, this. This guy's, uh, I guess he got a blowjob on live stream on Twitch. Accidentally, I'm sure. You know, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Because the, the, the headline reads, he received a one-day ban um, on Kick. Oh, Kick's a different streaming service, by the way. Mm. Um, after allegedly receiving oral sex on stream. So I saw allegedly. I watch it. Are you just seeing a still image? No, it's a video. I, mean, um, I need to log into Twitter. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Here, I got you. I got you. That's I've never the, heard of Kick. I think uh, it's fairly that's new. the place where you know how after after slots got banned or well, not banned they technically didn't get completely banned just non um some sites like some casinos are no longer allowed but after that they all went to kick is what i can tell oh is so it like a gambling streaming site no it's not just for that it's an alternative to twitch but you're allowed to 
do slots and stuff over there that you're not allowed to do on Twitch. So like even like Trainwreck, he was doing s- slots on Twitch every day and then he went there. So I think oh. that's like their alternative to keep slots going. I didn't know. So that I, I read allegedly got a blowjob and then I watched the video and I watch him skull fuck a girl and then come down her throat <laughs> and her go allegedly, allegedly. allegedly. And then and then she goes, Thanks, Daddy. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, what do you mean allegedly? I just watch, I, just watch. <laughs> I don't why why can't so why can't they just make him the king of Twitch? Like that. <laughs> That, I don't know. I don't know who this guy is, but it seems like he's he's doing a great job providing content for people. He does make good content. I, what did she say at the end? Was it? I heard "Hello, Daddy." I, it was something like that. You know, "Hello, I, I, Daddy." That would be disjointed. That's not the beginning of their encounter. It had to be something else. I I, I, I guess I couldn't make out any. You know, once you hear something, you can't unhear anything but that. It, you know, to be fair, yeah. Woody, she was sucking dick on Twitch or not even Twitch. Her mouth might have been full. It was, I doubt what she said was that profound. <laughs> I think I doubt it was cold. like yeah. the key to world peace or anything. It was probably just like wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> I respect her. I like it. You're whatever you want to do. It's making the world so a better one, place. I'm one day children watching. One day suspension. You know, even I, our boy Finn got more than that, right? <laughs> yeah. For showing his, for, for, for adjusting his man bra. Yeah, that's bullshit. Wow. You know, do you know fight Finster? for Finn? Hashtag fight for Finn. This is, this, so, is, this is bigotry. This is unacceptable. So Finster is a good friend of the show. And what he does, he is a you know cis Finster? Ma- he, is, he doesn't. He's, mm-hmm. Finster is a cis male. Um, he's a straight guy. and uh, But he cross-dresses for Twitch. Mm-hmm. And well. he is so pretty that it's, it's, it's dumbfounding. And, uh, and he, was adjusting, <laughs> he was adjusting his bra with his man chest underneath it. And uh, and he got banned for like female presenting cleavage or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's your, that's your boy is. right there. <laughs> that's Finster. That's a guy. That's a straight guy. Boy, boy, Finster sounds a little like this. Is yeah, he doesn't do a voice mm-hmm. at all. He's I think he's British, but uh, <laughs> he just totally has a guy's voice. Yeah, yeah it's upsetting. What is it just like? <laughs> <laughs> For now, Kyle, you just keep needling away. <laughs> <You> just <laughs> he's starting an OnlyFans. Like it's only so long before he he figures the voice out, right? You think so? I think maybe. He's I mean, ha- that, that's what the image that that we just showed there was. I think that was him being like OnlyFans. Like that's what he's gesturing toward. And in, in case you didn't notice, may have been staring somewhere else with your leering <laughs> gaze. I must have been. Mm. I must have been. I didn't even notice. I was mm. just enraptured <laughs> it, it is such a funny job that he's like whittled out for himself there where he was like i like to play video games and <laughs> it's like not anymore now he was all now you're he a was a successful boy. minecraft server runner and streamer like this isn't a guy who's like well yes it's this now this is you know, <laughs> slowly tra- he's transitioned from a successful streamer youtuber to an uber successful fem girl E girl, yeah. I should say. He's a I learned threat. about this in business school. He didn't make a mistake that's really common. So hmm. one thing that happens is people be like, you know what? I make water filters and I'm going to install these water filters in everyone's house and it's going to be cool. And then along comes a business or fucking a fish tank guy or whatever. And they start buying your fit, your water filters. A bad businessman says, no, nah, this isn't what my vision was. It was all about kitchen sinks. So take your fucking restaurants and your whatever. Mm-hmm. A good one says, oh, there's a market here. You know, I can serve this market. If it's coming to me, I do that. That's what Finster did. Finster had a business. I didn't know he had a Minecraft server, but a Minecraft server is certainly a so. streaming thing. Um, mm-hmm. But then he found a better business and he pivoted and now he's one of the more profitable streamers on period and that's full time yeah. he had a three hundred thousand yeah. dollar donation wow he's yeah very he, he, gets, he gets a lot of like five figure donations that, that are from like weird Even people four who, figures is noteworthy like of course it is of three course figures. It is. <laughs> <laughs> what was the like when was the first time that he did that for twitch was it just like I'm just gonna? He's trans. So he doesn't like to talk of, about it. <laughs> he sort of he sort of morphed into like a. He gets prettier. First of all, I like your tattoo. Let me see that. Um, but but he's uh he's kind of. I thought about getting that exact. Both of them. Ooh. You got the feather and the birds. I mean, I, Show me the birds. Uh okay. Yeah, you gotta so turn your arm the other way. I you have your just cute, your stereotypical uh sorority okay. girl tattoo. It's yeah, almost got that same one. Perfect. No, it shows yeah. a connection with nature. 
<laughs> and with the thirty-five dollar section of the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, I felt really cool. Even though now, it's like, ugh. no, it looks good. You. <laughs> no, I like it. I, I, I legitimately do. Um, None of us have tattoos. We're lame. I what do. Does. Admit. Oh, I, what he does. I love tattoos. my tattoo. Every time I see it on Jackie, in particular, I like it. For, I don't know. I think it's cooler than renewing your vows. They got, get, like, they got avocado halves that match, very sweet. and his has the pit. Yeah, because it, it's like the dick. I, get, I don't and know. We, like we actually went back and forth. They're, they're like cute and cartoony. Hmm. Yeah, Zach, can you show our tattoos? I, I don't know. People have seen it before. When I was getting this one, it was in, I like when I was living in Finland, and he was like, because at the time I was going for an engineering degree, and he was doing the birds on my wrist, and he was like, just let me know when to stop. And I looked away for like, I don't know, 45 seconds, and he went from here to here. And I was like, well, that's going to be long sleeves for any corporate job. <laughs> for the rest yeah. of my life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So <laughs> yeah, if you look at it, one. mine has the pit and it like fits in hers, like, mm -hmm. you know, boys and girls, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I I see it every day. So like, it, it's, I don't know. I, 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 we, I was, it was kind of on a whim. But I, it was like a long-term whim. Like I've been thinking about a tattoo for. A I'm so decade. glad they're properly mirrored. That would annoy me. To <laughs> yeah. They yeah. It, for like a decade, I thought about it, and then we were on this weekend vacation, and I was like, "You wanna? Let's get tattoos tomorrow." We started just brainstorming for ideas, and uh, sure enough, we found a place that was open that had good reviews, and we did it, and it worked out really well. The next morning, we were both like, "I can't believe we just got." avocado tattoos on like yeah the, the, and then I that was the last regret. tattoo but but each each of my halves is going to be like the left and the right side of a, a, a living avocado's face so they're just gonna be screaming and in pain on each of them. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna yeah is that on your cool. cage? Did it hurt? yeah 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 i'm surprised you talking about the the tattoo bug usually I'm, people me? are like no no woody because when people oh. get their first tattoo they often yeah. start like mm -hmm. once that seal's broken they Suddenly, they have a bunch of ideas, and they want to keep going. So I think I don't you don't them. have them. You no, have I can't think no. of anything I like that much. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's like you know, my body is just such a work of art that like to add some little addendum to it just frivolously seems foolish. Same. You know? My body too, but it's like one of those like art pieces you know, where it's like a garbage can and a. You know? It's, <laughs> it's a modern job, art, but it's art. <laughs> God damn it! Art. All right, and, and I'm not. Gonna, you don't need to be scribbling in the corner of you know your your finished. Of a Picasso. You know, Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now, but but I could definitely see getting one. I've considered them a few times, and and like, gun to your head. I usually right now, went what's to it going to be owl, an arrow. Um, it would be like a like a like a old timey arrow, like a wooden arrow, uh, with um feather fletching and broad and like maybe a stone broadhead with like some shit tied to the back of it, like a little ribbon that droops down, and it would be like that long, mm -hmm. um, something what like would that. It say? say won't say anything where does it go where you put it? Uh, like like, yeah. like right there okay like okay. like right there like pointing down like 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 toward my the end of my hand it, it shares a similar vibe to josh's in my mind exactly that's why i, I noticed this like like he has tattoos that i've looked at like i i have pictures of those tattoos on my phone like not his because yeah. that'd be weird but like tattoos <laughs> <in my phone>. <laughs> <laughs> i hold I, still yeah, it looks weird when you sleep. <laughs> the vibe is the thing that I look at the most. Like, like, what is this guy Gosh. going for? Whatever. The only ones I'm not in love with, for me anyway, everyone's gonna have different tastes, is the people who go super badass. Like, I got a tattoo. It's a snake with the or a skull with a flaming snake coming out of it. Or um, yeah, uh, Dude, I, know I don't exactly. know. Look at my like, giant like, panther on my deltoid, and I'm like, all right, it, it's nice. I like it. You know it's why? For you, but it's a little much. Because that's a poser tattoo. It's a poser tattoo. And, and one of the things that I, I we everybody hates a poser. Everybody hates somebody who's a fucking poser. And if you if you do a thing or if you are a thing um, and you see someone like being a poser in your little world, you spot them right away. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that going in. So, like, don't be a poser. Like when I bought my motorcycle jacket and my, and my helmet and stuff. Motherfucker, I'm not gonna put no rocket ship on my back. It's not my back of my jacket doesn't say like like see you later <laughs> or eat my dust or something. Yeah. It, 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 if anything, it's got a flashing light that says don't mind me. <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like I I'm not here apologize. to be a poser. Like, like, like I want you to Student know right driver. off the bat, hey noob here, I'm here to learn. 
I, I, so it doesn't say like demon slayer or like 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 or like Billy Badass on my shit. Anywhere. I bet it says you're here for a good time, not a long time. That's, it's like, no, it's just the opposite. It says I'm here for a long time, not a good time. <laughs> around. My bike can eat corners alive, and I'm just like lazing. <laughs> like, like, like I went what out. That, that was nice. Did you? Oh, the the um, I did too. Honda um, six. 50 yeah, something so abs 650r something like that or i don't think I, it's, I, R. it's a naked street bike it's i don't know it's a 650 cc maybe 649 it's a four-cylinder bike it sounds really nice mm. um it's red and gold um i like it a lot I, I love how it looks i would if i had to choose between never looking at it again while it was sitting or never riding it again i think i'd pick never riding it again like i I love to look at it i i have thought so many times about wheeling it into my house and just putting it on like like in the corner of the living room just to look at it and i i I was so close to doing it multiple times i was just scared to ride it through the living room i did it once parked it in there overnight i was like god damn she looks good i'm cleaning it up house stinks like gasoline when i'm (laughs) motherfucker motherfucker and like a couple times i was on your carpet oh it was all hardwood but like Uh, revving that bike up in a house is such a cool noise (laughs) every time i go through like a tunnel or like under a bridge or something i'd pull in the clutch and hit the the throttle it's a requirement yeah and i don't think you're being a poser then it's just like you just have to do it every bridge if you can you gotta rev at least are you a big uh biker joshua yeah i have so many bikes i have a triumph 1200 uh mm. um scrambler i have a ktm 1290 super venture oh i have an 890 nice and then um a 450 uh honda four stroke i don't know i got a bunch i just there's a bunch of a 450 yeah. yeah yeah bunch of trails i just back out of the Very driveway cool. woody off. is you sound like woody's best friend you should you should woody woody already wants to invite you on his next like cross country <laughs> trip woody goes on these like crazy cross country uh adventure bike tours um he's done some group rides i don't know why i'm telling you his story but i think i'm better at telling um he's done some <laughs> he's done some group rides and he's done some like so he did a solo ride around the holidays where he had a deadline on his return so that he could have christmas with his family and knowing that he went where to where woody I went from North Carolina to Southern California and then back down Nevada and then back down to North Carolina. How long that By take? himself on a fucking whim on that KTM. Yeah. Was it was the KTM? Yeah, it, it was. It was. It was the 890. Uh, it was like 16 to 18 days, something like that. That's the You were camping the whole time? Or you? No, I didn't camp. It was December. Okay. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. But I do do that. I, I, I did camping... Um, for the Smoky Mountains, I did camping for the Mid Atlantic Backroad Discovery Route, the Colorado trip, um, but not that one. See, I am a poser biker. See, I ha- that thing. I like to go and go slow. I don't think I've been faster than oh, maybe over a hundred. Like, I usually keep that thing at like sixty or seventy and just cruise around. I don't. I like going slow. I like people looking at me on the bike. I, I like I like I like I like going through intersections and how it sounds. I like going slow. I really am scared to like lay that. It's not that I don't trust it laying it over. It's my biggest fear is a road hazard sending me into the woods on a corner in Georgia and no one knowing that I skidded off into those woods. Like That's a like problem. there's a lot there's a lot of like cut, I could just get flung out into that kudzu if it, it's like this leaf, leafy growth we have here oh, in Georgia yeah. that's thick and like you you'd be you'd be in there crippled like it like, might what, cushion your blow a little what if i what if i break my pelvis and i'm like down there like trying to crawl up a hill and like i can or whatever and i'm down there for you know what i mean i have those thoughts right it's it's a little bit like that so i usually take it real easy but woody goes on some goddamn adventures that would scare me um <laughs> Like, like, like just getting lost out there that watch is a tremendous thing that you've got like that would <laughs> that would make me feel so much safer about um, i have about a, doing stuff like that a garmin in reach so there's like an sos button that'll call a helicopter mm. oh, that's nice does it have like a monthly iPhone. charge the new iphones do something like that what did you say josh does your little button have like a monthly charge you have to pay for or is it just it does. Pay? okay yeah yeah cool here's the story on that new iphone feature that is blowing up 911 operator um, stations with false readings. I've heard. Yeah, yeah it's a Roller real coasters, issue. like, got a big thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard about it lately, so I wonder if they improved the software or if it's just an old story. 
Yeah, I, I, I guess I haven't heard about it lately either. You would think it would be like a quick fix, but um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things that like, I guess it's an accelerometer, maybe measuring G-forces, deceleration. Is it just um, auto call 911? Is that the, mm -hmm. what yeah. they're supposed to do? Because it thinks you've been yeah. in an auto, auto accident. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess it, you know, man, but what if you get hit by, I don't know. I don't know how it works, but it's, it was interesting that it was like making all those calls that shouldn't have been made. Yeah. I, uh, on the motorcycle thing, I, so I've been teaching my wife to ride a motorcycle and she's mm -hmm. a slow learner. So we've spent like a good year in the subdivision, just like doing U-turns all under like 25 miles an hour. I don't need to like pump my own tires, but guys, I am so fucking good at like parking lot drills. Now <laughs> you need U-turns, figure eights, anything 12 miles an hour and under I am really good <laughs> like, I do it. Like, let me ask you this yeah. can you do it on the big bike all oh, any bike i could do it on the oh. gold wing the 890 oh, so that's a different story i could do it on a supermoto i can do it on a grom i like i i have i don't know how many bikes i think i have eight motorcycles i have five jackie has three and uh <laughs> but i ride them all and so so like yeah any bike and or yeah. and with a passenger too, like I can do all those. Oh my with god! Too. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's that's a lot of talent. I, I've seen. Um, have you ever seen the police department? Yes, they're better like, than me. I'm not that good. I, yeah. I would love to try it though, because I think I can do the course. I just see how fast they do it. And that's impressive. so. Goldwing is a big, um, like cruiser type motorcycle that has all that shit on it. For anybody who's wondering, often they'll have those big back seats with a with a chunky mm -hmm. bitch on the back, <laughs> and, uh, and and like. The, they're also what a lot of the police cruisers, certainly on the West Coast, um, like like employ those big bikes. And I've seen where they do. I don't know if it's um, if they're just getting qualified or if it's a competition. I think it's the latter. But they're going through very slow, intricate maneuvers like not it wouldn't be measured in miles per hour because they're creeping along like like doing very crazy mm -hmm. I'd fall right over. I'd fall right <laughs> the fuck over. I had to put my foot down on when I was getting my uh, um, license. I put my foot yeah. down at least once when I was doing like the out and back figure eight thing. Like I would definitely drop that goddamn gold wing. <laughs> How much does it weigh? Probably eight, like, eight uh, something. Eight fifty eight. Like it's, it's a lot. Taylor, that's a really Taylor, heavy for, bike. For reference, I can pick my bike up. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick this one up too. You don't have to lift it in the air to pick to pick it off the ground. You, I'm sure you could do it. I mean, it's so big. Oh, it I mean, I can literally get mine up off the ground. Mine's like 400 pounds or something like that. You can just lean back and almost deadlift that bitch. But the your bike, it, if your bike fell on you, you're in trouble. On me would be tricky. Pinned. Yeah. Like, like, let's say like the gas tank is right here. <laughs> um, I mean, it usually traps a leg. Like that's the yeah, more common does. thing. I uh, but it really traps it. I would imagine. Like that's heavy. Well, it, you would imagine your legs broken and maybe bent, like how it's not supposed to be around the, the bike. Challenge. And you're down in a ditch as well, creating even more Whoa. angle. Do you so have what the... do you do? Pull your leg out from under the bike, making it do this like rubber band know. type. When shit? I was on the Trans America Trail, my friend's bike fell on him, and I had to pick it off oh, of him. Out. And I'm like. I can't fathom this. His bike was, it's a Honda 650L, if people know it. It's like a big dirt bike. And uh, I'm thinking, I could have easily gotten out from under that bike. What happened? What's there? And he's like a full-sized American. And I don't know why he couldn't get it off. But when I crashed and broke my leg in Colorado, off doing the jumps off-road, mm -hmm. I needed a buddy to pull the bike off my broken leg. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I'm glad I wasn't alone. Took yeah, it more yeah. carefully when I was solo. You'd have gotten it off. Yeah. Like, like, like after, even happened. if you had to, <laughs> no, you, didn't, you know, I you think know I'd have goes. managed. I mean, I it, my leg was broken and it took months to heal, but I also rode a couple hundred miles through the. Well, Woody's a deter mm -hmm. I, like like Woody would be one of those guys on the survival show who like did that crazy. Like, like yeah, that's when I realized I had to cut the arm off. <laughs> I hope he so. screamed. Thankfully, scream. I had my favorite knife. <laughs> my <Leatherman>. features. Like <laughs> <laughs> I always have a knife. I got a knife. I'm just <laughs> talking about the features of the knife again. We can cut it. Just keep him talking. Like, <laughs> does your um, does your KTM always... have like the braces on the side for your bags? No, uh, I use the rack, the Moscow Moto Reckless 80. 
so okay. it just straps on. Because the 1290 that I have, I've taken it up like this super, I don't know, pretty steep gravelly hill. And as I was going, I did not have enough momentum. And this is like my third day of having it. So of course I automatically think I know what I'm doing. So I go up this steep hill and I get to the top, I run out of inertia and momentum. And then mm-hmm. uh, well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to die at that point because I'm going to come straight back down. Yeah. Um, but then I, I, I don't know, I kind of like tilted it to one side and just fell underneath it as we both just slid down the hill. And the only thing Best that kept scenario. me from being crushed were those little bag holders. Those uh, metal, yeah. yeah, the pannier racks things. Mm-hmm. The move is, you probably know this, but if you can, if you're failing a hill climb, turn right, like before yeah. you get to a total stop. And that way... Your left foot goes on the hill. It's nice and it's easy to reach. And your right foot goes on the brake and you can just saw the handlebars and point it back down. Like, or you just keep going. What do you mean? Like stop on the incline and like try and lean? Well, well, the goal is to like, all right, I got 10 feet to go and I'm pretty sure I can go three more. This is our problem. Turn right. And now you can put your left foot on the top of the hill and your right foot on the brake and work your way back down the hill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Turn you turn he's turning around. We're going yeah, back you're, down. you're turning around. Yeah. yeah we yeah, want this thing. This thing goes in one direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah and if you turn left, aren't usually... you don't have the brake. And that I mean just puts ah. you in a trickier spot. Yeah, that there's no sense. reverse. <laughs> I mean so no reverse. To be fair, I was trying to my my girl's dad, um, he rides bikes and I have two bikes and I was like, Here you go, try it out. He's like, Oh, I've done this before. And so I was trying to follow him and I'm expecting him to be like some boomer that doesn't know how to ride and this dude's kicking my ass. <laughs> and I'm doing everything I can to keep up with him on a two fifty on my twelve ninety, which is obviously <laughs> oh, skill yeah. issue, right? Yeah. So um Oh, but wait, the two fifty is easier to do in this scenario. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. But at the time, I was pretty inexperienced, and it was a pretty dumb move on my part. But he went up that hill, and I'm just like, of course, I can do that too. And then, you know, I'm just like, I hope he realizes that I'm not behind him. How long is this going to take? <laughs> 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 yeah. And so he came back, and that's, you know, helped me lift it up. But, like, I should have done that. Yeah, I was just peer pressure by my girl's dad. I don't know. It, it felt kind of bad, to be honest. It's like, I'm getting whooped by this guy my 250 but dude okay. that's super <laughs> common like something about motorcycling is yeah. so technique based that guys who are not nearly as athletic as you might be able to outride you yeah it's, before we, and there's uh, a lot it seems there's like there's a lot of different kinds of motor oh you got the ads yeah before we jump to the next thing we're mm-hmm. gonna hear from a couple of wonderful wonderful sponsors this episode of pka is brought to you by blue chew This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex. Guys, shouldn't you always be at your best? 2023 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedroom. Listen up. BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Hmm. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free. That's free, folks. When you use our promo code PKA at checkout, just pay the $5 in shipping, you cheap fuck. That's <laughs> BlueChew.com. Promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. BlueChew.com, code PKA. Get your, your to, we always recommend the Tadalafil option. Mm-hmm. Kyle led us down the correct road with that initially, and I've never turned back. Uh, but try whichever one you want. Just use code PKA, pay the five bucks in shipping, and you can see if you enjoy Blue Chew. Your dick will be amazing. Send a picture to Kyle. Show us your results. It's going to be incredibly hard. It's you want to mail be, those via Woody, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, send them to me. I'll pass them on. That is he handles my it. mail. He handles <laughs> my mail. Send all of that to Woody. Or just take a photo. Uh, happy New Year's from Death by Gummies. We're excited to announce that our hardest-hitting Delta 8 product is back on the market. Uh, they are now realdbg.com rather than death by gummy bears because of a lot of copycats making shit products and convincing the public they were the same product. You guys know this this market of Delta 8. There's people that pretend to be this intense, 
strong ass gummy because they want you to buy it and not know. But you want the real stuff, you got to go to realdbg.com. Use promo code PKA23. If you find it anywhere else, you're not they're not going to be the true blue 100 milligrams of Delta 8 put you on your ass and, you know, potentially scare you if you're not ready level oh, of gummy. They don't fuck around with them, people. Take them, take them low and slow, nice and easy, like a roast. Like don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't be crazy with. These. I like to. I take three. No, you don't. don't. Do no not. Way. I got I, the I HHC totally... ones came in the other day. The new shit. Um, I started with a half. Next day I took one. Next day I took two. And yesterday I took three. Before I watched that Nick Cage movie. That Nick Cage movie had me laughing my ass off. Are then I did like an HHC hour gummy? of the Office trivia. Laughed my ass off at that. <laughs> <laughs> um and then i slept so well so well that so i take well. it before bed i mention this all the time my tolerance is not going up I, i've been taking the same amount for months now <laughs> i'm told i need to be high all day and night if i really want to get a tolerance tolerance yeah, pump them fucking no, numbers don't up. do that <laughs> Just look, I, enjoy the low tolerance like uh th- if you do what kyle does you're going to be chewing through them much faster but yeah the they wanted me to specifically mention the HHC ones that you can get at realdbg.com. Code PKA23 for 23% off. The HHC gummies. So, like, apparently they are stronger than the Delta 8 gummies because they're both 100 milligrams. So, if you are accustomed to the 100 milligram Delta 8, maybe start a little slower on the they're HHC and since fast. it is stronger. Yeah. Have you, I, so, that's what I'm talking about. I've tried them. I've eaten like six or seven of them or something now. Um, they are stronger. It's it's a it's it's more of a giggly high. Uh, I normally aren't one of those people who's like, oh, this one tastes like lemon cream pie, and it makes me silly. Oh, this one's <laughs> blueberry dream, and it makes me sexy. Like <laughs> it's just like, dude, it gets me doped up. Let's go. Like, like, that's usually what I'm looking for. But legitimately, I've noticed with the HHC ones, I've been like giggling my ass off, like to uh, to silly movies and shit. So um, yeah. either I've been watching funnier movies, or they're legitimately make me feel a little bit gigglier when i eat them um they're slightly stronger for sure what i really noticed was they kick in a little bit faster i feel like it's almost like taking a drink those things are kicking in kind of yeah. fast Did and the delta eight stronger gummies than the death I think by they gummies are, yeah. one the big well this yeah. is a, these are also death by gummies this is just another chemical this is hhc this is the I, stuff that i smoke yeah. so, as well i, so I just HHC wanted to be sure we weren't talking about wonky weeds that's why i said so they're mm-hmm. well you can still use code pka20 at wonky weeds if you want their vapes and oh, hhc as high as you want but uh, code PKA23 works on realdbg.com. You can get the HHC gummies or the Delta 8 gummies. And like Kyle said, like they're both very strong, but the, and they're both 100 milligrams, but Me the Tyrone HHC one is stronger. So you don't take have me- to be a hero, though. You can get no. wonky weeds and you're okay. <laughs> yeah. just, Some people, do, just, if you want to take it easy, just go to wonky weeds, PKA20, and yeah. get yourself a cart, an HHC cart. Or if you really want to start easy, get a Delta 8 cart because that's probably yeah, the, get a Delta 8 the cart, lowest pussy. one. Do that. <laughs> Not a <co-sign> <laughs> go, go, go get one of those pussy carts, bitch boy. No. Get, get the one. Kyle's no, over here want- vibrating through walls on HHC. <laughs> 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 Or you can smoke this shit that I smoke that has a... That shit's strong. There's a bear on the cover with bleeding eyeballs, okay? <laughs> Wait, this, super silver haze. No, this, it's, it's quite strong. It's like a dopey dope high. Um, the, the, the edibles, on the other hand, is more of a giggly type thing. If um, I, I like them a lot. They're tremendously strong. Um, keep, an, keep an eye on like the, the legal side of things as like time goes on. Like One chemical or another is going to get phased out, I would say. Um, yeah, they're always I know changes. Delta 9 is on the, uh, is on the way out. I think Delta Eight is uh, right behind it. Uh, no word on HHC yet, but um, you know, as time goes on, pay attention to your state and you know, legal- legalization as that evolves. It's but, crazy yeah. how they just like it's THC, right? It's THC, and then they just tell it a joke, and now it's Delta Eight or something. Yeah. And, and <laughs> they're, they're like, like "All right, all right, that's illegal. New joke." <laughs> I don't think it's, this it's, has it's, it's, it's drugs. Technically, I'm not sure that this has anything to do with a marijuana plant that I'm smoking. I, I think this is just <laughs> like, like I think I. Uh, I'm not sure. That's a, that's, an, that's a that's it's. I think it's extracted the same way they do all these, where they kind of like remove something a little meaningless and then go, "We made something different." I think they like, added. You no, know, you, you, know, you didn't. It's <laughs> come on. <laughs> we pulled out all the water. It's not pot anymore. Yeah, this, now it's, <laughs> I, it's dry. <laughs> it, it, it's a little different with the HHC. I did some reading the other day. I think they they, oh. they added another another chain to the molecule or something. It's it's a little bit different what they've done. All yeah, I know is it gets me high. Changes. It seems it does, kind of, and it's strong. Yeah. 
it's interesting. It reminds me of kind of like the whole SARM situation. It's it's like the, um, you know, you can you can use it, but eventually people start looking, and then maybe they think about it, and then they change their mind. But yeah, it seems like it just kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, it's like supplement industry a little bit, and the SARMs, <laughs> and how for a long time with SARM specifically, there was some. I mean, I guess there's still a lot of stuff that you can get that's kind of borderline. It's it's kind of out there. Eh. And real quick, this episode is, of course, brought to you by Lock and Load, mm-hmm. the premium, premium cum supplement, the <laughs> finest one in all the land. You can use code PKA Jesus. or code right, jizz job, at gorillamind.com. Thanks, Get yourself thanks, Lock Zach. and Load. <laughs> I love it. Should it have to be on a guy? <laughs> I know, right? Ah, I'm not <laughs> but yeah, code PKA, assume- code jizz, 10% off everything over at Derek's site down there, gorillamind.com. Check out the pre workouts, check out Lock and Load. Folks, if it didn't work, we wouldn't be selling a fucking 90 pill container. We would have it saved works. some on the overhead there, like and, <laughs> and sold the no, bullshit. But no, it it yeah, you know, we all believe it works well and you should try it out and start coming like a man. So code PKA code jizz. Uh start ejaculating like you mean it. What's a good yeah, what's a good exactly. tagline? These women think come, you're not even having a good time. Come for more. Come <laughs> come for <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'll get I'll get back to you. Come with you know, we've all, it's only been out for a year I got and a half. So. <laughs> How about come all ye hateful? For all, no, you not know, hateful. For our, it should be happy. Our viewers should are. be joyful. No, not our our viewers are named twenty times. <laughs> they, they've been hateful. And what about this show makes you think? I mean, they hate crime. The people. <laughs> I mean, they hate crime and 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 terrorism and. And, and all sorts of bad things. They hate it, tear. Well, get your get your cum supplements. Get your cum get supplements. Your cum supplements. Uh, Do you want to talk about on... that retarded oh. congressman that 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 uh, that was all stroked out and then like oh, what are we, like two months? We're like two months into his like job and he's checked himself yeah. into a facility. I honestly wasn't sure in the lead in if we were talking about Weinstein Weinstein or Fetterman. But now I know Fetterman. Oh yeah, yeah. Weinstein is. Um, yeah, you're talking about senile. I might have her name wrong. Um, yeah. Oh, Diane Feinstein. Feinstein. Like a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. She's ancient, but yeah. So that guy in uh with the stroke who like can't talk. Yeah, he's not able to perform his duties. I think he's fine. He can't listen. He's refusing to resign. Is what he said. (laughs) So we'll see how it goes. Refusing to resign Mm -hmm. after hospitalization for depression so wait oh so you don't think it's depression no that's just what the the headline that i saw was it was just refuses to look at resign. this fucking ape they, they, you know my problem dude, they, they shorts don't compliment his calves pull them over the knees or drop them down to your ankles but <laughs> what he has going on i'm gonna be man, honest when how I do those legs him, support that much man you know, know there's no leg like? hair Look at this guy for real. He looks like in Men in Black when an alien would do a poor job of impersonating a human being. <laughs> <laughs> like, like everything about him. Like he's oversized to fit like a little person who's operating gears. He's terribly <laughs> dressed because he has no concept of human clothing or how it should wear. <laughs> and he and he his he's expressionless and his and he can't like respond to things well. Because it's an alien operating him, not a human fucking being. So they're translating in there. They're like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Just uh, pretend like we can't. Kyle's crazy. They bought it. Yeah. They bought it. He's crazy. They bought it. This is an alien Idiot. overlord. And you people in Pennsylvania thought Dr. Oz was too, for some reason. Why did the Republicans send up Dr. Oz? That's yeah, at least Dr. Question. Oz can hear. And so listen. It's true. Dr. Oz beat somebody else. I forget who. Because he He's got Trump's doctor. endorsement. And... A lot of people blame Trump for losing that Senate seat. They flipped it oh. uh, because they put up a weak candidate, a candidate weak enough that Fetterman could beat him. That's a good one from Zach. You see that? He said they they, uh, they elected the patient instead of the <laughs> instead doctor. Instead of the doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they did. Okay, that, that's a great one. Like, Apparently, Dr. Oz was like a legitimately <laughs> good, talented heart surgeon. Like he And he like innovated in the field of heart surgery. Like I thought he was just a... I didn't know. I don't that. know. Old timey TV guy selling a magic elixir because that's mm, I thought what he I was Doctor Phil, not a real heart surgeon. No, I think Doctor Oz is like a celebrated, talented doctor. Before he I wonder why that didn't audience. show up in the media at the time. He, ha- he had a studio <laughs> audience come in once with samples of their urine so he could smell it. <laughs> Get why? it through. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, urine drugs. Yeah, he wanted <laughs> to smell their urine to detect something uh, medical. I mean, this guy Fetterman. If you can pull up a picture of him again, 
I just figured out like I'd have brought him something so horrific like. to smell. Is, does, did did <laughs> Fetterman used did Fetterman oh. used to be like eight hundred pounds? Because if I, you I look at his know. if you look at his body under clothes, he has that extra skin build. Yeah, do you know what I mean? True. Like it is, <laughs> that's not like a he, bad picture. That's the he best. has. Well, that we can't see it in a suit because it doesn't look real. You can see how he like, looks like his flesh juice, is sloughing lower. Dude, in wow. the T-shirt, you can tell. So fifteen one oh four. What's that? I can't. My believe, impression. You tell Obama is, did not want that kind of hand. <laughs> I think Doctor Oz yeah, thinks uh, that oversized clothing makes you look thinner. That's my theory. So he just look buys stupid triple he extra. We've, yeah, and I know, <laughs> and you know what? How, that's the most endearing thing about him. I went through that phase too, John. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you, I can immediately tell that, that, that Fetterman has no like awareness of his body, his size, or he's just stupid. All he needs to do right now is take a half step to the left and him and the president can hold fucking hands. Right now, it looks like he just caught Obama. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's going thief. <laughs> I like, like, you say thief, I see it differently. To the left and we're hand in hand. Uh, John Fetterman caught a fish in this he's picture. This is happening. He's just showing him off. That's what I'm saying. He looks like he just caught Obama. Yeah. <laughs> Obama's like hell. <laughs> yeah, this guy sucks. He's, he's like a big retarded white man has me. <laughs> he's a big a big guy who can't speak well or listen at all. Who's in, who's in charge of a, po a post that revolves around communication? Some Martian overlords. <laughs> yeah, to me, he just looks like the guy that stupid body goes through Costco and just goes to the big and large section and just loaded up on that. Then that's yeah, just well, been his wardrobe. Well, that's I'm what sure you just said, and I wasn't listening. But what are those tattoos? It says... are those like are those his victims' birthdays or something? Like <laughs> oh. <laughs> It is something notable, like when someone died. What did the yeah? I'll look it up. When someone it's, it's, dies. it's birthdays, it's birthdays for sure, right? Five, eighteen, fifteen. It's passwords. probably fucking. Is that where it cuts off? <laughs> it's his passwords. He can't remember. <laughs> These are the launch codes. <laughs> Russia has captured Senator Fetterman's yeah. arm. <laughs> no, I was right. Those are so he was in charge of some district. I forget what it was. And every oh, time no. somebody was murdered, like there was a violent crime, he tattooed the victims birth date on his arm what a loser <laughs> that's ridiculous <laughs> what a fucking loser didn't do a very good job did he no he didn't he's all tatted up <laughs> he's all, he's tatted <laughs> but the funny thing is y'all are like yeah they started here and they got to there no 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 his back is just <laughs> he, oh, no. he looks like a russian mobster in eastern promises when he takes his shirt off and it's just blackness you can't even see it. it's like the number 23 where they're writing numbers over other numbers well like fucking samoan joe coming out fuck that guy fuck that oh, guy that's so he was a mayor hard. and every time someone was that's killed in his city that's he get their date. And the yeah. other one is a zip code from where he's from. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Um, I don't remember, I, like, like all politics <laughs> aside, like, like, like if you told me. So the real problem is that he's even being that he's up there. I would think I would be comfortable with him saying I'm out. This is my deputy governor or, or whatever the, the, the position he is. Out. Like, 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 like this is my second in command here. Fucking Bill. And as long as Bill is like semi qualified, right? Slide him in there, and maybe Mr. Fetterman can like help Bill along the way, and he could be Bill's, he could be Mr. Fetterman's interpreter to some regard. <laughs> but you reach across the put, aisle, let Doctor. Don't give me a fucking representative that's literally stroked out, that's literally diminished, that's literally brain damaged, that's now in a hospital hiding because his head doesn't work. He can't. Think, yeah, but think, Kyle, why do does it matter work? if elected officials are brain damaged? Doesn't matter to me, but if I was in Pennsylvania, I would care. I mean, I'm look as a as a forced non-voter, um, I'm a little ashamed of Marjorie Taylor. Uh, 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 she she usually she makes a real scene every now and then, and they're like, "Yep, from the 15th district of Georgia," and it's like, "Shit." What's uh, did what you see her call for a civil war, like a national divorce? She called it. I a I know all divorce? about that. Yep, she it's, referred it's, to an, what a lame want. way to refer to a civil war. Well, she doesn't want a civil war. She's like she wants to secede, and well, and but 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 see, and of course it is. Look, this is what people do when they want you to talk about it. They say stupid, ridiculous things so that people who know better will go and say, "Well, doesn't she know this, that, and the other?" The answer is yes, she does mm -hmm. because she plays a stupid person on the internet. I'm she told happens that. to yeah. be a multimillionaire who's done mm -hmm. nothing but win, win, win. As far as I've seen her, I see her on the national, global stage. 
out of the 15th district of Georgia. Somehow, somehow she's in shouting matches with the president of the United States on a bi-yearly basis. Like, I, I like, think her strategy is just to polarize her way in. to the top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. She doesn't want a fucking civil war. She wants to keep running the great greater 50. Okay. She doesn't want to be a, mm-hmm. a congresswoman in, in, in of 13 states. No, she's happy. You really think she's vote? She's I need less power. That's what I need. I need less power. No, fuck her. She's she wants us to talk about her. Stop talking about it. That's why her commercials have her shooting a Barrett 50 cow and blowing up a car full of tannerite. I know I a little know, bit that's about pretty this. cool. She wants you to talk about her. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's worked, and here we are. Yeah, that's Kyle's point. Yeah, it's uh, it works. I, and I intellectually, I know all this. Intellectually, I understand that she's not really trying to govern. She's sort of auditioning for the next right wing media position that opens up. She's trying to win elections by super motivating a small base instead of appealing to everybody. Like I get it, but I'm still like this bitch called for a civil war. This is like traitorous. Don't people see it? Then I'm well, fool. it's not traitorous. It, we live in a Republic and I, I think the state should absolutely be able to see like, like what if, what if the government, what if our government like started um, rounding up all of a certain group of people, they were like, ah, oh, we need to imprison anyone who's this color. And they're like euthanizing them. Our government's turned against us. We need to secede. Like, like, I don't know, but like, and let's pretend it's the Western states. They've turned evil, right? Like not the, not the liberal states, not yeah. the conservative states. The West went evil on us. We would want to secede away from the West or we would want to like cut them out and like push them aside because a war had to be fought because for whatever reason, the whole West Coast is now like West Coast surfer dude Nazis and they're and they're killing, all, <laughs> and they're killing anybody who's like yeah. lighter than taupe. It does. It does feel like they got Kanye. That, like, like he's not know, even black enough. And it was not tan. We, we do like all those all those founding fathers. We're all about them all the time, you know, and they were seceding. So if we're going to be consistent, we got to allow seceding but only if like the funny it, part it's is good for content you know what uh <laughs> the, the problem is when you say something like that too well the funny thing is the funny joke that goes back and forth and the game that's played is the other side says well let's look at the federal money that goes in and out of the states that would supposedly be seceding oh look mm-hmm. at you kentucky 2.8 billion in the hole look at look at you louisiana 2.2 billion in the hole and it's like going down there i was like please not georgia we're in the we're in the blue. I'm pretty sure. Are you? Like positive. I think I think we make more than we take in, but most of the South, you know, is on the welfare system. By and large, the speaking. blue yeah. states are supporting the red states. Sure, not absolutely. exclusively. And not and, and, and true, there sure. and there, I think there might be reasons for that. Like 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 maybe yeah, the has, financial sector being in a no, blue state. I, like there's, there's, I, it's just more profitable industries in a lot of blue states. It seems like the raw goods in population. Come from, it seems like the raw goods come from the red states, and then they get transposed and transformed in the blue states it isn't that because of i mean there would be a lot of government deals for people that do the manufacturing of raw materials there seem to be a lot of subsidies in that area so, like so oh farmers are, farmers, farmers are welfare stuff. divas yeah so they get yeah. all the discounts and then they ship it to the actual what where they make the rest of it yeah, yeah. do they pay well, farmers to throw shit away they don't know they're socialists <laughs> farmers they they don't realize they're communists but they are well, I mean, I mean, the government won't let them operate in a free market anyway. When they start paying you not to grow corn, right? Like, like the government's mm-hmm. already told you, like, we're not going to work in a, a free market economy right off the bat because okay. like, we'll pay you not to make your corn. So they're just playing yeah. by the rules, uh, which is what everybody says. That's why I've never had an issue with Trump's fucking taxes because he's he's. I loved how he handled it in that debate that time. He's like, it's like, I just follow the rules. <laughs> how long have you been in power that you haven't changed those rules yet? Hillary's been in, and he starts talking about like like how long Hillary's been here in Washington and like rules were the same every year every election cycle they're the same the the ones I use the ones she uses and the ones those donors out there that are booing uses <laughs> and it's like oh he's like that's right they wouldn't let us have tickets folks they stacked the seats with their donors and supporters and they're it's out there true. Woo! That's true. they boo louder because it's true it, that was that was one of his defining moments I think like, that was a that, good one. That, that was a good moment for him. His uh, best recent one really is that McDonald's clip. Like the spontaneity and conviction that he delivers. Like I probably know this menu better than anyone here. Actually, I definitely do. I've looked at it. Lo- <laughs> and I, 
Woody, you even said like you, if you were to go like Trump interview question one, what's a number seven? He'd be like, two cheeseburgers, with a fry. give me something difficult. Like, he would know. I guarantee he, he would might, fucking yeah. know. He'd be like, what kind of nuggets do you like? He'd be like, I don't waste time with nuggets. Have you ever seen a photo of me with one? Of course not. I wouldn't waste. I'm a beef guy. Like, that. he doesn't do that. And if he goes chicken, we know he goes Popeyes and he eats it with a fork and knife to spite people online. You think he's sitting there on a plane really eating fried chicken with a fork and knife? That'd be psychotic. If he does that, I have to change my opinion on the guy. I'm surprised there- he... He deviates from McDonald's. I thought that was just his his lifeblood. Fast Isn't that he, like just, he loves he sodium? Every day? He loves yeah. it and Diet Coke, right? I mm-hmm. love sodium. There, I like his, his, like what's his Diet Coke it. tweet where he's like, "Lots of people mad at me about the Diet Coke tweet. Doesn't matter. I'll keep drinking that trash. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> I'll keep I'll keep drinking that garbage. That's what he said. He had a Diet Coke button in the on the is it what's the desk called is it the, resolute the oval desk? office uh, oh the resolute desk yeah. or is that a specific desk that's like has a name i don't think the, i think that's the case i think i think there's like a handful of desks that they're in storage um and one of them is called the resolute desk and you can choose that desk and they're like pre, they're like desks that were owned by previous president because I, I, mean, I think in the yeah. west wing maybe there's some talk about that it's like it was one of those shows where, like, there's a new president. It's like, which desk are you gonna go with? Well, I don't know. There's the the Lincoln Chestnut, or there's the there's the Washington Oak. And it's like it's the desks of former presidents. Maybe I'm or guessing yeah. that the cooler desks are not as nice, right? Like, I bet Lincoln's desk from the 1800s is a little plain compared you can to smell, you can desk. You still smell Mary Todd's like cunt juice on it, where he banged <laughs> one out on her. On there. Ew. Yeah. He well, maybe gay. if you were yeah. drunk. It seeps yeah. in. <laughs> oh no! Like he, he did it every night. It was like you, you ever see those de- degenerates on Fortune. There's the corner like, where Mary Todd would rub her clit on, exactly. the, on the corner. Exactly. Of the table. <laughs> exactly. She's it's worn. It's worn smooth. They <laughs> 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 call that Mary statues, Todd's corner. <laughs> statues' dicks will be polished like fucking shiny. The tits too. Like like yeah. before you go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I like that when you see statues and it's like it's good luck to jack him off and it's like. Well, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Is it the yeah. Bulls balls on New York, like on Wall Street? Yeah, Wall Street. Yeah. Oh, is that a good luck totem I or something? Be, I... I've seen uh I've seen a lot of those, those uh those statues where the you know the tits and the genitals will always be polished up. Oh, and you know what else? And this is this speaks to the wonderment, the 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 beauty in humanity. Dogs, statues of dogs, the heads are always petted gold. Oh yeah, dogs oh, are everybody. great. Yeah. Everybody Dogs wants to get awesome. that good. Everybody wants to give that Best good boy animal. a scritch. <laughs> That's the wall. Damn! People. Look I mean, how deep it's... in the crevice that somebody got. Like, like they went all the way up there. And got that part. <laughs> yeah, that's where the luck is stored. <laughs> the, ass, that, the poor asshole. Not a bit of attention spent there. Well, why uh, waste time? You don't know what that bull was into. A lot of people in Wall Street making some some assumptions. Okay. Yeah, kink shaming. Kink. Sh- well, I mean, it's not even tra- that cool. The statue, if we're being real. Pretty cool statue. You ever seen it? It's, it's like Isn't down, cool? like in like a. It's, it's, it's too a, small. It's not too small. Zach, it's show huge. us the world's largest. It statue. should Who? dominate the cityscape. <laughs> no, Taylor's Just right. Stay puff marshmallow man. <laughs> yeah, this, this has been exactly. <laughs> this is people so should me. be in awe. Of the, of the I agree. With a, I agree. The Statue this of Liberty, but with a yeah, big it's... set of swinging balls. Yeah, when I after grew, they when... finish it, they get rid of the Statue of Liberty because it's embarrassing to be associated right. with. Thank you, Zach. This <laughs> okay, that's is the world's one. largest statue. Okay. Get us the stats on this thing, Zach. I think it's it's in Indonesia. Or Do you know somewhere. what it is, know. Kyle? I don't know it. No, it, it's it, it's a stupid man. But but it's, it's the biggest. China. It's the biggest one. What I'm saying is that when I was growing up, I always heard, and it was the '90s. To be fair, American shit was always the best. Like like our, I thought mm. our shit was the biggest and the tallest and the fastest and the deepest. Like whatever you could be, like it was the biggest, strongest, biggest, fastest. Always. It seems like the last twenty years of my life, it's just fucking. The, 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 you ever see, when I saw the Statue of Liberty, I was embarrassed. I was like, this is some French fucking artwork from a hundred fucking years ago. This isn't impressive. And then, you know, when they rebuilt the Twin Towers and they didn't make it the world's tallest building, I was really surprised. Because post 9-11, and I mean the week after 9-11, that's all I was hearing. How like, oh, we're going to fucking build something now. Show them. And I was and, and it's like, come on, you built a cool building and all. But like, I don't know. I, I hate seeing... Um, those buildings in dubai and that that look like 
they're from the future of a cooler race of people. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, see how I mean, the pull statue up, from uh, Brazil seems so much should... bigger. Wow, Zach, Zach, this pull up the one I Oh, but it's on like, that big, like, peak. In the... Yeah, Christo, the Redeemer. Redeemer. This is better, Taylor. Okay. Oh, I was just saying because it says the names of them here. The statue. And, and here's like the other that, thing that shows how much we are dominated right now. We're not even in the top five. Wow. No, no, no. It's worse than that because the Statue of Liberty is on a huge pedestal that's taller than it is. Look closely. Look where her dress yeah. is. Okay. And, and look yeah, at so that. The real look at the one that the one that we're beating by one meter is so much cooler than ours because it's like something sitting it down. Is. It's larger. Oh, all per that other one stands up. It's as tall as the dude on the left. That guy's got a sword. <laughs> That yeah, the swords are cool. Honestly, the Statue of Unity is tight. Like if they didn't make it an old grumpy man, they could have made it anything. He could have. Dude, a sword. look at that. Look at the one that's 108 meters. It looks like some some Game of Thrones god that looks in every direction. It's the, the Omni Sire. 102 is also on a tall pedestal, but I think that's the Russian one. Is it like the mother the one Spring or Temple? Buddha oh, is that the one that's like celebrating Yuri uh, Gagarin or whatever going to space? Maybe Gagarin. Yeah, the Garen. A hundred percent sure. Could be. Did he get all I don't know, but up? you're a hundred percent right, Kyle. Like this is embarrassing. We haven't made a What's cool. That? Show, show us the skyscrapers, like well, not just like, 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 like I, I think like by tallest buildings, and uh, and like I mean, if you start looking at cities with a couple million in them, it, it gets real embarrassing. I mean, at least the St. Louis Arch is bigger than all of those, so we have that victory. You know, I don't, I don't think so, and that thing is. It is. It's we're the biggest monument in the country, biggest man-made monument. Yeah, I just double checked, so I wasn't unsure. We're thirty feet taller, the St. Louis Arch, than the Statue of Unity. Think about what an arch is, though. Like, it's, like it's oh, it's not nearly Statue as cool. Unity. There's not even a guy. The Statue of Unity is the India one. Was that the biggest one? That's the biggest yeah. one. Yeah. So the St. The Louis Arch, arch is, is bigger than the biggest one. Yeah, the arch. Is well, what is it like bigger. to go on the arch? It's really not that exciting. the the uh, The elevators are dangerous. How does it work? That sounds exciting. You, you, get in, you get in a little capsule with like these white plastic seats. I haven't done this in like 18 years for a field trip. And then you go in, you have to sit down in the elevator. And then as you're going up, you can like feel it moving laterally also, kind of like going up the side of the arch. And then you get to the top and they have a bunch of windows and like it's just a hill. And so like you can like walk across it. It's, um, it's really extreme. nothing special at all, but it, it looks kind of neat. I imagine it's like one of those when you go to the bank, hit up the bank teller, you just hop in one of those and just shoot straight to the top, sort of. Is that how it works? That's a base. That's basically what it is. Yeah, <laughs> you just shoot to the top and then hey. you go. Neat. Taylor, Can you, you get been out? up in the Sears Tower? I don't believe I've been up in the Sears Tower. No. Oh, that's a that's a that's next time you're in. That's Chicago, the one in Chicago, gotta, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not called the Sears Tower anymore. It's, no, it's the I, Willis. It's, it's yeah. The is Willis it the Willis Tower, Tower now, or was it the Sears Tower? I'm not sure. I, it's no longer the Sears Tower. In any, any, um, I know Woody's been up there because I've been up there with him. They've got a, a place where you can walk out well, and you're just in a – there's glass below you and glass all around you and you're just sort of like stuck out over the side of the Sears Tower. Dude, you are so goddamn high. It is uh, – it's a cool look. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's us. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> look, look at me looking friendly. <laughs> you're responsible gun <laughs> Dude, you, had, you had the best shirts for a while <laughs> yeah. dude that was pretty cool and i was I'm we am i wearing mandals can you bring that picture up again <laughs> don't God. you still wear mandals no i don't have them i have um flip-flops i guess or sandals but like not with the strap on the back I thought um, I, I pictured that as part of your uniform. <laughs> when I picture you walking around in mandals. No, the internet beat that out of me in like 2013. Or so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the internet bullied me out of my preferred shoe wear. But I think oh, they I did. I think those long. are just sandals, but it's weird. Oh, that I got I'm some custom air forces on that day. Some custom air forces. Hell yeah! Oh, nice. Damn. How old were you in this photo, Kyle? I guess that was 2012, 26, 26? 27, something like that. How high up are you right now? Like you walked out, you can look right below your feet. Pretty five, uh, five hundred. No more, I think. Maybe seven hundred. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm sure it's e easily Googleable. Googleable. Was there any sense uh, of hesitation when you were like, uh, "Yeah, I'll walk"? Nah, out. because okay. because like like that's not like the only one. The, mm -hmm. it, like the whole room is lined with little um, alcoves. I guess I'll call them. It's okay. one thousand three hundred feet to the 
I don't know if that's to where we're standing, though. I would imagine that's like the top of the radio tower or something. But, you know, you were seeing everybody do it, including like children. And they were like running around and stuff. So you just did it. Was there like a maximum people sign for the little ledge? I I was a little nervous. Like I, I... Even though I'd seen people stand on it before me and I'd seen people stand on the parallel ones and the other ones, you're still taking a step out onto the glass. There was, you know, I probably hit it, but I definitely felt it in my heart. You know, I was like, this is a little sketch. Yeah. My my, my hands get really sweaty when I get high up. Like, even if it's something like that where I know I'm (sighs) safe, like I'll, I'll, I'll notice my hands getting, getting sweaty. Yeah. I don't, I don't deal with it super well. It's kind of embarrassing. Like, I'll get wiggly. I'll get, a, I'll get, sh- I'll get like such an adrenaline dump that I, I, I get the shakes. Mm. Um, and it, 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 like, I've got to like slap that out of my hands. Like, like if I'm actually trying to like do a thing Damn. up a tree or so, like when I was a kid, I was so scared. I don't know why my camera keeps creeping away. When, when but you I, fly, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. I was going to say, when I, I would have to climb these trees when we were hunting and I was like 12. So my, you know, my dad's 38. 42 something like that i'm 12 and uh, he's like yeah get up get up there get up that tree it's like early morning but the sun hasn't come up yet and like he needs to get me up my tree then i have to drop like wheel my gun or my bow up with a string and then he goes and finds his own tree somewhere else and he can begin his mm-hmm. hunt but he's got to like babysit me a little bit make sure i get up the tree and i'm up there and i'm just fucking shaking fucking higher and higher and he's like higher higher they'll see you there <laughs> fucking shit <laughs> we were in a situation where like the land wasn't flat so like if the land's flat the tree can go straight up and like if i go up 20 feet i'm 20 feet from everything around me but because the land was like this oh yeah i had i can't go 20 feet up the tree i've got to go like 40 feet up the tree and it's mm. this really tall like oak tree and just up and up and up and up and those things don't bite well in those so when you put your weight on it it would slide a little like that mm. you'd lose you'd lose an inch or two every time you bit down higher and i'm just <laughs> shaking <laughs> <laughs> and i'm you and you've got to climb with your hands you're climbing oh those, those are some of the scariest fucking times ever i was just real scared of that shit and when i when i would finally get there i'd just be fuck fuck i'd be so happy to sit down is there anything that spooks you more than that like a common fear perhaps hmm like I would much rather deal with heights than the thought of being out in like open ocean. Oh, I, like if, if I'm out in that. if I'm out in open ocean and there's like a gun next to me, I think I take the easy way out. Like I I can. We're hanging on. Feel to it. my. Gonna- I, I would absolutely panic. Like I would be hyperventil. Like the thought of not being able to see land and being in a boat or in water, and then all of all of Satan's minions below, like yeah. waiting to eat. It's. I'd rather climb ever. I'd rather be lost in the woods uh, in 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 those yeah, that I demonic agree. Japanese suicide forest. I'd rather live there for sure. For sure. Yeah, right. I agree. I'd Taylor, rather so- be the tour guide of like uh, check out Hikoro <laughs> fresh. Like <laughs> I love that situation. I I think it's really cool to be like in the ocean and not see land and swim around like that. That's fun. that shocks no, me. I, that is I'm the scariest you. thing I can imagine. I could float I, around, but thalassophobia, I couldn't do. I don't know if you guys heard of that, but like we know that yeah. is, yeah, okay. Fear of that's the, just the, the deep and the unknown. That's not deep. a that's not an irrational fear. That's an acknowledgement. And the visuals of the that danger. correspond with okay. it are very triggering. When you see like um, one of those um, underwater caves where you've just got like a round opening and the water is just crystal clear blue, and you can see four hundred fifty feet down to the bottom, and it's like, man, jumping in this feels like killing myself almost. It's so deep. It's unnerving. Um, See that would, just, it would just the, the roiling situation. waves of the of a stormy open sea are one of the most powerful things that you can visualize at a whim. Mm-hmm. When you see those giant waves and those like 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 the, those ships crash headlong into them, it's so incredible. Like, like that's the, problematic. The, like it, I love those videos. I Isn't love the videos. The I've and I've been in those seas on a cruise ship, but um, yeah, just like big shit that like. I don't know if it went over the nose like the best of the videos do, but it like way towards the nose, way up at it. the the windows on the side. Like my um my cabin was normally like, up and you could see out the windows, but as the waves came by, now we're underwater, right? Now the waves are covering mm-hmm. and your room is below the sea, and uh, 
I thought that was pretty cool. Like I was happy with that situation. I, you ever seen, I went out to the deck to get sprayed and everything. Like you ever seen the, it, the, uh, there's a movie it's called the, the, the original is called the Poseidon adventure, the remake in 2006 with Kurt Russell's called Poseidon. The premise is that a cruise ship is hit by a rogue wave and it flips upside down. I've seen down. this. This movie fucking blows. <laughs> It'll be better the way Kyle tells it. Yeah, tell it. You, you'll, you'll redeem this. <laughs> it will. Cruise ship flips upside down, right? And obviously it's flooding the, 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 the ship. And so they got, they're making their way upside down to the bottom of the ship. Mm, They've got to head up. There. Up is down now, right? So like, right? things don't work the same way. So we're going through elevator shafts and water's always coming up. And Kurt Russell is, at this time, I'm going to... He's still like muscular, like dad Kurt Russell. Like, like, like he can handle some business. You know what I mean? From um, soldier. I, yeah, yeah. Like, like I don't think he's got quite the soldier physique. Took an entire year. Like, like he, 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 he got proposed that movie, and he was like, "I need a year, a year to get in shape for that." And he did. He came looking good. He didn't get all roided up or anything like Hugh Jackman, but, uh, but he, he got an impressive physique. I love soldier. All right. Well, if you're gonna shit on Poseidon, then I won't tell the story anymore. But it's interesting. I was listening. Oh, that's it. That's it. You know, they, they oh, got to okay. work their way up to the. You know, that's the premise. Uh, okay. Capsized, upside down, cruise. I don't, line I don't understand the end game in this because you're trying to get out of the ship, right? Ideally, you'd stay. It's never on gonna the flip back over. But if you work your way to the bottom <gasps> of the ship, it's like ah, little known fact. There's a trap door on the bottom of the ship to get out. There's well, no rescue door. crews are coming. You know, rescue crews are obviously okay. coming because you know a cruise liner is capsized. Like, like they're coming. They're yeah, going to be cutting holes in the bottom. Like, like at Pearl Harbor, that's what happened. You know, you had uh, maybe the Arizona. There mm -hmm. were guys down there alive for days in the Arizona. It's a re it's that's real sad stuff. They just down there in that blackness. And oh, they, they didn't cut have some of them to they, save them. I guess they cut some of them out. Some of them they weren't able to get to. Is your fear surrounding the sea and the deep to do with creatures? Because I Partially. would happily swim in like a million foot deep Great Salt Lake or Dead Sea where nothing lives there. Like that would not bother me one iota as like as if long I as there's not waves to like drown me. Yeah, it's the I it's agree. the creatures of the deep that's scary. It, it's not just the creatures of the deep. It's it's like the unknown part. Like like yeah. I don't know. I don't know what could be down there or out there, especially in a storm. Like, I, I imagine everything goes down below the storm, but like I just imagine like like some demon fish down there. It's like, oh look, a human. He's in the storm. Let me terrorize him. Maybe de the devil himself just sees me up there, wants to fuck with me. It's it's huge. Oh yeah, fear. that something's gonna grab Dude, when me. When I was in the pull me down. When I was in the Lake of the Ozarks, when I was like what? ten years old, and I was like kneeboarding or whatever, and like I fell off, and I was <sighs> bobbing in the Lake of the Ozarks, which is fucking not clear water it's <laughs> and like i felt something like suction on my foot and then go away and it scared the absolute shit out of me like i was so scared sitting there waiting for the little boat to turn around and pick me up that that stuck with me like i remember like telling I, my brother i'm like dude, something grab me something sucked on me. are there <laughs> things that you <laughs> did <laughs> are there things damage that you <laughs> <laughs> can you think of any things you did when you were um, a little bit younger or maybe even a kid that you're like, I would never do that now because that is so scary or dangerous. Like, can you think of anything? Because I'm thinking right now, and it was just, this wasn't even that long ago, when I was at that lake house in Gumlog, um, I had these two ladies down uh, by the lake and I was jumping up. We were all in the water off my dock and it was nighttime in muddy Lake Hartwell water. And, you know, the dock's there. We're floating in the water. Like, you put your hand on the side of the dock, you know, and you can kind of tread yeah. water. And you, we're, we're all just hanging out there, like, getting kissy or whatever. And I would swim down, and it was, like, multiple strokes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like the water changes temperatures twice. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to mucky, muddy silt. And then I would come mm -hmm. up slowly, letting my, like, air bring me up so that I could, I wouldn't, like, so I could grab them and scare them basically i'm thinking about that now i don't want to <laughs> swim down there <laughs> i don't want to swim down there dude fuck what no. if what if i get oh i don't want to swim down there anymore. i'm scared thinking now like why did you swim down there what have you got a snapping turtle how, how often have realistically you the, the worst thing would be a gar 
You know? Yeah, those are gross. That's, that's, that's what happened to me. Similar to Taylor, I was tubing in uh, like Lake Altoona, I think, in Georgia, or kneeboarding, whatever. And uh, we got off, and then I got one of these little clear inflatables, and I was just kind of paddling around the shore. And one of those algars comes up and just looks at me under the fucking tube. And I actually I scream like a girl. My parents are on the <laughs> boat looking at me. They're like, what's going on? And I thought at the time it might have been like a legit um, – Alligator, because I didn't understand the concept of alligator at the time. Yeah, <laughs> those Zach, things. show us an alligator gar. Well, they're mean looking. Mm -hmm. fish they're trash or, fish. Yeah, normally, yeah. What'd you so, call it? A trash. I don't think you. Well, eat they them. eat garbage yeah. on the bottom. So uh, I've oh. seen them with bigger teeth than that. Yeah, like like, like they like eat thicker fish. Teeth. They yeah. do. I thought they did. I thought any they fish, fish with teeth yeah. like that. It's not going to do much to a person though. Like it. No, you, but 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 it's scary to see, and, and I don't want to encounter it twelve feet deep or fifteen feet or wherever the fuck. You're in was. his. They world. follow you. They're curious. <laughs> yeah. They followed me around. I was just paddle. It followed me for a good fifteen minutes yeah. after I screamed. Just is weird. And that the fact like you have pitch. no domain, no ability to to like to right, traverse so the is, water like everything else can. Yeah. This is more what I was like afraid of um, than than that previous thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've swam yeah. with like hundreds of wild dolphins. Or, I can't tell the difference between a dolphin and a porpoise, but you know, one of those. And there's a certain like, fuck, you know what's going to happen in this situation? Whatever they choose. That, yeah. That's how this goes down. Me versus 200 dolphins. My will is inconsequential. Oh, 100%. Like imagine all the dolphins laying on like a football field. You're gonna run for a thousand yards if you want. Like that's the, that's the same equivalent. Is I will the, be the NFL's yeah. leading rusher if the other team is all dolphins. Just just kicking them in the face as you run by, just <laughs> running yeah. over. The <laughs> farming fucking flipper. <laughs> the worst. The worst sport. Everyone hates it. It's, it's a dolphin football. It wasn't asked for. <laughs> no one requested it. These billionaires are out of control. Kyle, do you have right. a topic on your tablet there? I do. All right. It's a TV show starring Sylvester Stallone. That's very Tulsa. good. Ooh. Tulsa King. Ooh. Ooh. Tulsa King. Have, have you, you watched, watched any it? of Tulsa King? Zero. I, I'm at least two, maybe three. I'm about three episodes in. Here's the premise of uh, Tulsa King. Sylvester Stallone was a New York mobster. He just did 25 years because he wouldn't like tell on his boss or whatever. He gets released from prison right at the beginning. Um, he's got he's got some voiceover while you see him getting like released from prison. It's funny. It's like good stuff. Um, he's got some good lines in there. Mm -hmm. And right away, it's like, OK, he's going to be kind of a wise, aleck, smart, funny kind of guy. And he is. Um, and he gets he instead of taking him to like uh, a mobster reception at the at, at uh, scores, the strip club. He's like, we're not going to scores. There's no party. He's like, nah, Long Island. Oh, okay. We go to a house. Whose house is this? They didn't say. <laughs> and he's just like, he's getting scared. And like, he's basically walking in a room, like, prepared to die. And it's not even that good of a news when he gets in there and it's not death. They're like, look, there's nothing, there's nothing here for you anymore. There's nothing here for you. And he's like, he's like, I just gave you 25 years of my life. My family doesn't even won't talk to me. There's nothing for me. It's like, you got Tulsa. I'll give you Tulsa. Fucking Tulsa. That's, you're, you're, you're exiling me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look, you've given you your whole fucking city. You get a whole fucking city. Now get out of here. That's basically how it ends. And I'm like, okay, so he runs Tulsa, Oklahoma now? Is that right? Yeah, he does. But but the thing is, there's no like mobster network in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They're, what they're saying is, we okay you going to Tulsa and taking over. <laughs> so, he, so you have to so make he, your he, own he, enterprise. Dude, he rolls into town and like he because he's missed the last 25 years or whatever. And you know, he's 75 years old. He doesn't know anything about like the iPhone or, or anything. And, and like, like he's almost getting into a fight with his cab driver. Cause the guy says he looks like a gangster. He's like, don't you say I'm gonna look like a gangster. Don't you ever say I look like a gangster? He's like, nah, man, I just mean you look cool and all you think being a gangster is cool. Well, yeah, I guess, you know, slick with it. Hi, that's what I'm saying. All right, then. like he's getting ready to like pimp slap his black driver. He, <laughs> they drive past a, me a medical marijuana uh, um, dispensary, and he's like, "What is that?" He's like, "It's a weed store." Pull up, pull up. <laughs> he, he walks in there and basically strong arms them. Like he, <laughs> be he beats up the guard. He tells the guy, "Like, take me in the back and show me your books. I'm your partner now." And and like 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 you know like threateningly, he just assaulted the guards. The guy shows in the books. He's like, 
you got you made five hundred thousand dollars. Where are you keeping that money? He's like, oh, the bank. He's like, I know you're not keeping it in the bank because then the feds can get it. Where are you keeping that money? Like, I don't have it. He's like, look at these shoes. The corner of these shoes are very sharp, very sharp and very hard. And I'm gonna break. <laughs> I'm gonna break three of your toes if you don't tell me where that safe is. We both know it's right there. <laughs> yeah. So he gets up and he opens the safe, and there's this like giant pile of money, and he peels off like a hundred thousand. And he, he he's like, all right, I'll, I'll see you in a couple of days. He's like, that's all you're taking? He's like, I told you, we're partners now. I'm gonna look out for you. That way, if the, any of the gangs or the criminal element comes in here, he's like, there's never been any criminal element to you. Hey, what are you a smart aleck? You listen, I'm protecting you. <laughs> and he just I'm walks protecting out you of from there. people like me. <laughs> like me. He's like, like, there's more. There's more coming. There's not though. He, like he's the problem. And he could, but he walks out of there with this man's money and like gives the driver half of it and is like, go get me this car and hands him a page out of a magazine. He's like. You want a Lincoln Navigator? Yeah, a black one with all the shit in it. <laughs> so <laughs> now, Lincoln Navigator, the and like, coolest like, of SUVs. I don't know. If it is. It's fucking sick. So They're nice, he, but that's a weird request. But he's go. Lincoln the first couple the episodes Does are him like. Cover it? Uh, it'll get you started, and, and <laughs> especially if there's an assault involved. With I don't want to spoil that, it. but but there's another <laughs> beating. There's another beating at the car dealership that I'll gloss over. You know, I you hope know. so. <laughs> there's a severe beating at the at the at the car dealership over the and and so you we think get you're the, the assassin. Pit. I'm the assassin. <laughs> it goes like that. Um, and uh, and but then just him trying to like put his money in his bank account. They're like, well, you need ID. I was like, here you go. It's like, this expired in 1993. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Um, well, I don't have any. Well, you have to go get some. And him like going through the process of getting a driver's license. And of course, he like turns to the left. <laughs> They're like, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" <laughs> no, it's 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 cute and it's funny, but it's violent at the same time. Um, and and like he takes everybody plays their roles like seriously. It, uh, I think there's going to be death and murder. Um, there's uh, Sylvester Stallone pulls off being physically intimidating at 75. Honestly, he does. Impressive. He's big and bulky. Impressive. And uh, um, there's a scene where he fucks a woman. And then afterwards, um, she's like, uh, how old are you? He's like, ah, come on. What do you want me to say? You, want me to, you might as well be asking me, where were you when Kennedy was shot? She goes, where were you when Kennedy was shot? I was a senior in high school. <laughs> 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 she goes, that would make you 75. She goes, I got I I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> fucking go. And like gets disgusted with him and rolls up out of there. And he's like, oh. Aww. He's like, will I will I see you later? Maybe tomorrow. And she's just like, and she like closes the door and she's gone. Like, like, she's it's, like it's kind of a sad. No, you geriatric. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's fun. What I like it a lot. Septuagenarian. Have yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. Septuagenarian. If you're in your seventies, rather than octogenarian up in your eighties, right? True fact. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm gonna watch some more probably probably tonight. I, without, I'm surprised. Without spoiling it, do they leave room for season two? Is there a season coming? I'm not through season one, um, but I would imagine so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it's produced by that same guy who makes the Yellowstone stuff. Sheridan, something. Yeah, I, I forget his first name. Well, r- regardless, that guy. Um, this show and uh, that other show with Renner, Jeremy Renner, the Hawkeye guy who like almost lost his leg recently. He's mm-hmm. got that show that's like mayor of something town or some shit. He also produces that. I think they're all supposed to be in the same universe. It'd be fun if you saw like some crossover stuff happening. Kingstown. Yeah. Um, Kingstown. yeah, I don't, I, I am simultaneously addicted to the Yellowstone universe and disgusted by the Yellowstone universe. It is so stupid and lame. And it is, I mean, Yellowstone in particular, they've just been fighting billionaire landowners from California, you know, those liberals uh, for five years now. Get another plot. Jesus, fuck. Like, this is the only thing you got? Someone's trying to buy your land or like steal it or get yeah no i i get it um i'm i i don't i don't think they're gonna have any other bag right it's just gonna be about i wish they would just expand i heard it's gonna end oh well that'd be good kevin costner doesn't want to do it and kevin costner's people came out and said this this isn't true but the rumor was he He wanted all the filming in one week and then they're like no no we'll work harder than that and one week 
specifically, the rumor was they had like 50 days to do the whole thing, and they did like 45 days on the first half of the season. So he's like, get your shit done. And then they said that wasn't true. So take that. Yeah, that's definitely not true. Like like production times, especially on a big show like that with all the animal stuff, it's got to be a couple of weeks per episode at least. Like Star Trek The Next Generation was two weeks per episode, to give you an idea. And like... And it's way more controlled. They're able to set everything up. Yeah. Like, yeah, like they got said, like three sets. Animals or, you know, sometimes things that are weather related or, yeah. I watch a lot of like Star Trek uh, behind the scenes stuff. And they, they said, we did everything in three takes. Usually just one take. We go in there. We do. What do you think about this, Mr. Wolf? I think we're in trouble, Captain. <laughs> right then. Shh. Scene. All right. We got it, right? We got it, right? <laughs> Fucking lunch. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they just roll. I heard them. Uh, Scorsese's like that, I think. I, I might have messed it up. No, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Eastwood is like that. Eastwood yeah. is the guy. Like, it, it rarely, if you need a second take, he's like, "What? Well, you fuck it up? Why do you need? A, what do you suck? One take. I don't know. Eastwood makes good movies, so yeah. They they say he doesn't do a lot of takes. Um, I haven't seen the one that he made about the Atlanta bombing. The bombing thing. Remember the, the we had the. Um, mm-hmm. The Olympics in Atlanta, and there was a there was a bombing. They got the wrong guy, and they got the mm-hmm. wrong guy right away, and the media got carried away with it. Uh, I'm blanking Richard on Richard Jewell, I think. Thank yeah. you. That's the name of the movie as well, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and look, I was a kid. It was '96, so I was 10, but I remember this vividly. How like, oh, it was this. They got him. It was that guy, and he's like all over the news, and it's like this is the guy who tried to blow up the fucking Olympics. Meanwhile. He's the fucking hero cop who came in like Paul Blart, looking like Paul Blart too, but mm-hmm. he's the guy who was like, bomb! And he's, he's like, get everybody out of here. S- probably saved lives. Like, got the bomb defused, got it out of there, and never went off. Saved the fucking day. Needed him on one of those hijacked planes on 9-11, but he couldn't because they ruined his fucking reputation in 96. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the Clint Eastwood movie is about. It's about Isn't him good? like... I don't know. I've seen it. It is. Oh. It's very good. It's sad, but it's good. Yeah. I haven't mm. seen that many like... of Clint Eastwood's directing. What has he done other than like Gran Torino that he um, directed? Like a... no. The uh the 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 World War II one. The um is it Flags of Our Fathers or is it or is it something of Iwo Jima? Ghost of Iwo Jima maybe. He he made a World War II one. I think that's from the Japanese perspective. That's really good. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, but I'm spacing on the name. I think maybe. I remember the Mule. I think Sully, uh, Unforgiven. Um, we're skipping out on Million Dollar Baby. Oh yeah, with Hillary Swank. I'm so outclassed movie. in movie discussions. I haven't seen any of these. Well, I'm cheating. You've never seen Million Dollar Baby? That's like Heartbreak a Heartbreak no. Ridge. That's the bo- it's a boxing style? movie. Heartbreak yeah. Ridge is great. So that's so that's when Clint is st- Clint is like that like still physically imposing age of like maybe 45 or so, uh, and and he's like muscular he stayed muscular his whole career if you look at there's a movie where um called space cowboys where where he goes to space as like a 70 year old man he's got bicep veins um but anyway going back to the other thing um heartbreak ridge he's training some uh soldiers he's got his own like squad or whatever and it's you know it's the classic cliches he's like there's like a a a slick guy with cool glasses and he steps on the glasses and everybody's like a jokester or whatever and he like kicks kicks their asses makes them a fighting unit mm. and then they end up in some half-assed battle slash war in maybe like south america or something and so you get like some explosions some battle and some oorah shit it's good it's okay it's like an action movie who's uh who's your favorite director the best one all time <laughs> all um, time that's hard Only one. <laughs> Stan- <laughs> Final uh, stanley kubrick stanley kubrick it's a good answer i like that's nolan who i would have guessed you like nolan really yeah, well, because he does all his VFX practical, if he can. That's his thing. He will, like that scene in Inception where they're like on the walls walking. Mm-hmm. He built a rig that literally just turns the room and they walk through it. And so I he's saw just... That. It's really cool. Yeah, that's uh, why I like yeah, him. I, I, cool. I, I enjoy that too. Um, I, I think that um, what he does with the camera is is really cool. And it, I like that it harkens back to like older school stuff. I like that he likes 70 millimeter and he goes through the expense and the time and the effort of shooting in it. Um, I, I, what's his next movie? The the next movie is called Oppenheimer, right? Yeah. About the creation of the nuclear weapon. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go the the fucking hour drive to the 70 millimeter place. We've only got one in Georgia. 
<clears throat> and I'm going to go watch it in 70 millimeter. Just like I watched Hateful Eight in 70 millimeter. I watched Interstellar in 70 millimeter. Um, it's a different experience. Um, it just looks different. I wouldn't say it's like groundbreaking or anything, but it, for, for me, it's worth driving an hour and, and or maybe just I'm just a douchebag and I want to say I did it. But uh, I watched Hateful Eight twice. Once they had it in focus and once they didn't, that's the drawback Oof. of 70 millimeter. <laughs> what do you mean? It wasn't in they just so, played the whole movie out in focus. So everything that you've probably ever watched in a theater was like a big um, digital projector. Unless you go back uh-huh. to maybe when you watched Jurassic Park as a kid, maybe they had reels of film. But it's been a digital projector for a long time where they go boop and a movie gets shot on the screen. It's like you would at home, but bigger and fancier. But he's shooting in 70 millimeter, which is a very wide film stock. 35 is, is what's used a lot, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Eight is like what you do in like a little home reel zippy zip camera. Um, but 70 is a, is a very dense, very wide film stock that captures a no. ton of information, a lot of depth of color and diversity of color. And it's a, it's an incredible, and it's very wide. It's a very wide um, shot. And uh, they've got to focus it with a lens up there. There's a little bit of like, I don't know. You've got to be a projector, projectionist. Yeah. Not just yeah. a button presser. So <laughs> if you don't really have cool. a projectionist, you've got a button presser, it's out of focus. I've never been to the theater. Is it like a like I'm imagining like a drive-in theater, but inside that that kind of size? It's a, it's um it's at the mall of uh, Georgia Sorry. in Buford. Um um it's outside it's about 40 minutes outside of Atlanta. And uh it's a standard theater. I mean it's a big IMAX theater. Like like okay. it's it's I when I say standard, I mean, you know, it's the seats are the same, yeah, and, like yeah. the room is it's just a bigger room. But it is an enormous IMAX screen you watch it on. That sounds pretty awesome. I haven't seen a movie in IMAX since like since Avengers like probably Endgame. since like high school. I or, watched Avengers Endgame. Um, that's the last one I watched in IMAX. Uh, I wanted to see that and that. And uh, but but I I used to watch a bunch. I think I had like the Crown Club card for like a couple years in a row, and I was like, we're gonna get our money's worth. And like I would go watch two movies a day. Um, I'm already like like uh, one of those eth- unethical life uh, pro tip guys where like when I was like 18, 16, 17, 18, when you've got a car but no morals yet or or like tons <laughs> yeah. of readily uh, available income, you either go to watch one movie and it's like, well, now we're here. Like, why not watch two movies? Right. Like, so I would always just stay and watch a second showing of, of like a different movie. I never did that. I I I didn't want I don't want to sit down and watch two full movies back to back in the theater. It. Yeah, I, I that's a lot of sitting sure. still. This is it's hard to sit still for this fucking show for four hours straight. You gotta you gotta move around a little bit. I, you you I, know, I, I, tapping your, your feet all the time. I'm always j- moving. I'm, I got my legs crossed here. I'm just I'm I'm in my zone here. This is my comfort zone. When I'm gaming in here, I'm in here for twelve hours sitting here. Like like I do this thing with my neck where I do this and that, and it goes crap crap. Because so <laughs> I'll sit here for fucking three hours straight and not move. And then I'll remember and I go, oh, yeah, don't turn it. Don't turn it. Crack, crack. And I'll be like, because if I turn it, it'll like twist up and fucking not. Um, no, I, th- I take my gaming seriously. I spend a lot of time in here. You do. You're, playing. you're not even. Yeah. The last thing I was playing. Um, it's not AOE 2. Let's see. Uh, it's not The Last of Us, but it should be if you're that into the show, I think. Right, I feel like I that's what I should do. After fan of that game, well, no, just after game. watching it, I feel like I should play it because I had the idea. Like I've played like the very beginning of it, but then uh, I had to move, so I didn't have my PlayStation anymore. But now that I'm watching it, I'm like, I just want to go back and play it. So I don't know. You should. I played a tremendous amount of Escape from Tarkov uh, in January. Um, I would guess I was spending sixty to seventy-five hours a week playing um, for about a for about thirty-two days, I think, till I maxed my character out. And uh, then I quit that. Uh, but before that, I've been playing Dark Tide, which is a Warhammer 40k um, game. Unfinished and, game, and yeah. It's an unfinished game. Um, but um, I played that awfully religiously too. I maxed two characters out in that. Anybody that's listening knows that's tremendous duty to be done. Yeah, it takes um, a while. So I, I get real obsessed with games or really with, with with any sort of like hobby that I get into. I get kind of obsessive about it. And if I'm not doing it, then I would just be thinking about doing it anyway, or I'd be researching how to do it better, like how to play the game better or how to strategize. I'm I'm avoiding playing the stupid game that Taylor is playing, which is AOE 2. Oh, Because it's like man. a 15-year-old game. Taylor and I's PCs cost more than vehicles. 
It's it's Taylor Taylor and I. It's a game no, 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 no. from Sh- 2000. Not, let, me, let me finish my thought. Taylor and I's gaming setups cost more than our first vehicles that, that we drove true. down the road, and yet he wants to play a game that probably runs on an iPad. It is so the reason, Josh, have have you played Age of Empires yeah, before? Of course, the franchise yeah, yeah. Age of Empires two. It's mm-hmm. one of the best known. RTS games. If you like real time strategy style games, then you love AOE too. It's a very fun, complicated game. It has a wider, broader tech tree than any other RTS. I'm biased towards it because, like, you know, StarCraft, very cool. Probably StarCraft 2 is the most popular RTS out there today. It's wildly popular still. I, I'm not as into the alien side of it as like all the sieves of the AOE 2. Uh, two side where it's like I can play as the Hindustanis, I can play as the Franks, the Britons, the Gurjaras, the the Vikings, the Vietnamese. Like there's, it's and they all play differently, and it's so fun and, and like managing the different economies. Like I'm having a blast at it and trying to get better with build orders and shit. And Kyle just thinks it's lame, and I don't think that's fair. I think like it's not about the newness of the game there or the brand. graphics or anything. It's about yes. and, and you know the reason AOE four didn't suck me in is because they got rid of a lot of the complexity. They got rid of a lot of the stuff that made AOE 2's build up so like they simplified a lot of it and and I don't like that. Not that like I'm even, I'm not even good at AOE 2. I'm not even good. I'm just I just have a fun time playing it. It's a it's a great I'm learning build orders now. I'm really good at Fast Castle into Knights. Not really good, but serviceable at it. Like I, I'm just having a great time Taylor. playing, Kyle. You would you would have so much fun with us if you played me and you know what me, it my feels buddies like? were all playing. You'd have a blast with us, dude. You remember, you know, um, you're good at these uh, these old timey vocabulary words. Do you, do, there's that there's an old musical instrument where um, you rub your fingers over glass. <sighs> oh, so if you had to say that, like I the would one, know. The, the glass. Yeah, I, I, I know it. The problem that? is, I know it too. And it's yeah. like, like if you gave me multiple choice, I'd immediately be like B. Yeah. But but I'm at, anyway. What you're asking is me to come along to your music class where you learn to play the. It sounds like frenulum. <laughs> I want to say frenulum, but I know that's silly. I I, I just <laughs> I play the but, frenulum. I yeah, know you're it, great it, at that. <laughs> oh, amazing! I'm a fucking artist. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, or as the commoners call it, the skin flute. So yeah. the, uh, <laughs> but but it, that's what it feels like. It feels like you want me to go to your silly like like you didn't even learn like a harpsichord class, for example. You want me to learn some <laughs> stupid instrument that that won't get pussy attention or money. Like, you, you know what I mean? It's like, dude, no, no, no. Look, Taylor, I'll learn an instrument with you. Guitar or piano. <laughs> you know that's the fucking core ones. Like, that's how you get pussy, money, and attention. One of those. You, I understand. If you're serviceable what you're... and you can play a little John uh, John Mayer fucking at a party. Yeah, oh, dude, those high I... schoolers, they fall for that every time. I understand you know. <laughs> those high schoolers, those those gullible fifteen year olds, right? Like I was like no, oldies that... to them. Your body is one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about that shit. Did Whoa, you was write that? Ninety eight. Is that ninety eight degrees? <laughs> no, no. I tell. No, I, I, I call. I, I'm like. I wrote this about you. Body is one. <laughs> Why do you wow. think I got my guitar? I, have, over there? I, I haven't know, like, heard of John. I know Mayer two before. chords. <laughs> <laughs> no, I disagree. No, that's you true. you have a fundamental enjoyment of strategy game. You like it and you would it. have fun with it. It's the the problem with like this game th- this game was released before the simplifying of games. Well, I, I, I've been argue, I just argued the point that he's trying to get me to like learn Josh the said it's fair. Cord. Yes. He's trying to he, he wants me to yeah. come with him and learn the harp He's support. pitching this like, game from the 1960s at you. And you're like, Kyle, pump but the depth. You're going to love it. It's before games got needlessly I have, complicated. No, I have no, no, no. It's ne- I have before alternatives games got needlessly check every box. I have alternatives that check every box. I have alternatives that check every motherfucking box. I think the depth is there. Look. And you could just play Inventory Simulator. Warhammer? That's called Tarkov. Yeah, Warhammer yeah, you can play Inventory Simulator, or you can play a more fun game like AOE 2, Warhammer where you're three. managing a lot Warhammer more. Warhammer 3. Warhammer 3. I and, like and, the and, economy part of it. I like having to balance my production with an economy, and with Warhammer, it's fun, but it's just selecting an army based on an amount of gold you have. I like 
having a build order plan where it's like, what am I going to focus on economically in order to facilitate an army but push in this way? What what civ what, is my opponent playing? I need to scout out the front of their base, see what their production buildings are. You're describing are they making Warhammer. Dirt? You're describing Warhammer. Because no, you I'm don't check for production you, buildings. I'm anymore. playing dwarves. I'm going to play the fucking dwarves. You're going to play the fucking high elves. And you're going to be like, oh, ho, ho. That's a lot of amp, a lot of armor, but not a lot of mobility. I'm going to need chariots. I've got a limited amount of gold. I have got to bring chariots, but I need a front line. Oh, my God. Now that I've got a front line and three chariots, how am I going to afford a general? I've got to get the captain of the guard, but I can't have him just walking. Let me put him on the Pegasus. Like, you're going to you're going to put a build order I get together. It. Like, I, I've it, played it, it also. It, like, it, but you don't and do it again. You don't see your opponent's army pick before the beginning of the game. And so you are picking what you think the meta will be about what you're anticipating facing in AOE 2 or RTSs like StarCraft. You're actually scouting, figuring out what their production buildings are, then manipulating your economy to facilitate the production of units that will counter that. Tell me, all the, tell, me all the, uh, tell me all the great things about GoldenEye while you're at it. Tell me all the, all the, all the it's advantages. a tremendous game Goldeneye. as long as you don't have a fucking odd job in your group. Yeah, I'm it's not going to play game. Goldeneye on my fucking Rolls Royce computer over here either. I, I made the point, Woody, that our that our PCs cost more than our first vehicles, and he's mm -hmm. wanting to play a game that'll run on an iPad. Like, like I want to, I want it, next. It's such a fun game, dude. dude like you're 4K on a 4090 GPU. He can fucking run <laughs> real <laughs> life at 80 frames. <laughs> dude you like this is the same argument i could make about when movies i could be like oh why do why do Taylor, i need to watch uh, unforgiven oh i don't need to watch unforgiven there's newer newer than this game. that's a that's a complete fallacy skyrim you, you, is you so much newer than argument. this game right, the fact that you that fall into that argument means you've lost you, I you've lost if you went today. to that argument now the fact that you're ascribing that to me means you've lost skyrim to run on a digital pregnancy test <laughs> and meanwhile, Taylor's playing a game that's less demanding you, than Skyrim. You guys don't. You got. You're just fundamentally not understanding. I got what people I'm saying. messaging. It's, it's, it's not. I got people it's messaging not about the newness. Saying, it's saying, not about hey, the man. graphics. It's about the complexity and the and, strategy. And, the and it's is, fun. There's no other game Vavity. that scratches that itch. You got poor Vavity and those other guys playing that old timey ass game, learning the harpsichord with you when they should be getting all their life skills together. <laughs> and, and and fucking learning a, a man's game a man's game dude <laughs> like, if like, you like, if you played like five games with us i guarantee you would have another on your monitor a build order and you would be getting good at it quickly taylor because you like I strategy games into, the same dude, thing. i looked into what it would take oregon to get trail. good at it here's Just the other thing oregon, <laughs> we should play oregon trail on Love your fucking get nvidia that. 4090 here's the other problem I, 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 I like I know what I like and I like it. <laughs> so, so I own the game. Um, I, I I spent about six hours looking into what it would take to get good at the game. It's a tremendous a amount of time that you must have spent. You I, I'm it, it it's gonna take me fifty fucking hours at least to get good at this game because just learning the first fifteen build order is gonna take me a day to memorize it and have it down. And oh, then no, after that, that first I, fifteen I, builds I, quick. Yeah, but I got to get them quick. I got to like memorize them like it's the back of my hand. And then I just feel like, why the fuck am I putting this on my mental hard drive? Why is this being programmed in here by repetition? Because it's fun. I want to play. It's not about game, gaining Taylor. anything. And as soon or winning as you're ready anything. to play, it's always about winning and gaining. That's the only reason I do this. And whenever you're ready to play <laughs> a next generation game with me, I'll I'll get in there deep with you. <laughs> okay, that's what I wrote right here. That's what I wrote right here. Well, <laughs> Warhammer, I'm I'm totally down for Warhammer, but I just I know you'd enjoy it. Like, or Company of there. Heroes three. Company of Heroes three is World War fucking two. Our see that war. one is more tempting to me. I don't. You don't really have to manage an economy much. You just have to hold outposts. But it's still yeah, you grab your I outposts. like I like that management more. I like the map based like control, and that part of Warhammer is really cool, where you can use the terrain to your advantage or disadvantage of your opponents. It's fun. fun. It's a great game. I love the the setup of the total war franchise but there's just a different layer of economy added to it that i really enjoy that's that's a bunch of fun and you would and you know you would like it you're afraid to play because you know you would get so fucking into the build orders and you'd I've be playing all these it, different though. civs See, that's the other you're thing we've already done you know you'd love with it. age of mythology age of mythology is the exact same game essentially just different civs like like what you're playing is an expansion pack, or, or like maybe what I was playing, what or Age of Mythology, yeah. you could say, is an expansion to what you're well, doing. It's AOM different... is a lot simpler than AOE. Like it, there's a lot. F okay. The, the tech tree is a lot simpler, and there's there's only three sibs with like three gods each in a Age of Mythology, and there's forty two oh. sibs. And I remember AOE. more than that. It's weird. Well, I yeah. love Warhammer again because they they 
every couple months they charge you fifteen dollars for a whole new sieve, Taylor. By the time you're done, that game costs like three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, good. Like, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. It's it it my uh. So I played a tremendous amount of Warhammer. Remind 2, you of the, Magic the Gathering? A little bit. It's not like a great a, game. when I first started, it was like a list of shit that I needed to buy to like be able to play all the races. You you get like a core, like maybe eight to start with, and like it's just buy 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 buy. And by the time you're done, a lot of it's free now because it's a uh, for the second one anyway, I guess. But it, it's a couple hundred dollars worth of DLC at least. It's, <laughs> Have it's you so seen the shit. Train Simulator DLC? It's just endless. You can scroll on that Steam page for like ten <laughs> minutes, and it's just hundred dollar trains. I had to ran like, out of a, a new route to download or stuff like that. I think it's just a new new train car, I guess. Oh, I, I haven't know. ran out of uh, enough fun. There's enough fun games without doing a simulator <laughs> game. That um, what's that Russian game that just came out? Is it Hearts of Iron with the sexy robo ladies that everybody's having a cow about? Because because all the dudes are like, that's what a woman looks like. And 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 the women are like, no, it's not. That, and, and and I wish they would reply, you don't know what a woman is. But it's the the rope the robots in this are just like titties and ass. It's just this big hourglass with no face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're robots, but but still, they they're, they're like these big sexy Soviet robots with machine guns. It's Hearts of Iron. Of, uh, RTS. It was yeah, not Hearts of Iron. Twitch. It's um. Mm. Oh, what is it? It's um. Uh, Atomic Iron Heart. Or that. Is it Atomic That's, Heart? No. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, it's um, I haven't looked into it all, but it looks like some sort of not cyberpunk exactly, but some some sort of like weird alternate future Soviet Russia or something. A little bit of Bioshock vibes for me. Maybe. Yeah, I haven't looked into it at all, but I plan on playing it. The thing is, the, for, the Sons of the Forest came out today. Yeah. So that's my next game. Um, if if uh, either of you want to join me in Sons of the Forest, um, I think it's going to be a blast. That's it's it's it's, it's a horror Sorry. survival game. It's an, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'll play it. I gotta, I gotta push the PC to the so, limit. Let's see what it can do. So yeah, it's I'm story, excited about that. So it's story driven. Um, so the first game, um, basically, your plane crashes on this island. Well, it turns out on that island, there's some se- there's secret organization is doing genetic altering tests underground in a hidden base. And above ground are like their failed experiments, which are like these mutated cannibal people. And so you have to contend. And first thing that happens while you're disabled from the crash, your son, your like 12 year old son is snatched up by like the leader of like the, the, the people he's out for test subjects, I guess. And so you spend the game um, trying to rescue your son. Now it's not, it's a uh, completely um, open world and you need like five items to complete the final mission to like go and get your son. So you're going to need like a climbing ax. Well, that's down in this hole over here. You got to spelunk through a, a cave and eventually get it. Same thing with like the lighter, the map, the compass, the oxygen tank, the flippers. Weapons are very scarce. There's a very cool crafting system um, where you like actually do the shit. Like like, and uh, there's um, you can build cabins and all sorts of traps to defend yourself from the cannibals of the island. The combat is really visceral and 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 rough. The spelunking is terrifying. It's is very it like- frightening. The forest, because sounds like that. Yeah, that's what I'm describing. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, yeah. good, good, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um. So, well, you know, the sequel's coming out. The yeah. premise of the sequel is you're like a special forces squad being sent to an island to rescue somebody. So, like, that sounds way better. Yeah. Because in the first game, you were throwing spears, and it, and and like, hmm. it it was scary because you were so unarmed. <laughs> I, I, I look forward to a game. Man. Here's the best part, Taylor. One of your comrades, it turns out, had a whoopsie, and He's 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 he, so something happened to him. He got hit over the head, and now, for all intents and purposes, he's retarded. That's not he him. can't he can't hear and he can't speak. But you could take a piece of paper and go click 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 and like type into it. Go get logs and show it to him, and he's your slave. He'll just keep bringing logs back. You have a retarded man slave as part of his game. And that it'll do whatever you tell it to do. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and it looks like you've got some sort of mutated pussy. There's this lady with like four legs and at least two vaginas, I'm hoping. I don't know how many buttholes. We'll see. But but she does this like seductive dance in one of the trailers. And it, she's doing like a ballet performance. And then like before you know that she has multiple limbs, like it's cool. And then all of a sudden like extra limbs flip out behind the other ones and continue. Yeah, she's a monster. 
I, I mean, you know, you get, we're on an island, Taylor. You beggars, choosers. You know how it is. Yeah, but the monster will, will kill you. No, 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 yeah, no. She'll be killed. Oh, DTF. Well, this is a pretty cool game. Yeah. So yeah, you just got... gonna just demand things of retarded men and fight or fuck aliens. Yeah, and we do it together. We like 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 <laughs> I love like, that. Like, I love you, the camaraderie. I don't know if we. Up. I don't know if we each get a slave or if we have to share one, but I'm happy to share my slave and I'll let you name him because I know you'll come up with a good name. Oh, that's great. I'll come up with one. I'll come up with a just just offensive enough we can swing it name like for for our retarded man who who fetches logs. If he can't yeah. do anything else but logs, then he's not very exciting. But if he no, can, whatever you want him to fetch, if you can tell him like, rock. kill, <laughs> hey, kill that ghoul, and then he just kill, that'd be pretty useful. I think he'll defend. I think he'll like fight, like like I like. But the the mo- the, the purpose, he passes the butter. Just, mm. <laughs> oh my else. god! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, exactly. but I've been here's the here's the downside of all this. It's a thirty dollar game. Um, but um, it was supposed to release. It might be a little off in these dates. It was supposed to release last May, I think. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, we'll get you in the fall. And then they're like, actually, early access in February. Yeah. So that's what they've actually, done. We they've... saw what happened with the Dark Tide people. We're going to finish the game first. No, they're not going to finish the game. They, they they literally went early access, released the game. So it, it's going to be most of the game, I'm sure. That's obnoxious. But, uh, eh, I, I don't know. I see a bunch of people in our little... Uh, they don't make games like they game. used to, do they? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> really they peaked in 1997 <laughs> really they peaked in 1999 <laughs> i mean this isn't nostalgia or some old timey shit it's like they literally don't finish games now they, they literally true. go yeah. early access because they keep getting away with it and i don't mind mm-hmm. when they're 30 dollars and they promise you like future content will be free i love I, Tar- tarkov dude i've got my money worth money's worth so many times yeah. over i'm perfectly fine with the the balance that i've struck with tarkov monetarily We've been talking about gaming, Josh. What are, what's your all-time favorite game or games you enjoy? Uh, I have a shitload of time in War Thunder, so that's why I was asking all the tank questions, pretty much. But yeah, in War have, Thunder, War I've yeah, Thunder. it's just tanks, jets. Uh, probably too much time and too much money into War Thunder, but that's my thing. For sure. What are you doing? In it? Is it a, a war game or uh, not a simulator? So it's, you got combined battles. You got tanks, uh, or you have just jets. Um, I mean. Pretty much just tank simulator versus jet simulator. And uh, it can be kind of broken sometimes. But my main thing that I'm wondering is, like, uh, they don't go all the way up to modern tanks and jets. They stop at, like, kind of, like, at the Cold War now. But um, it just makes me wonder what's going to happen as they continue to progress the USSR tree in that game. Because, Mm -hmm. I don't know, current events is kind of, like, where they're at and what they're using right now anyway. So... Mm-hmm. I saw a graveyard today over there for um, the, um, uh, the no for the um, the 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 Wagnerites. I think that you know the, the Wagner guys. Mm-hmm. It goes it goes on and on. I, I'll send it to you. I'll send um, on uh, on WhatsApp. I don't know if we can show it, but but you can look at it at the very least. It's Is Wagner, shocking. That's the that's Russian private right? military. Yeah, the Russian private military. It's like they're uh, black guys, or what we call quarter now. Yeah, it's a little bit different than that. It's more of a state-sponsored like terror cell, right? So it's kind of like Blackwater. Can... No, not but at they all. recruit people from like prison and stuff there for Wagner. Oh, I I saw one of the the speeches that yeah. they give to, at the at the prison. It was good and honest, and I liked it. This <laughs> oh? dude, this dude. All right, so imagine this <laughs> dark prison yard full of prisoners standing. Mm-hmm. Okay? I'm there. there. Was snow on the there's snow on the ground. It's nighttime, and this guy's up on a platform. And he's yelling at him. He's he's like, we're looking for men who've had it hard and are going to continue having it hard. We're looking if you've assaulted, if you assaulted someone, if you killed someone, that's good. We're not looking for people who are getting out soon. If you've got <laughs> 10, 15 years, we want you. If um, if you've uh, if you've done many, if this is not your first time in, if you're a second time, third time, multiple offender, we want you. We, don't 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 misunderstand where you're going. It is hard. We need you, you for the meat grinder. They're, he's telling them. He, he he's like he's like. Are they beating you here? Have you been beaten by the cops? Beaten by the guards? Do you want to get out of here? And do you need to get out of here? He says, "I myself was serving the ten year sentence, and I'm sure many of you have many skills like I had. 
Many of you have skills that even I don't yeah. have. And we want Beaten you. by guards. The front line might be right for you. Unless it's someone and, like, walking through a park. And, <laughs> and, I'm doing my part. And then if you look on I'm your... Um, if you look what I sent you, it's, it's it's literally like a panning shot of an extensive graveyard of, of, of these guys dead. It's wild. Um, yeah. Have you been following it every day still, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. I can't not. Like, like I, I watch... I watch a ton of uh, footage of tank ambushes and, uh, mm. and and lots of like grenade stuff. And um, I saw uh, something that showed the accuracy of Russian versus Ukrainian artillery. It was fascinating. So you, you have Ooh. opposing trenches, right? And from from elevation, you can look down and see the Ukrainian trench. And the artillery fire is this very. It, it covers a huge area. Like mm -hmm. like it, it's it, it's in the general area. Many of the, of the shots are ineffective. Many of them. It, it, it looks like you. It looks like you randomly sprinkled a big area, and that the trench happens to be in. Meanwhile, on the Russian side, it's these dark circles that just line their trench, and most of the misses are just a few dozen yards away on either side. These are mortars. It's this concentrated like, artillery fire, mortars, oh. whatever makes an explosion when it hits the ground. Because by the, and, and just to be clear, there's thousands and thousands of strikes in this field. It's not like a few holes. It looks like a I mean, it is a war zone. It looks like some Terminator 2 post-apocalyptic shit. The trees are all shot down. It's a yeah. smoking, ruinous, like, no man's it's, land where everything is upturned bad. and upheaved mm -hmm. from explosion like, and fire. I want to all quiet on the Western Front, I think. It's, a, it's like I, Battlefield 1. You played that? That's what it looks like. But it's actually happening. I <laughs> have watched a lot of footage of, like, you know, the, whatever. There is a war in syria there was a war here there was a war there and they show you the destruction but really they cover it kind of like they do floods like they they try not to have all the standing healthy buildings in the shot and mm -hmm. and here's a building that's been wrecked here if you watch a tornado the truth is that tornado has taken out a line of homes mm -hmm. and most of the town is fine but they photograph it in such a way or video it in such a way it looks like that tornado wrecked everything because everything you're mm -hmm. seeing is wrecked you might make the assumption that everything you're not seeing is also wrecked cool when you look at these towns in ukraine you know bakhmut or whatever they're after now they are leveled every building is ruined all of them it, it, i i can't fathom how many missiles or how many artillery shots have been fired to level an entire town it is there isn't a useful building in the whole fucking place and i'm just like good god everyone in there is, is dead. just too depressing to follow you what? start it's with awesome the have you seen the, have you seen the POV? i mean millions of people are never gonna be able to return to their home of the tank in bakhmut it's it's on the russian side but it's the pov of a russian tank in bakhmut and they move forward a little bit between the apartment buildings and you know all the trees are just kind of toasted black kind of falling over roots up up upheaved and stuff and, and they, they go for a little bit and they take some shots and they back up a little bit to reload or do whatever around the corner i don't know if you've seen that kyle but it was just it didn't I mean, seem real was it i don't watch tank that fired at a building maybe twice and then ran out of there as the artillery got more accurate i saw that maybe it's not the same one uh -huh. in any case I, wrecked and the i don't Kyle, do you want to jump in or do you want to keep going? Yeah, I, I don't watch any of the Russian stuff, but um, the the, was... the best video that I've seen from the entire war is is this one right here. It's uh, it, it's fairly recent, um, and it's uh, it's a guy defending his uh, oh. his uh, his trench. He starts off with a fucking he RPG at a at, at a position. It's hard to see, but then he switches over to like maybe some kind of an AK five four five AK and wax like three guys like in pretty quick succession kills them you can see him mm -hmm. you can and the first one he kills uh, i've seen it slowed down where you can see like his suppressor in the bottom left of the shot and he goes ch -ch -ch, like a three round burst and you see like the guys you see the guy die like like real close and then he like he's like throwing grenades shooting under barrel grenade launchers shooting an rpk loading an rpk and I'm like, where are his buddies? The only guy that's with him is in a hole in the ground, literally in a little bunker. And uh, he's just like, handing him ammo and explosives. Oh, here you go, buddy. Here's some more. Here's some more. And he's just like, blah, 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 grenade. Blah, 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 missile or whatever. And he's, he's like a kid playing a video game out there. It's fun to watch. Yeah. Dude, I just, I really don't like videos of people dying anymore. Oh, like, well, what if they're bad I, people? 
come on in Lord of the Rings, you know, when we wh Oh, well in Lord that? of the Rings, those are orcs. They have fangs. That's what they and call the bad. Russians. Yeah. Or worms. Yeah, they call right? Russians orcs. They call better. Russians orcs. Well, but they're they're people. They're not they're not spawned uh, yeah, from the are ground. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, I, I, Who's watching to say? people die is. You ever sad. seen a Russian? Have you ever seen a Russian be born? That is true. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I haven't seen. You know, now I'm thinking of it. I haven't seen anyone be born. I've seen a cow born. I helped a cow birth. Then that's it. Not even but on. I, it's I, probably on YouTube. I'm pretty sure you can watch birthing videos on YouTube. CGI. I have not gotten around <laughs> to that corner. You know, nice. <laughs> maybe maybe someday, but no, I haven't. I bet terrible to masturbate. Yeah, have too. you ever? Uh, I think there used to be like uh, I heard rumors or maybe read. There rumors, are mammogram there videos with like Indian guys horny as shit on, on in the comments on YouTube. That's very funny. That is funny. <laughs> where, where they'll be like 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 feeling their breast and they'll be like, "You are so incredibly sexy," and it's like <laughs> it's like you're just checking for lungs. <laughs> I don't like that at all. No, of course. Oh, not. I hope I hope you find something. <laughs> yes, you will. I hope because you, I I my cousin is a is a oncologist. He could help you maybe if you find something. Yeah. I am one. Like that's that's it. That's how he get. That's how he gets. That's his bag. Can you, you imagine? Can I check your teeth for two hours? Hmm. <laughs> would say it, and, it's, and it wouldn't be good. No, the the Hindu stannies, the Indians. I have that's a you. um. Ask me anything or AMA. Yeah. Oh yeah, when you do this yeah. anyway, that's your ten dollar patron patron token. That's one of your many, many benefits. Are you ready? Many. I hope they did a good job with this question because the reason we don't read a lot of them <laughs> is because like sometimes it's it, it just feels like a third grader wrote it and I'm trying not to embarrass people and it's like, man, do I read it the way he spelled that word? Like, do, do I really call him out? Anyway, go ahead, Woody, please. I bet okay. you got a good one. Here's the deal, boys. In parentheses, not trying to buy into the Church of, Church of Kyle. My girlfriend of almost three years, both early 20s, has gained 20 pounds since we've started dating while I've gained mostly muscle. She is going to college and working part-time while I already have my degree and work full-time to support us both. I find time consistently to go to the gym five to six times a week, hashtag gorilla mode inspiration. <laughs> and while she has a short stint for about two months, while she had a short stint for about two months, she fell off the wagon. What advice, what advice do the hosts have for encouraging your partner to take better care of themselves? So um, she works part time, mm -hmm. can't get to the gym. He works full time, can get to the gym. She's gained twenty pounds. Um, it depends on a few mm -hmm. things. Um, it, 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 who's whose name's on the lease? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seems like you know, his. I mean, like, like, yeah. Like, like I, I think you want to be careful about about pushing things too far because there could be a red line. Um, but but I don't think it, it's going to be as dramatic as you think, because unless you're dating a person who's mentally unstable, which, hey, I'm a big fan of that myself. But uh, but, <laughs> but, but I'm going to assume that you're not. Um, then, then I think that you could. Uh, I think I think the first step is always that sort of friendly nudge. I know Woody, Woody and his wife do this thing where they look at each, each other when they're a little chubby and they go. Mm, look at you. Little, they, they fat shame each other. Now they haven't needed to fat that shame is, each other. I think that's, in a couple that's years. That's and red pilled. To go. Usually, while you're like, oh, is, Dude, it, I, is that a pie? <laughs> Dude, I love that you do that. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, enjoy. So you can do that to her. Hey, that's my advice. Use the Woody maneuver. <laughs> every, time, every time you see her. Like, Eating. Here's what you um, need to do. Learn how to play the tuba and walk behind her when she walks. If you have a prescription for Adderall, if you could just sprinkle in like five milligrams a day into mm. one of her puddings. Um, that one usually... of her puddings. She's having <laughs> yeah. multiple puddings. <laughs> one of her many puddings. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you she's can finishing off that. Over as many puddings as needed. You, you know, you get those snack packs and they come in like like four, like a four mm. square. You know, you're gonna finish yeah. that four Put square. Those yeah. mashed potatoes. She's you mean that four? Eating. You mean that four section is not the snack? <laughs> no, you're supposed no, to snap no. those off. <laughs> What's your favorite? <laughs> So that would be my don't, advice, don't honestly. Like, like, yeah. like, don't don't drug her or, or oh, immediately yeah. like yeah. remove her from your life, I suppose. But, but, um, I would say it's like a a, a nudge at first, where you're just kind of like, hey, 
I'd like for you, I'd really like to work out together because some, you always make it your problem. This is, this is how men operate, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. You make it your fault, your weakness, your problem that you need them to help you with because anything else won't work. You can't show up and say, hey, you clearly don't have a lot of willpower or stick to itiveness. These are my strong suits. I'm going to help you apply them so you don't look so bad anymore. And I like you more because I like what's inside, but lately not so much what's outside. That's what you want to say, but you can't say that shit. So what you say is, this what you is say genius. is, what you say is, I got a problem. I, I, I hate working out alone and I, I don't think I'm going to be able to stay motivated. I want you in there with me. I think it'd be a good bonding thing for us. I actually came up with a workout program where we can do stuff together. So we're, we're going to do some medicine ball stuff. That's the seat. See, you can't yeah. let her wander over there and get on the, the step master or whatever because they'll fuck around and they'll end up on their phone. What you do is you toss her a <laughs> medicine ball and she tosses it back. You wiggle a rope and she wiggles the other side. We do group activities now. We, we're going we're gonna to mix in 20 minutes of calisthenics every other day now and you'll solve your problem in a couple of weeks. And here's the thing. Her sex drive will go up and, so, and it, it'll be good. You'll be all sweaty afterwards. You, it, more sex anyway. Yeah, good times. Do that. Nah, dress up but, as a mugger. I think Kyle, I think Kyle <laughs> g gave the best. I don't think I can add anything to that. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I like Kyle's plan a lot. I think it's great. If it doesn't work, though, you're in your early 20s and you can't keep in shape talking to the girl, really. <laughs> you're pre-fat, bitch. Actually, you're fat, fat, and you're pre-fatter. If you're packing Oof. on the pounds at like 22, 23... I don't like your future. You think, you, you think, what do you think this fucking land mammal is going to look like at 40? Right? She's struggling at 23. 23 is easy mode. It's easy mode. It, you can fucking have no diet and just live a regular fucking gluttonous mm -hmm. life at 23 years old. If you want to be a fatty fat fuck that puts on 20 pounds at 23 years old, you are telling me that you're going to put on 60 pounds by 26 years old. Oh, taking strays. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, you're so right. You're so right. Like, if you're having troubles at 23 with your weight, it's like, this is a habit thing. A habit's got to change because this isn't going to get easier as you go on. If you have a cookie so, problem at 22, so what is that right. to gain weight? Mm -mm. Yeah, what he's absolutely right. The real question is, is this girlfriend of yours? That's why I mentioned the least one to start with, right? We're gonna, how, what's your living for situation? Is she paying all the bills, <laughs> yeah. sir? Like, are you going to be destitute if you say the well, wrong shit? Are you on the second right? floor? I hope that was not. in the question to some extent. He says um, that he, he's, I swear he said he was supporting. The I would probably ask, like, what she, what her favorite exercise is. And then I would maybe offer to join in that. If she was open mm, to it, forklift. You know, he says, "I work full time and support us both." But forklift. His her oh, favorite yeah, exercise. The forklift. Yeah. <clears throat> <forklift>. Operation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the mime. I'm like, I'm on the the industrial machine. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. What kind of exercise is that? <laughs> you got to keep powering through. Yeah, yeah that's no, I'm advice. I'm worried yeah. about her future. But, but, you know, but, lot lots of people are hot at 21. Lots of people are hot at 21, and it sounds like maybe she was. Now she's 23, and she's fallen off the hot wagon already. Yeah. Dude, she has – have you – wait do you put a baby into this fucking bovine. Like, she's going to be an entirely <laughs> different person. I graduated from bovine university. <laughs> Dude, if you, if you want to get the one? most, like, the best takes out of Woody, bring up – fat people or people gaining weight <laughs> because he has no patience for it and i what is one of my what favorite is, things about you if fat people come up it's like go fuck yourself lose weight <laughs> lose weight fatty like <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's always huh? <laughs> he's always hated them but like now that he's like super fit He's on his high horse. Like, <laughs> he's up, lovely, right? he's up there on his high horse and he sees anybody with like, because what it is, is he's had to suffer for what he has. And so when he sees someone who hasn't, he, he see he, he knows that they are lacking, that they, that he's like, you didn't do what I, you can't do what I do. You couldn't even dream of doing what I do on a daily basis. I, and I get more done. Like, you know, yeah. he, he's, just, he, he, he's, he's weighing and measuring these people at a glance. You see Taylor and, and deciding <laughs> like worthless work. Mm, yes. Worthy. Worthless. Worthy. It, it's like that so scene like, from boom, Sabotage bang, where Arnold's like you 48% body fat fatty. Have you ever seen that? 
Mm-mm. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Like, because that's like what Arnold falls back to. He's like, "Oh, he's fat," you know. It's just I don't know. if you yeah. can find the scene, it's pretty hilarious. I just want to see it. You moron! What's your favorite yeah, Arnold? Yeah. I mean, if you're Arnold, I, you can call people fat all you want. If she just, gained twenty pounds and she was thirty-seven, you know, and, and like whatever. But like, dude, it. I don't know. I don't no, like. I don't, it. I don't, I don't like. No, maybe, maybe, maybe she's six five. So yeah, I feel like that would have been any yeah. question. You gotta keep yeah. your house fucking tight. Jackie put on her wedding dress from 30 years ago this week. Right? Like, that is a good way to did you bring it on a high horse? Where you're like, Jackie, <laughs> bi-monthly test. <laughs> put it on. <laughs> I just had lunch. No I'm excuses. timing you with my fancy watch. <laughs> no excuses. The barometric pressure is just like last yeah. time. <laughs> tell me the barometric pressure is making you bloated. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, and we're in the gym together. Like five times I, exactly. A week. Yeah. Um, I, I just think like like Woody's, Woody makes a good point. I, I I guess I forgot how old this guy was, and just thinking generally speaking, like maybe like if you're considering marrying this person, go with what I said. If this is someone you've been dating for I don't know how for how long for a few months, and you just like improved your own like letter grade, if you will, like like sounds like you've been working out and getting in better shape. Yeah, you want to get on out of that. Um, but but find a nice excuse. You know, don't don't have her. I'm curious yeah. about the. Re- I I Jesus. picked up a little bit of like, <laughs> she's not matching me on a lot of fronts. What? He says he's finished school and he's supporting them both, working full time and hitting the mm. gym. She works part time and she's still in school. And maybe I misinterpreted. I felt like there was a little like, and now she's in her fifth year while I carry the the water for both of yeah. us, making it all happen. Mm. I don't know if that's true. Uh, maybe I'm stretching it, but. I appreciate yeah. uh, the details. No, that's good. No, I would say um, if, uh, if if she's someone you want to hang on to, my my ticket is the way to improve her. If it's it, but but always know that like Woody's route is is absolutely practical and pragmatic, and you can sure. just pull the ripcord on this and upgrade. Like it here's the deal: Do you want a hot girlfriend in two months, three mm-hmm. months, four months, or three or four days? <laughs> If he That's upgraded true. his position, like I don't know, he might be a really good catch. He's in the gym all the time. Mm-hmm. He's gainfully employed. He's finished school. Like it sounds he, like a little resent is in that message to me. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was just trying, trying to sure. say. Yeah. Well, yeah, he, little, he's he's already a little uh, a little annoyed at how much mm-hmm. more he's pouring into it. Not only physically, there's a sexual market value. We all have a sexual market value, and he's realizing there's a gap between him and her mm-hmm. that's growing. Want clearance? Well, I, 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 it's it's the effort. I mean, he's pointing out that like I do more than her, and I'm able to get this done. She's clearly not prioritizing it. Yeah, yeah. And if she's so, not yeah. independently prioritizing that, she's not going to continue to after you stop your little song and dance of this. We have to do all this together, like. It's unlikely. So if you're having to like, if this is your goal, it might be easier. You know, it it sounds like this guy, frankly, is uh, quite a bit out of her league. If we're being real, it seems like by the way, he's talking about this, that he's out of her league. I mean, he's a fan of us. So he's a goddamn winner. We know that for sure. An absolute winner. Great sense of humor. (laughs) You know know what I'd like? I'd like to see you jump. I'm Don't go too well. He might not be Patreon. Yeah, I'm need, I, <laughs> no, he is. He asked the question. <laughs> oh, he is the Patreon, man. What am I thinking? This guy's a stud. This guy's no, we just need 40 winner. more dollars from this successful man, and we can, we can upgrade him to the in-person consultation. Okay? This is going to be happening in just a few short days. It right? is. That, that's that's yeah. what you want to do. That's what you want to do. And, and, and what comes along with that, Woody will break up with your pig for you. He will, he will, he will bring his bluish shirt. He'll put, he'll take blue fucking underpaint under his eyes, and, and he'll I will fucking... send that heifer on her way. I'll, I'll get two guys with ATVs because we do this modern to just corral her to some other pasture, and we'll get her set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time you make her dinner, make yourself spaghetti and put like apple cores and compost in front of her, and be like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought that we were both eating what we liked." You, a pig, and me, an adult. Like, do that. I think that's actually oh, a good idea. Shit. Is that probably? <laughs> wow. God damn. And then you go, Sue-wee! 
Uh, man, maybe just pick one of these so that, yeah. so that no, nobody dies. No, it's a, it's a it's like a <laughs> gathering combo. Yeah, <laughs> you, you parlay I'm one a, into the. Other. I'll say this: like, 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 maybe y'all don't know. Maybe y'all haven't dealt with enough uh, women um, that are mentally ill. You want, <laughs> all, all this like breaking up and being mean shit is a is a bad idea. You always take the L right off the bat. You, oh man, I didn't. I didn't live up to your expectations. Shit. I'm going to have to better myself. Thank you for hell. This breakup's going to be a growing moment for me. That's how you walk out the door. You don't say anything mean. <laughs> Women are scary. No, They'll come no, back. Do it, do it come... the way I said. <laughs> <laughs> Women are fucking scared. You don't... <laughs> They'll ruin your gas tank. My, co my cousin's truck for the longest time was just beaten to shit <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Because women would come back with one more camp. One bitch came back with a hammer and just went down the side of his truck, just knocking fucking dents in the side of it. He got he got his gas tank sugared so many times. I think the fuel filter was just getting ruined every time it, it didn't get into the engine. But like that's an expensive thing in its own right. Just a fuel filter is like 175, like, like, like that whole like mechanism and everything. But then there's a whole process. You had to get a locking fuel cap. All right. <laughs> don't be don't be making more <laughs> this guy's he's great. <laughs> By the way, you want to. You was it unethical? Multiple women? Like, yeah, yeah. Does he just have one Scott, Scott. lots of girlfriends? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Scott okay. was just like, girlfriend. yeah. Scott would just like, I mean, I guess have sex with these women and like promise them the moon, and then like <laughs> next the next day have like a different girl in there, and like the next day like just in, just you know having as many women as he could possibly yeah, muster. I don't know what he was telling them. I don't know what he's telling them or whatever, but uh, I guess no, my new teeth are in the mail. <laughs> no, that's, 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 that's his cousin. <laughs> oh, speaking of although Jeremy's it's stuff. funny to say Jeremy's cousin because he hates. He him. is my cousin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So um. It, he's not. Um. Yeah. J Jeremy. Um. So as you know, my, I think he is like fourth or fifth cousins. Like like down here, everyone's oh, that's fucking not even related, right? Fucking so, really like. but but you could marry. It's him. this guy that like worked for me for years, Josh, and he um he had these very rotten teeth. Like mm -hmm. meth, he had like meth mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, not from meth though. I know that for a fact. Just from neglect, not taking care of them, and plenty of like sodas and shit or whatever. Anyway, mm -hmm. rotten, disgusting, hard to look at. Uh, my cousin Scott is a normal human being with who, who brushes his teeth and is a handsome fellow. Anyway, the wow, two of them I think he's up. Are, are hanging out. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just differentiating the two. Like like yeah. like. like um, but, uh, I guess they were somewhere, I think at a Walmart parking lot. So classy, but Jeremy like pairs off with this girl and Scott looks and they're like making out like Jeremy and this girl are making out over there. And I guess Jeremy like leaves or goes away from the situation, the, the, the crowd and Scott goes over to her. And he's like, how can you do that? <laughs> he's like, what? How can you kiss him? What are you talking about? He's all right looking. I'm talking about his teeth. How can you put your tongue in his mouth and, and, and kiss him? You've seen him, right? She'd only seen him in the darkness of the parking lot. <laughs> ah. He goes, he mm. goes, when he comes back over here, look in his fucking mouth. What are you doing? <laughs> he Damn, said, Scott is a hater. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> man. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> he just didn't want her to get infected. <laughs> He's lifeguard, really. Dude, it looks it. They're so bad. Look, you'd you'd want to look out for somebody too. Like like it would be like like hey, you know that, you know that he's a dog man, right? What do you mean? He's half dog. Didn't you look? He's got a tail. <laughs> God damn it! You've been making out with a dog man. Like you got to let yeah. people know. He names <laughs> those teeth were problematic. Like I don't know how they. I I don't think I've ever seen teeth worse than that on a healthy person. Uh, were they yeah, like people nubs? would ask me about it. Down some of them were like, nubs. Like black, some of them like, were these like, you know what they look like? You know those fucking maybe you've like seen them in the RTS memes. games. Those like maybe Polynesian swords that are like pieces of sharp um, volcanic glass oh, stuck. Yeah. In <laughs> the obsidian. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, like those obsidian. Like, like, <laughs> like that's what his teeth were. They were like separated and like round. Ooh. They looked serrated. They looked like they could put a real like. How like, does that happen you, from? Soda. They look like Gollum. Like Gollum, remember when he bites into that fish? <sighs> like, oh, it, like I, it was I bet wow. something. They weren't the right shape. They weren't the right color, and they certainly weren't pointing in the right direction. And he like, didn't he really had it all. Yeah. He just that was just from neglect, just from like yeah. deciding not brushing meth. teeth, not for me. And and I know that he so he dipped, he smoked, and lots of Red Bull and Mountain <laughs> Dew and stuff like that. 
Um, <laughs> Don't you like brushing your teeth like that in the morning like the and at night to like feel cleaner in your mouth? I mean, you know, you I don't like feel a party it, right? about it or anything, but I get in there and but get it's, it done. If you went five, <laughs> no, but I'm saying, Kyle, think about it. If you went five days eating and drinking and smoking mm. weed and without brushing your teeth, way before that five day mark, you would be going, fuck, like I want to brush, like I want to clean my teeth. Way before. Yeah, I've, no, teeth. I've known some people who didn't brush. Um, obviously, uh, I don't know what Jeremy did. He, since then, he's gotten dentures, so he has a much better aesthetic. But I worked with a guy uh, selling cars, and he was a, I would say, sixty year old black man, late fifties more likely. Um, Big Ed, Big Ed was like tall as shit, six five, six six or something, former basketball player, um, and uh, he never brushed his teeth, and they were like super duper gross. And I asked him about it one time. I, I was like, Ed, what's going on with the teeth, boss? And uh, he was like, Ah, oh, I don't brush. I, I take peroxide. And I dilute it. And he told me like the, the ratio that he diluted it to. And I rinse twice a day. That's it. And I was That's, like, cool. It's not you know, working. I didn't, I didn't press him any further. I didn't press him any further. But um, they looked gross. They looked. They, yeah. I, I feel like you could see like pus around them. Um, <sighs> it sounds like, like they would like, just be in pain during the day. Like, wh- like how do you function yeah, like that? Teeth problems I, are very painful. Like, yeah. You, yeah. you don't want uh, that. Well, I, I know with Jeremy, it was just always just super gross. Um, I'm glad he got Ugh. those fucking dentures. I, I, I give Jeremy a hard time. He's he's a he's a. I mean, I, I guess he deserves a hard time. He's like, you know, he, I'm pretty sure he stole a bunch of shit from me. That's fine. I, the, the the government was going to eventually steal it anyway. It's okay. It wasn't yeah. toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> My floss is missing. All right, no, it's not Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Who stole the mouthwash? Jeremy's over there with his stink mouth. Yeah, I I uh, I, I remember rotten um, fucking teeth. <laughs> Somebody pulled me aside once, like like we were shooting in uh, in Tennessee, and the guy that like owned the property, said, hey, uh, that other guy, what's going on? Is me- is that meth? Is that methamphetamine? Hmm. And I, I I I was like, no, I don't fuck with anybody that does any methamphetamine. I, I wanted him to know that because we're like they're doing a bunch of money tra- mm-hmm. transaction tra- tra- trading hands, and like I'm looking for a future deal with this man. I'm like, nah, we don't fuck with no meth. He's just a dirty redneck, and he's like, "Oh, okay, good, good. I, I could, I can mm. deal with that. Dirty rednecks, I like. <laughs> <laughs> I like but, dirty rednecks but, too. I know a lot of them. But it always just, I mean, you can see them in those, um, in those, those videos that that we shot. Uh, you know, they, they look pretty rough. I love that he choked out wings. That's one of my favorite things that ever transpired. I love, I love that because Wings was on here talking shit. Our former co-host, he's like yeah. 400 pounds. And, and, you know, we go back and forth about, oh, I could beat up a bear and I could do this and that. I use, I, I usually try to be honest about those and like not try to say something stupid. Like, I, I, I can't beat up a bear. It'll kill me. I, I think I'd beat up a dog. That's about as big as it gets. Yeah. Wings said something like he was so big and like wide that you couldn't rear naked choke him. He's like, uh, he's like, nah, you could. I'm just so big and so round and everything. I just like flex and like roll my shoulders and you just like pop off of me or whatever. And like, like finally I got him to my house and, and Jeremy and I had been taking um, uh, jujitsu for two and a half months or something like that. So he get, he was getting his practice on mm-hmm. his rear naked chokes and, uh, and we, and we did it uh, on YouTube. You know, we made a, made a YouTube video of him putting a choke on wings and then wings trying to defend it. It was fun. It's fun. Fun wow. times. Well, you guys want to want to call it a show? Time to wrap. I think so, Josh. We enjoyed you so much. I'm glad to hear <laughs> that your leechy, awful family hasn't uh, <laughs> d- stuck their fangs back into your life at all, and that you have found uh, a-, a wonderful new family uh, in in your in laws to be in laws, hopefully, uh, or-, or whatever they may be. So, very happy for thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And might I just say, um, I know that I've, I've been quiet. It's just been a really long time since I've done a podcast like this. So, I hope that i haven't I made it too you. awkward or anything it's but good. it's been a pleasure not listening to kyle's sure. stories not at all <laughs> yeah of course all right thank <laughs> you. Check, out so check out link in the description pka 636